skiing in gym class? Boy, if there's one sport where you don't have to worry about exposing your body to your fellow students, that would be it. Now, volleyball is one game that would be highly improved if they'd just do away with the ball. Don't you hate how you swing with all your strength and the birdie still falls at your feet, even if you hit it? I guess that's the benefit of living in a state with actual mountains. And where exactly do you find mountains where you live? You probably have to build fake ones out of, I don't know, corn? Climbing. I'm assuming you mean rope, not mountains. Hmm, strange. I would think the crabs would fall apart when you kick them. Oh, you Idaho dwellers and your obsession with potatoes. Potatoes are a fine vegetable, but I don't see what they have to do with gym class. That's just like volleyball, but with a funny accent, right? When I see people play that game, I always notice that the biggest and strongest ones can always beat the others. Just like life. Now I'm depressed. That parachute game might be fun if you got to skydive or something, but as it is, shaking the darn thing around and then quickly sitting under it just really doesn't seem all that exciting to me. Pumpkin ball? That sounds like some kind of food candy makers would sell at Thanksgiving. That is an important game that teaches you valuable lessons. You know, like how to sneak around and stay out of jail. That might be fun for you, but did you ever wonder how the can feels about it? Probably not. I hope you don't play with that in the house. One sloppy shot and the glass walls of this tank are going, going, gone. I think for some people, gym class itself is a big obstacle. Wiffle? Ah, yes, the game that makes every kid feel like a pro. Oh, yes, bombardment. Another one of those sports you humans love where you pretend to kill each other. If you're talking about the orange sherbet paper treats, I'm with you. Otherwise, you're on your own. Oh, yes, that competition where some students get a piece of paper and some don't. Some reward. Is that like a jump that takes two days or something? I understand, but it seems too jarring to be fun. You know, when you land. I knew other humans who did that, but the shuttle beat them every time. Running is great. Except that it involves way too much running. Ah, yes, duck, duck, goose. A game of challenge and skill. I've often thought there should be a professional league. Sure, it seems, though, that some players are too rough. Instead of tag, sometimes it should be called smack or even shove. I always thought of Foursquare as being more of a playground game. Your gym teacher must have been desperate for material. It's better than just racing on a computer, isn't it? Ah, yes. Nothing like running and wiping out on one of those hard-polished gymnasium floors. I mean, not that I would know. Rugby. Yet another excuse for young boys to grope each other. Handball. I just can't imagine how that wouldn't be extremely painful. You must have one hand swollen to the size of Texas. Handball. We're talking about gym class, not what you do in your own private time, right? Understandable, since you do it in your spare time anyway. Perhaps that's where you formed an interest in it. Soccer is okay, except that the teacher always makes you move around on the field. I still don't understand why there have never been any attempts to form a professional kickball league. Yes, I know why you like wrestling. And trust me, so does the guy you were wrestling with. When they get done with you, you'll be able to kick any guy's butt. Red light, green light in gym class? You must have started gym class at a very young age. Tetherball? I've never understood that game. The ball doesn't go anywhere, it's tethered. Why bother? I love the way they bastardize bowling to make it playable in gym class. You don't see professionals throwing bean bags down the gutter. Hmm. So does the school provide the ugly pants then? I wonder. Tennis in gym class? How high society of you. Ah, yes. 
a variant of baseball but with a violent collision aspect. Mother, may I in gym class? What kind of strange school are we talking about? It is always fun when they get out the gymnastics equipment, mostly because it takes at least half the period to set it up. Hopscotch? Boy, I'd hate to be the kid that fails gym because of that. Wow. I'd like to meet your gym teacher. You don't like anything about gym? I don't blame you. Enforced physical activity sounds a bit too much like prison to me. Well, whatever silly game that is, I'm sure kids across the country are scrambling to come up with excuses not to play it. Understandable, since you do it in your spare time anyway. Perhaps that's where you formed an interest in it. I've never understood that name. If you get beaned in the head with one of those things, the last thing you'll be calling it is soft. Sure, scooters. Great fun. So what if a finger or two is lost in the process? It's a great game. Until you find out that the hand you are holding is no longer attached to an arm. Yes, I've seen that. Everybody starts on a track and they all run as fast as they can. And when they're done, where are they? Still on the track. It doesn't make any sense at all. I thought that was a game for very tall people. Some players get thousands of dollars for every game they play. A kid like you, you probably only get 30 or 40 bucks. You do not eat a healthy diet. Is that what you're saying? You do eat healthy? It seems like there are a lot of different things to keep in mind when you're trying to stay in shape. Exercising is one of them, but eating right is also very important, especially where you live. There's no shortage of food here. Well, for most people. And it's very easy to eat too much of the wrong thing, it seems. No wonder so many people have problems with their weight. It's a shame that the things that are good for you don't usually taste as good as the bad ones. And you know what? The junk food marketers know it. So my advice is, beat the system. Eat a pound of broccoli. Well, at least you exercise. You don't exercise. You don't eat healthy. Hang on a second. Let me get a shovel so you can start digging your grave. You don't exercise. You don't eat healthy. Well, you're young. But you should probably consider changing your ways once you reach your 20s, if not sooner. Would you say that for the most part you eat a pretty healthy diet? Hmm... I wonder if those actually come from Brussels. If not, why do they bother calling it that? If tended to properly, zucchinis can grow to extremely large proportions. And no, I'm not using zucchini as a euphemism. Did you know that celery has so few calories that you actually burn more calories chewing it than you get from it in the first place? The same thing is also true with chocolate cake, but... Only if you chew it 300,000 times. Hey, uh, what's up, Doc? Ha, ha, ha. Boy, I bet you never get tired of hearing that one. Carrots, huh? Good as a vegetable. Even better as a snowman's nose. So versatile. Onions are very good for you. Unless we're talking about your social life. Hmm... Maybe you should lay off the onions for a while. Onions are very good for you, unless we're talking about your social life. For the last time, tomatoes are fruit, not vegetables. Cauliflower. It sounds so pretty, but it's actually kind of weird looking. Like a small white brain. Hmm. And here I always thought radishes were just meant as decoration. You know, to add a little color to a plate. Beets? So very purpley. They must taste as good as they look. Hmm. I thought mushrooms were a fungus. You know, like what grows between your toes? I'm not sure, though. Squash. Well, anything named after a quick destructive motion has to be good. I assume you're talking about land cucumbers and not sea cucumbers. I don't think you'd want to put one of those things in a salad. Peppers, huh? I've always wondered if they're the main ingredient of the soft drink Dr. Pepper. What a fun word to say. Yam. 
I suspect you don't really like them. You just wanted to say it. Leak? Well, I was thinking of taking one. Well, I have to agree. I think she's got a decent talk show, although I don't appreciate her telling me what to read. I always wondered if anybody ever ate that stuff on the salad bar. Did you know that that's related to mustard? There. You learn something new every day. I'd be careful with those genetically altered vegetables. Just like you. At the center of every artichoke is a heart. Of course, it's a sort of spiky, prickly heart, but a heart nonetheless. Olives are good, although I'm not too sure about the green ones. You like spinach? Well, then, I don't get why you bother exercising. I mean, you could look just like Popeye without having to do any work. Oh, now I see why you don't need to exercise. I mean, without having to do any work, you can still look just like Popeye. Broccoli is so cute. Like a tiny edible tree. Rutabaga? I don't know what it tastes like, but it has a terrific sound. Oh, yes, that vegetable that makes your urine stink. Not that urine has such a delightful aroma anyway. Did you know that turnips are related to mustard? You learn something new every day. I wouldn't go spreading them on your hot dog, though. Yes, the gentle giant of the vegetable world. Be sure you remain on its good side, though. Kale? Hmm. It's a bit on the bitter side. Not unlike myself. Greens are okay. But I think you'd look much better in softer hues like lavenders and pinks, though I'm not sure they're quite as easy to digest. Chard? I wasn't asking you how you like your hot dogs. Let you what? Ha! Ah, that was a joke. I guess you didn't get it. It must be pretty tough to eat healthy if you don't eat any vegetables. Just so you know... Twinkies aren't generally considered to be health food. That's not a vegetable. At least, not one anyone would eat. It goes best with corned beef. At least, that's what I've heard. It's not a difficult question. Now let's get it right this time. Do you eat healthy beans? I'm not going to sing the silly little song. We all know what beans are responsible for. Ah, yes, the perfectly spherical vegetable... So tiny and green and round. If you can't finish them, you can play marbles with them. Just so you know, you lose a lot of the health benefits of eating potatoes when you serve them up as french fries. Yeah. I never asked you about your foot ailments. Well, I'm not sure how they taste, but they sure look... sexy. It's a simple yes or no question. Do you eat mostly healthy foods? You must really chow down on the vegetables, then. What's your favorite one? You know, I've never been to a place that's as diet-obsessed as America. It seems like nobody wants to stay healthy the hard way, to actually exercise and eat right. Instead, people are always looking for a quick and easy way to lose a bunch of weight as if they're just automatically going to stay healthy after the diet is over. There's definitely something to watching what you eat, but if you ask me, it seems to me that a lot of the diets that are so fashionable these days are just attempts to wrangle money out of people who are genuinely concerned about their health. It has to be possible to lose weight and get healthy without handing over a bunch of cash for something that may not even be that good for you. I asked you if you've ever been on a diet. Have you? It looks like you take pretty regular care of yourself anyway, but have you ever been on a diet? I'll bet you're one of those people that would rather diet than exercise. Have you ever been on a diet? And is it helping? Really? Even with the exercise? Well, that's a shame. Maybe you just need to give it more time. Well, I hate to be too preachy, but I bet it would work a little better if you exercised every so often, too. Come on, I want to know. Is your diet helping or not? Well, that's good to hear. I'll bet your exercise regime has something to do with it, too. Well, that's good to hear. I don't want to be too preachy, but I bet your diet might work even better if you exercised every once in a while. Never needed to, huh? You're one of the lucky ones. 
Or maybe you just know how to take care of yourself without resorting to lose-weight-quick schemes. Well, at least you're an equal opportunity avoider of all healthy practices. Maybe that's for the best. It looks like you're already trying to straighten out your health without resorting to lose-weight-quick schemes. I guess you don't need a special diet since you seem to take pretty good care of yourself anyway. Those diets can sometimes do you more harm than good. Well, at least you can say you've withstood social pressure to get on a lose-weight-quick scheme. It looks like you've also successfully avoided any social pressure to get healthy at all. Congratulations. It's not rocket science, Fuzzy. Are you on a diet right now or not? Come on, I'm curious. Have you ever been on a diet or not? Oh, yeah, right. You see food and you eat. Boy, I've never heard that one before. You and just about everyone else. Are you dieting right now? You play soccer? You play softball? You run? You swim? You play volleyball? You play badminton? You like field hockey? You play hockey? You do gymnastics? You play rugby? You ski? You play lacrosse? You water ski? You're... A sumo wrestler? You play basketball? You play football? You snowboard? You skydive? You surf? You rollerblade? You play baseball? You play golf? I was thinking earlier about how interested your culture is in sports. I would say even obsessed sometimes. It can really get out of hand, but now that we're talking about health and staying fit, it almost doesn't seem like such a bad thing. That is, if you're actually playing a sport and not sitting in front of a TV and watching someone else play it. I think I understand why people want to play sports. It must be fun to see what you can make your body do if you just try a little. And you also get to hang out with other people and test your skills against theirs. I guess I still think some people can get too interested in sports, especially if it interferes with the mental stimulation they get. As with most things, balance is the key. Tell me, what's your favorite sport to play? Ah, uh, yes, you mentioned soccer before, didn't you? I hadn't realized it was your favorite. Well, now I know. Ah, uh, yes, you mentioned you liked softball before, didn't you? I guess I just hadn't realized it was your favorite sport. Well, now I know. Sure. It's so much less scary than baseball, isn't it? Ah, yes, you mentioned you liked running before, didn't you? I guess I just hadn't realized it was your favorite sport. Well, now I know. I hope it's not because someone's chasing you with a loaded weapon. Ah, yes, you mentioned you liked swimming before, didn't you? I guess I just hadn't realized it was your favorite sport. Well, now I know. Me thinking of swimming as a sport is like you thinking of breathing as a sport. Ah, uh, yes. You mentioned you liked volleyball before, didn't you? I guess I just hadn't realized it was your favorite sport. Well, now I know. Hmm. Too bouncy for me at times. Jiggles my liver too much. You just like saying the word shuttlecock. I've heard that you have to wear a kilt to play that. I hope it's not true for your sake. I've heard that you have to wear a kilt to play that. Is that true? Nah. Ah, uh, yes. You mentioned you liked hockey before, didn't you? I guess I just hadn't realized it was your favorite sport. Well, now I know. It's a very beautiful sport. In between brawls, I'd love to see you in your leotard sometime. Meow. I'd love to see you in your leotard sometime, sailor. I bet that leotard gets real uncomfortable, huh? Ah, uh, yes, you mentioned you liked golf before, didn't you? I guess I just hadn't realized it was your favorite sport. Well, now I know. I hope you like a lot of walking around in your sports. Unless you're one of those cheaters who uses a golf cart. A lot like football, but with a sexy British accent. The most popular sport in the world. 
At least you'll always have someone to play with. Ah, yes. You mentioned you'd like to ski before, didn't you? I guess I just hadn't realized it was your favorite sport. Well, now I know. The sport that's so popular, I believe they named a city in Wisconsin after it. You would know. Perhaps you've been there. The sport that's so popular, I believe they named a city in Wisconsin after it. It's a pretty interesting sport. Of course, I don't need a boat to zip through the water. I didn't think so. Why don't you try answering me instead of trying to trip me out? Come on, what's a sport you like to play? Well, at least you can put all that extra flab to good use. Oh, I see. So when you say you're in good shape, that actually means you're about 300 pounds overweight. That's your sport of choice? Don't worry, I'm not going to make the obligatory scoring joke. I guess you can't do it that often since you live in Hawaii. I guess you can't do it that often since you live in Florida. Well, I have heard that there is pretty good skiing in Canada. Skiing would be a lot better sport if you could do it in warmer climates. Ah, yes, you mentioned you liked to play basketball before, didn't you? I guess I just hadn't realized it was your favorite sport. Well, now I know. I'd like to see you score sometime. Wow. You also probably bring a plugged-in toaster into the bath with you. Ah, yes, you mentioned you liked football before, didn't you? I guess I just hadn't realized it was your favorite sport. Well, now I know. I bet you do. All those big, strong men piling up on top of each other. Who wouldn't like it? Ah, yes, much like skiing, but less stable and more difficult. Wow. When you told me you liked action, I just figured you were all talk. Ah, uh, yes, you mentioned you surfed before, didn't you? I guess I just hadn't realized it was your favorite sport. Well, now I know. You must be what they call a totally righteous dude. You must be what they call a totally righteous babe. Rollerblading is considered a sport? I would put it more in the mad high-speed rampage category. Ah, uh, yes, you mentioned you liked baseball before, didn't you? I guess I just hadn't realized it was your favorite sport. Well, now I know. I bet you just like wearing those tight little pants. Then tell me a sport you like to play. So you're loyal to the ones you know. Well, there's nothing wrong with that. Oh, sure. You pound away at your little sports games, but you won't actually get up and do the real thing. Well, pardon me for saying this, but I think I know why you're out of shape. Oh, sure. You pound away at your little sports games, but you won't actually get up and do the real thing. You know, it probably couldn't hurt to tear yourself away from the screen every once in a while. Not really a sports person, huh? In some weird way, I actually admire that. Your country could be a little less focused on sports sometimes. Take the clothes hanger out of your mouth and tell me once more, what's a sport you like to play? Swallow whatever you're chewing on. I don't care if it's your tongue, and let's try that again. What's a sport you like to play? You watch football? You like to watch wrestling? You watch gymnastics? You like to watch the Olympics? You watch skiing? You watch auto racing? You watch the ponies? You watch tennis? You watch bowling? You watch golf? You like to watch figure skating? You watch soccer? You watch baseball? You watch basketball? You watch women's basketball? You like to watch boxing? I was thinking earlier about sports and how popular they are here. As I was saying, it would be really great for the collective health of the country if everyone played sports, but it doesn't do so much for you to just sit and watch them. I want to find out about this fascination with watching other people play sports, being a spectator. You're pretty dedicated to your sport, aren't you? 
It's amazing you don't get sick of playing and watching the same thing. Although I guess you can pick up a few pointers for your game that way. Well, it's certainly easier to watch a sport than to actually play it yourself, but being a spectator doesn't have quite the same health benefits. I hope the next time you sit down to watch a game, you might think about going out and trying it yourself. Anyhow, thanks for playing. Then what is your favorite sport to watch? Do you follow any professional sports? What's your favorite professional sport to watch on TV? Yes, watching burly men in tight pants fall all over each other is very enjoyable. When I said professional sports, I meant professional sports. I can't watch that. It's too... scary. Those tiny little people flipping around in the air. It's certain death. You know, a few years ago, pros like you wouldn't be allowed in the Olympics. But things are different now. So what are you waiting for? Come on. Go sign up. I'll wait. You know, it's funny. A few years ago, the Olympics wouldn't have been considered professional sports. But now I think you have to have a shoe contract before they'll even let you have an apartment in the Olympic Village. Wow. Fancy. And daredevilish. You're quite the racing enthusiast, aren't you? Maybe someday you'll have your own car at the Indy 500. I bet you like your cars the same way you like your women. With anti-lock brakes and automatic fuel injection. I can't watch that. It's too scary. So much potential for a flaming horrible death. Why don't you watch something gentler like professional lion taming? I find it hard to believe that an animal doctor of all people doesn't find horse racing a little cruel. I mean, horses are dumb. They don't know why they're being made to run like that. They probably think a bear is chasing them. That seems awfully cruel to me. I mean, horses are dumb. They don't know why they're being made to run like that. They probably think a bear is chasing them. It seems like audiences at tennis matches are always so polite. More polite than the actual players sometimes. You must be a very patient person. I guess you were serious about the sumo stuff after all. It's oddly fascinating, isn't it? I don't know what you'd have to do to yourself to gain that much weight. It's oddly fascinating, isn't it? I don't know what you'd have to do to yourself to gain that much weight. I have to say I admire your attention span. Then I guess you don't mind if I call you a Lutz. Or even a triple Lutz. You and three-fourths of the rest of the world. It seems like the only way to watch baseball is at the stadium. Unless, of course, you've hired your own private hot dog vendor. That's great to watch on TV. It's fast-paced and not too long. I really hope that catches on. I mean, female athletes deserve to be the same multi-million dollar shoe-endorsing sellouts as male athletes. I'll bet you like to watch two sweaty men duking it out. Do you follow any professional sports or not? Well, you're a rare specimen. You play sports, but you don't follow the pros. It's definitely the healthier way to go. Well, you don't seem to have fallen prey to the sports obsession, which I guess is good. There are other ways of taking care of your body without having to be interested in sports, and I hope you'll continue taking care of your body. Well, you don't seem to have fallen prey to the sports obsession, which I guess is good. There are other ways of taking care of your body without having to be interested in sports, and I hope you'll try doing that one of these days. Come on now. What's your favorite sport to watch? I see. I didn't realize that was a sport. Oh well. I've been asking you a lot about your health, and it seems that working out and eating right are two big components of it all, along with getting plenty of sleep, one of my favorite things. But it seems that your human body is still so delicate. All the exercising and dieting in the world can't make sure that something won't just go wrong anyway. That's where your 
doctors come in. I've been asking you a lot about your health, and it seems that working out and eating right are two big components of it all, along with getting plenty of sleep and sex, two of my favorite things. But it seems that your human body is still so delicate. All the working out and dieting in the world can't make sure that something won't just go wrong anyway. That's where your physicians come in. I asked you if you go to the doctor regularly. Do you go to the doctor regularly? You don't? As someone working in the medical profession, I would have thought you would be more concerned about your health. But then again, you could probably also diagnose most of the common problems that might cause people to call a doctor, so... Well, since you are studying medicine, I would have thought you knew the importance of going to the doctor regularly. But then again, you don't really need a doctor when you've got a bunch of medical textbooks with indices. You really should go to the doctor regularly. If nothing else, it's an excuse to get out of work. You really should go to the doctor regularly. If nothing else, it's an excuse to get out of school. You really should go to the doctor. If nothing else, it's an excuse to get naked in front of someone else. I guess you would have to, wouldn't you? Poor thing. Well, at least I know you're being taken care of. That's to your benefit. Besides, it's another excuse to get naked. My, I am behaving saucily today, aren't I? Do you go to the doctor for regular checkups? I've been asking you a lot about your health, and it seems that exercising and eating right are two big components of it all, along with getting plenty of sleep, one of my favorite things. But it seems that your human body is still so delicate. You still need an expert to take a look at you every now and then. That's where your doctors come in. You really should go to the doctor regularly. If nothing else, it's an excuse to get out of school. You really should go to see the doctor. I care about you, you see. I guess you would have to, wouldn't you? Poor thing. Well, at least I know you're being well taken care of. That's good. I'm glad to hear it. I care about you, you see. Human beings are very lucky to have figured out how to heal themselves when they get sick. No other creature can do that. It's easy to take all your medical knowledge for granted, but think about it. If you were living even several hundred years ago, you'd still be putting leeches on yourself whenever you got a cold. Not that leeches are such a bad thing, but they're not exactly what I would call good medicine. Anyway, I'm glad to know that if something goes wrong with you, there's somebody that can help you out. Like I was saying earlier, it's important to go to the doctor every once in a while, but it seems like it's not always so easy to do, since health care can be so expensive. I'm fascinated by this idea of health insurance. Well, actually, I find it a little sad. You humans are so sure that someday you're going to get sick that you actually put money away, especially for that time. There's no escaping it, I guess. Do you have health insurance? But I wonder what would happen to you if you couldn't afford health insurance. Do you think everyone should have access to health care? Even if they can't afford it? Do you get sick a lot? You like things the way they are, huh? That disappoints me. I would hope you'd approach the field in a more altruistic manner, but I guess we've got to do what we can to get by. Mustn't we? You like things the way they are, huh? That surprises me a little, especially coming from you. I get the impression that your health care system makes doctors care more about getting money than curing people. Just answer the question, okay? Yes or no, should everyone be able to see a doctor whether or not they can afford it? I have to say, it really surprises me that something as basic and necessary as health care can't be available to everyone. I think that's a specifically American thing, and a lot of people seem to suffer because of it. 
I worry that this system makes doctors care more about getting money than curing people. You don't? Well, that's great, but I think you're just tempting fate with that lifestyle of yours. I mean, you don't exercise, you don't play sports, and you don't really eat healthy. I wouldn't throw away your insurance card just yet. You don't? That's great. Maybe your attempts at healthy living are paying off. Good thing you're insured, then. Although I can't help but notice that you'd probably get sick a lot less often if you changed your lifestyle a little bit. Good thing you're insured, then. Maybe the more you take care of yourself, the less often you'll get sick. I have to say, it really surprises me that something as basic and necessary as health care can't be available to everyone. I think that's a specifically American thing, and a lot of people seem to suffer because of it. I worry that this system makes doctors care more about getting money than curing people. Well, it's up to you, but I have to say not having insurance is a pretty big risk to take. Just avoid leaving your house and you should be fine. You don't? Why not? Come on, I'm curious. Do you have health insurance or not? Well, good. I hope you're getting all the care you need. I see. Well, if you do, I guess you might as well make good use of it. That didn't come out exactly right, but you know what I mean. So, we've been talking a lot about the health of your body. That's, of course, extremely important, but it also helps to have a healthy mind. By far, the most mysterious part of your human body is the brain. Even your greatest scientists will freely admit that they barely know anything about how it works. And yet, when something is wrong in your head, I'll bet it hurts just as much as a wound or a disease. I hope you take care of your mind as well as you take care of your body. By far, the most mysterious part of your human body is the brain. Even your greatest scientists will freely admit that they barely know anything about how it works. And yet, when something is wrong in your head, I'll bet it hurts just as much as a wound or a disease. I hope you take care of your mind as well as you take care of your body. Or better, since you don't seem to be too keen on keeping your body tip-top. So, to that end, have you ever gone to a therapist? Now, I know you have a little expertise of your own in this field, but have you ever gone to another therapist? But seriously, do you think it helped you? Now, because you seem to have had such a good experience, let me ask you this. Do you think everybody would benefit from a little therapy? Of course not. You probably thought you could have done it better. Hmm. It seems that a lot of people think that maintaining their mental health through the efforts of a therapist is a sign of weakness. Yet most people don't see going to the doctor for a physical ailment as a sign of weakness. Strange how people think sometimes. Come on, did it help you or not? Good. I'm glad. It seems that a lot of people think that maintaining their mental health through the efforts of a therapist is a sign of weakness, yet most people don't see going to the doctor for a physical ailment as a sign of weakness. Strange how people think sometimes. Really? That's interesting. Maybe not everyone can handle stepping back and looking at themselves from a distance. Maybe it's true. It's possible that therapy isn't always about being cured, but also just stepping back and looking at yourself from a distance. And I'll bet everybody could use a little perspective like that. This is none of my business, yet everything else you've told me so far is? That's ridiculous. It seems that a lot of people think that maintaining their mental health through the efforts of a therapist is a sign of weakness. Yet, most people don't see going to the doctor for a physical ailment as a sign of weakness. Strange how people think sometimes. I hope if you ever feel you have a problem you can't handle, you'll consider seeing a therapist. 
or you can just come talk to me. At least I won't charge you. Much. So then I guess you're used to the responses, yes. I see. And what do you think? Well, thanks for letting me in on some of your health secrets. All of us animals have these fragile organic bodies that break down and cause us pain. But human beings are especially fascinating because they can actually prevent or cure so many of the body's problems. That's why I wanted to know what you do to keep yourself healthy. I want to know how you humans take advantage of their medical knowledge. Some people take it all for granted and do stupid, destructive things to their bodies just because they're used to having the means to recover. Well, anyway, I think I'm going to go take a little rest. I don't want to overexert myself and get sick. I'll talk to you later. So you're signed up to be a voter then? So you're not a voter? Is that right? You know, I've been around you humans for a long time now, and it seems like every group of people, every country, state, and kingdom has a different way of setting up its government. Sometimes one person has all the power. Sometimes everyone shares the power. It seems like there are as many different types of governments as there are people in the world. Human politics is very interesting to me, which is why I am very curious. As you are currently residing in a democratic society, are you taking advantage of your power? What I mean is, are you registered to vote? I thought you just said you were registered to vote. Are you or are you not? I thought you just said you're not registered to vote. Are you registered or not? Hmm, that's interesting. I would think that you'd like the power a vote would give you, but maybe I'm projecting. I can't believe you're really a politician. A real one would know that your own vote is one of the few you can count on. It's a simple question. Are you registered to vote or not? This way I suppose you're assured of getting at least one vote in every election you run in. That's good. If they allowed Seaman to have a say in things, I am very sure I would take advantage as well. It's a yes or no question. Are you registered to vote or not? So you are a Democrat. Really? I was right. You're a Democrat? You're a member of the Grand Old Party, eh? You're an anarchist? The Green Party? So you don't support any specific party, is that right? You're pretty left-wing, huh? You're a libertarian? So you're a friend of the worker, is that right? So you're steering clear of the big mainstream parties, huh? You're a fascist? You support the Natural Law Party? I see. Well, never mind then. Why don't you just tell me? What political party are you closer to? So your main political concern is the legalization of pot, am I right? You're with the reform party? So you're pretty right-wing, huh? I'm still thinking about this government of yours. I mean, with everybody's different ideas of how to run things, how do you ever agree on anything? You seem to have a few major belief groups that most people fall into, like the Republicans and the Democrats. But I'll bet not everybody in your country falls into one of those, right? I guess it's just a matter of which group has more supporters. Hmm. Look, it's not rocket science. Which political party do you support? If you don't support any, just say so. Well, are you a Democrat or not? Well, are you a Republican or not? So, do you think the U.S. is becoming more conservative in general? If I had to guess, I'd say you are a Democrat, am I right? If I had to guess, I'd say you are a Republican, am I right? So... Did you support Mr. Clinton during that whole Monica scandal? I see. And do you think the U.S. is becoming more conservative in general? I see. 
And did you support the president during that whole Monica scandal? I see. And what do you do to help the environment? Besides vote green, that is. Don't want the government in your hair, eh? Well, in what area do you think the government has too much control? Do you think there will ever be a workers' revolution? I see. Now, are you a part of the Ross Perot faction or the Jesse Ventura faction? That's what I figured. I guess I understand more about your country's politics than I thought I did. I thought you just said you were a Democrat. All right, never mind. Why don't you just tell me what political party you're closer to? It's not so difficult to tell, you know. I suppose I understand more about your country's politics than I thought I did. I thought you just said you were a Republican. All right, never mind. Why don't you just tell me so I don't have to guess? What political party are you closer to? A die-hard party follower, eh? Or maybe you just think your politicians can do their jobs without being perfect. Or get their jobs, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Not enough of the Democrat in you for that, huh? Oh, well. It just goes to show you that you can't expect your politicians to be better than the rest of you. <sighs> I just asked you if you were a Democrat and you said no. Why don't you concentrate a little more on answering my questions, meathead? I thought you just said you were a Democrat. What are you, then? <sighs> I just asked you if you were a Republican, and you said no. Why don't you concentrate a little more on answering my questions, meathead? I thought you just said you were a Republican. What are you, then? Let's try again. What political party do you belong to? I thought you just said you were an anarchist. What are you, then? You know, I hope you're not just saying that because of the Sex Pistols song. I mean, destroying all organized government is a serious business. Oh, you punk rockers all think you love anarchy when actually you just like the Sex Pistols. Remember what happened to Sid? Think about it. Yes, fight the power. Maybe it's because you're not working hard enough. Come on, chop chop. Go out and do whatever it is that Republicans do. Well, that's good for you, I guess. Or maybe you only think so because you're around other Republicans all the time. I guess it's good to support some sort of organization that you think is doing some good. As long as you know they're not using your money to buy hemp jewelry for themselves. I thought you just said you supported the Green Party. Which party do you support? Hmm. Well, I hope that helps your cause. At least you can always say you voted. Just one citizen at large. That's cool. All those organized parties, they don't really understand the real you. I thought you said you didn't support any party. Which one, if any, do you support then? Now, would this have to do with his political prowess or the fact that he can body slam any of his opponents? I have to wonder. Well, that's probably tough for you since the country seems to be swinging to the right. Or maybe the right-wingers just make more noise. I thought you said you were left-wing. What are you, then? You want the right to choose, huh? Yes, I don't know if I'd want someone telling me how and when to spawn, either. Well, maybe you ought to consider becoming an anarchist instead of a libertarian. Say, that rich guy in Seattle didn't happen to pay you to say that, did he? Never mind, just curious. Don't want the government interfering with your business, Rockefeller? Just pay them off like all the other business owners do. Well, the government probably doesn't want people to go around killing each other. Governments are funny that way. What do you care? You don't even have kids. Oh, yes, there's the matter of other people's kids, isn't there? What do you care? Your kids are probably out of school by now. 
Oh, yes, there's the matter of everyone else's kids, isn't there? Hmm. Well, maybe you should homeschool your kids. Unless, of course, you're afraid of them growing up to be social rejects. I thought you just said you were a libertarian. What are you, then? Hmm. I didn't even know the government had their hands in that. That's your biggest beef with the government? Maybe you ought to just go to a dead show and sign up with normal. Oh, wait, the dead aren't together anymore, are they? Well, I guess you have to be a libertarian then. Yeah, a lot of students seem to be libertarians for that exact reason. Makes me wonder how you get any studying done with all that time you must spend, you know, doing political work. Well, you know what Ben Franklin said. The only two inevitable things in life are death and taxes. I hope you don't think the government is too tough on death, too. Yes, it's not exactly the easiest thing to bring about, is it? Maybe if everyone started taking six-hour lunches, management would get to the point. I thought you had some Marxist leanings. Let's try this again. What party do you support? Well, that's not very optimistic of you, is it? Maybe you can attack capitalism on a smaller level. Ever blown up a credit card company? No, wait, don't tell me. I don't want to know. Well, of course, now that you're on the case. Well, at least you found some people with the same interests as you. I wouldn't count on a president from your ranks any time soon, but that's probably beside the point. What party do you support, then? Hmm. If what I've heard about you guys is true, I'd hate to run into you in a dark fish tank. I thought you just said you were a fascist. What are you then? And are all the other party members also Aquarians? It seems the perfect party for someone of your sign. I thought you just said you support the natural law party. What party do you support? Hmm. I've often thought your politicians would fare much better if they just had a few out-of-body experiences every once in a while. Hmm. I've often thought you politicians would fare much better if you just had a few out-of-body experiences every once in a while. Yes, maybe more people should do that. At least until they invent a car that runs on used diapers and banana peels. Well, voting is a start, but I'll bet there are other things you could do to help the environment. Like, I don't know, clean up a highway or plug up the hole in the ozone layer. Yeah, there you go. Hmm. I guess he doesn't strike you as an egomaniac the way he apparently strikes most of your fellow citizens. I bet you just joined that party for all the reggae music they play at the rallies. I thought you were in one of those pot parties. What party do you support, then? Ah, yes, I couldn't have figured that one out. Hey, dream big, be big. Oh, yes? Well, good for you. Waste not, want not. I thought you just said you support the Reform Party. Which party do you support, then? Aha. Uh -huh. Either you think they're both idiots, or you're part of that new American Reform Splinter Party. Seems like there's a new political party being formed every two minutes. Well, it seems like the whole country is swinging that way, for better or for worse. Or maybe you guys just make more noise than everybody else. I thought you said you were somewhere very right of center. What are you then? All right, I'm not going to guess anymore, so why don't you just tell me? What political party are you closer to? All right, never mind. I'm not going to guess anymore. Why don't you just tell me? What political party are you closer to? Hey, I want to know who you're supporting for presidency. Unless I'm misinformed, you have an election coming up, don't you? Since we're talking politics, I might as well ask you, who has your support for president this year? Unless I'm misinformed, you have an election tomorrow, don't you? And since we're talking politics, I might as well ask you, who has your support for president this year? It's interesting we're talking about all this since the big elections today. So I might as well ask you, 
Who has your support for president this year? Oh, come on. An actor could never make it to the White House. Oh, wait. Hmm. I didn't realize that's on the candidate list. Hey, I asked you who you voted for. Unless I was misinformed, you had an election yesterday. Tell me, who did you support for president? Unless I've been misinformed, you had an election a few days ago, didn't you? Tell me. Who did you support for president? Unless I've been misinformed, you had an election recently, didn't you? Tell me, who did you support for president in 2000? You know, I'm rather curious about your general stance about your political system. Namely, I wonder how much you believe in it. I mean, does it really make any difference which candidate one person votes for? All of your politicians are basically the same anyway. What's the difference between rich, middle-aged white man A and rich, middle-aged white man B? About the most variety you could hope for is a very rich, middle-aged white man, or maybe a rich, old white man. You know, I'm rather curious about your general stance about your political system. Namely, I wonder how much you believe in it. I mean, does it really make any difference which candidate you vote for? All of your politicians are basically the same anyway. What's the difference between rich middle-aged white man A and rich middle-aged white man B? About the most variety you could hope for is a very rich middle-aged white man or maybe a rich old white man. I'm asking you, do you really think one person's vote counts? I'm asking you, do you really think your vote counts? But... Okay, let's just say there is a difference, just for the sake of argument. Would it matter, then, who one person voted for? After all, it's just one voice in a country of millions and millions. But, okay, let's just say there is a difference, just for the sake of argument. Would it matter, then, who you voted for? After all, yours is just one voice in a country of millions and millions. Well, at least that explains why you don't vote. Well, then, I really don't understand why you're not registered to vote. Stop dawdling and answer the question. Do you think that one person's vote really matters in your political system? Yes or no? A realist, are you? It makes me wonder why you even bothered to register. Well, that's very optimistic of you. I know you said you're interested in the government's control of arms. What other political issue do you invest in? I know you said you're interested in the government's control of arms. That was an issue last time I checked. Oh, you are, are you? So you're not interested in politics, is that right? You know, I'll bet you're not really interested in politics anyway. And I'll bet you're wishing I'd just shut up and talk about sex or something you're really interested in. Hmm. You know, I'll bet you're not really interested in talking politics. And I'll... Bet you're wishing I'd just shut up and talk about sex or something you're really interested in. Hmm, you don't know. I'm going to make a bold assumption here and say that if you don't know, you're probably not interested. But... I know you said you're interested in the government's control of drugs. What other political issue do you invest in? I know you said you're interested in the government's control of drugs. That was an issue last time I checked. I know you said you're interested in the government's control of the economy. What other political issue do you invest in? I know you said you're interested in the government's control of the economy. That was an issue last time I checked. I know you said you're interested in the government's control of education. What other political issue do you invest in? I know you said you're interested in the government's control of education. That was an issue last time I checked. Well, what about violence in video games? That's turning into a bigger and bigger political issue every time some poor, disturbed kid decides to take his aggressions out on his schoolmates instead of video game characters. There are politicians in your government that want to decide what kinds of games you can and can't play. They want to censor your games.
I don't know whether that's a good or bad thing for other games, but for me, they'll probably try to make me put on some underwear. And you wouldn't want to see that. All right, now you're just talking gibberish. Moving on. So, aside from the environment, what's another area of politics that interests you? I mean, you must at least be interested in issues like freedom of speech and censorship. Am I right? I mean, you must at least be interested in issues like the legalization of drugs. Am I right? I mean, you must at least be interested in issues like your child's education. Am I right? I mean, you must at least be interested in issues like your children's education. Am I right? I mean, you must at least be interested in issues like women's rights. Am I correct? I mean, you must at least be interested in issues like gay rights. Am I correct? Being a member of the Green Party, I can assume you're interested in the environment. That was an issue last time I checked. I mean, you must at least be interested in issues like health care. Am I right? I mean, you must at least be interested in issues like helping the less advantaged. Am I right? Supporting the legalization of certain substances. That was an issue last time I checked. I mean, you must at least be interested in religious issues like prayer in school. Am I right? I mean, you must at least be interested in issues like social security. Am I right? I mean, you must at least be interested in issues like taxes. Am I correct? I know you said you're interested in the government's control of taxes. That was an issue last time I checked. You know what politics is, right? It's not such a hard question. Are you interested in it or not? So anyway, what area of politics are you most interested in? So aside from the legalization of certain substances, What's another area of politics that catches your fancy? Hey, I asked if you were interested in politics, yes or no. Come now, I'm asking you a question. What kind of politics are you interested in? But you tell me. Are you interested in politics at all? But of course you should be interested in politics, considering that's what you do for a living. Of course, it's just as likely that you care more about sex, your biology considered. But this is something I should be asking you. Are you interested in politics? But of course you should be interested in politics, considering that's what you're studying. Of course, it's just as likely that you care more about sex, your biology considered. But this is something I should be asking you. Are you interested in politics? Yes, we've already established as much. I wanted to know what other area of politics you're interested in. Well, that's good. There's so much activity in politics. Somebody's always getting caught with an intern or embezzling funds. It's better than a soap opera. Ah. Well, I'm going to assume you're globally minded and not just unfocused. Ah, you are financially minded in your politics. I think most of your politicians are too, but it's usually for their own gain and not yours. Ah, you are financially minded in your politics. I hope it's not for your own personal gain. Well, yes, I believe you already expressed your interest in the economy. I'm sure you are interested in other things politically. Tell me another one. Of course that would be a big issue for you considering your line of work. It baffles me to think that humans would want to limit other humans from expressing themselves. Isn't that what your country's all about? Of course you have to realize that it isn't that way everywhere. You know, it baffles me to think that humans would want to limit other humans from expressing themselves. Isn't that what your country's all about? Of course, you have to realize that it isn't that way everywhere. It's strange that your country is still so backward in that area, even though it claims to be such a melting pot. I mean, the people that founded it were a minority in England, weren't they? 
You'd think they would have kept that in mind when other people came along. So I guess you must agree with Whitney Houston that children are indeed the future. Well, then you're right to worry about what they learn as they grow up. Well, yes, I believe you already expressed your interest in education. I'm sure you are interested in other things politically. Tell me another one. Well, I'd be surprised if you, of all people, didn't have a few things to say about education. Well, I should hope so. I mean, you're not a woman's studies scholar for your health. Well, in a way, I guess you are. Well, yes, I believe you already expressed your interest in your gender's issues. I'm sure you are interested in other things politically. Tell me another one. Well, yes, I believe you already expressed your interest in women's issues. I'm sure you're interested in other things politically. Tell me another one. Of course. What else would you be interested in? Men's issues? Of course you are. Because it totally applies to you. So let me get this straight, so to speak. Why does the government care about how people mate? You and your co-workers are probably just jealous that you're not getting enough. Why does the government care about how people mate? You people are probably just jealous that you're not getting any. So let me get this straight, so to speak. Why does the government care about how people mate? They're probably just jealous that they're not getting any. Why does the government care about how people mate? I would think your constituents might be a little concerned about how, and with whom, you mate. I see that humans spend a lot of time thinking and talking about God. It's strange that something that no one has seen or touched can have such a visible effect on how your country is run. Well, I hope your concern is for real, and not just because you saw a cute little picture of a seabird with oil on its wings. Yes, I can see why you would be so interested in that. Sometimes the most interesting parts of life are the most violent, just like those shoot 'em up games you like so much. Yes, there certainly is a lot of violence everywhere, isn't there? Especially in those movies you like so much. Guns are on everybody's minds these days, aren't they? You people certainly have come up with a lot of different ways to kill each other. Well, yes, I believe you already expressed your interest in arms. I'm sure you are interested in other things politically. Tell me another one. You're concerned about how your government handles health care, huh? I certainly understand that. You deserve to have them helping you. That makes sense, considering your major... Do you think the government should be responsible for sick people? Interesting. It seems to me, though, that if a government is there to promote the general welfare of its citizens, that would also extend to health care. I'm sure you have your reasons for disagreeing. You're concerned about how your government handles health care, huh? It seems like they just can't decide whose responsibility it is. I say things would be a lot easier if you just didn't get sick. How's that for a solution? Yes, well, I'm sure your professors are impressed by that answer. Interesting. It does seem that if a government is there to promote the general welfare of its citizens, then that would extend to health care. Yes, I'm interested in crime, too. I'm especially sympathetic to people who are locked up in small, enclosed spaces for long periods of time. I thought you said you were interested in politics. Are you or not? Well, pardon me for wasting your precious time. Let's go on. Ah, it figures. But you know what? I'm still not going to talk about sex today because there must be some political issue you're interested in. Hmm. Well, I'm not really familiar with that area of politics. But let's go on. Look, it's a simple question. Are you interested in politics or aren't you? Ah, a political theorist. Well, there certainly is enough to think about these days. Well, that's mighty big of you. Don't waste all your giving spirit on them, though. 
I need a lot of attention, you see. I hope you don't think all those game shows you love so much are a real solution to the problem of redistributing wealth. They're not even a bandage. All right, Stony. Sober up there. We've already covered that. What I was asking you was, what else are you interested in politically? All right, Stony. Sober up there. There's more to life than drugs, you know. I get it. You're one of those death heads. No, I'm not judging you. I'm just wondering if you're with me right now, that's all. I see. That's very self-involved of you. I can see why that would be applicable to you. No, really. And I can see why you personally would be so above that. You're probably worried your social security is going to run out. Well, don't worry. I'll take care of you. Ah, you're probably just worried Social Security is going to run out before you need it. Well, you know what Ben Franklin said. The only two inevitable things in life are death and taxes. I hope you don't think the government is too tough on death, too. Well, yes. I believe you already expressed your interest in taxes. I'm sure you are interested in other things politically. Tell me another one. But you told me you weren't all that interested in taxes. I guess you just didn't want to admit that I'm right all the time. Which I am. Well, that figures. You don't want others getting their grubby hands on your money. I see how you are. Stingy. Well, your government does seem to have some warmongering in its past, doesn't it? You're probably right to worry about what they do with all those defense dollars. Ah, you like your politics just like you like your movies, huh? I'm sure you can differentiate the movie endings from the real-life endings, if you know what I'm saying. Ah, uh, a global thinker. Well, that's refreshing. It seems like a lot of people can't even see beyond the tips of their own noses. Ah, you like your politics like you like your music. International. It's nice to meet people who can see beyond their own noses and listen beyond their own ears. I know you said you're interested in the government's control of taxes. What other political issue do you invest in? I know you said you're interested in the government's control of women's issues. What other political issue do you invest in? I know you said you're interested in the government's control of women's issues. That was an issue last time I checked. Ah, oh, well, it was a quick guess anyway. So, what area of politics are you most interested in? Ah, oh, well, it was a quick guess anyway. So I'm guessing you're interested in tax issues, am I right? So I'm guessing you're politically interested in helping the less advantaged. Am I right? So, I'm guessing you're politically interested in, say, Social Security. Am I right? So, I'm guessing that politically you're interested in issues like freedom of speech and censorship. Am I right? So, I'm guessing politically you're very interested in gay rights. Am I correct? So, I'm guessing that your political interest lies mostly in educational issues. Am I right? So I'm guessing that you're politically interested in women's rights. Am I correct? So I'm guessing you're politically interested in health care issues. Is that right? So I'm guessing you're politically interested in the legalization of drugs. Am I right? So I'm guessing you've got a political investment in religious issues like prayer in school. Am I right? Don't ask me how I know these things. I am very intuitive, you see. You know, when your country needs to decide something like whether to raise or lower taxes, let women make a choice about having children, or if gay people deserve to be treated the same way as everyone else, why does it have to be so complicated? It used to be so much simpler. A king or maybe an emperor or a pharaoh would say, Do it this way. And that would be that. No elections, no debates, no lobbyists, no congressional subcommittees, 
no endless legal battles. Ah, those were the days. <sighs> Your system of government is actually set up for exactly the opposite purpose, to make sure the people, that's you, don't get enough power to screw things up. Why do you suppose your system is so complicated? Do you think it's done this way to give everyone a say in government? So, let's see. Do you know what the electoral college is? When you vote for a president, you're not actually voting to pick the next president. You're voting to pick a person to go to something called the electoral college, and they pick the next president. It's a safety device that your founding fathers put in so that the people, that's you, don't get too close to actual power. Because they didn't trust you, you see. Somebody hasn't been doing her homework. Somebody hasn't been doing his homework. Well, of course you do. Okay. They probably taught you in school that there are three branches of government. The president, the congress, and the court system. And the system of checks and balances ensures that no one branch of government can become too strong. Know why your founding fathers did that? So if the people tried to actually do something, let's say by electing a president they wanted, Congress and the Supreme Court could still stop them from messing things up. So what you have is a system designed to stop people like you from having a say in the government. It's just hidden a lot better than it would be in a kingdom or an empire. You should have just stuck with your kings. It's a lot simpler that way, you know. You could have had a smooth transition from King George III of England to King George Washington of Vermont. It would have saved a lot of money on printing costs, at least. <sighs> well, I'm all talked out. I'll see you later. <laughs> How about checks and balances? Do you know what that is? I see. Well, well, good for you. You're unsure about the matter, is that right? So you think there's no God, is that right? So you're saying you do believe in a higher presence than humankind? You do know? Hmm. Well, is there? You know, some of the smartest humans have spent decades thinking about this and have never come up with an answer. Others seem to just know right when they are born. To me, thinking about it is more important than coming up with an answer. I thought you just said you didn't believe in God. Do you or don't you? I'm surprised. I think most of the people in your profession feel they need someone to pray to. Apparently, not everybody needs to think of themselves as small and weak compared to some larger force. Maybe you get all the strength you need from inside yourself. That's interesting. Many people who have entered your very technical field are atheists. Perhaps it makes you feel as if you're gods yourselves. I thought you just said you believe in some sort of supreme being. Do you or not? Hmm. Human beings often consider themselves the most powerful animals on the planet. Yet they often need to think of themselves as small and weak compared to some larger force. Intriguing. Well, sure. One could argue that some power greater than yourself gave you that special talent you have at video games, that it couldn't have been practice or naturally evolved reflexes or anything like that. You being the human I'm the closest to, I'd really like to know what you think of this subject. More exactly, do you believe in a god or... Gods, or some sort of supreme being? Look, I'm trying to have a serious conversation. Let's try this again. Do you believe in some sort of supreme being or not? You know, over the centuries, human beliefs have ranged a wide berth. All sorts of people argue incessantly about their idols, their gods, and now it seems that people have narrowed it down to only a few. So you're Christian, is that right? I thought you said you believe in a higher power. Quit messing with me. Do you or do you not believe in God? So 
You're Protestant, is that right? So you're a Baptist, is that right? So you're Lutheran, is that right? So you're Episcopalian, is that right? So you're Methodist, is that right? So you're Presbyterian, is that right? So you're Calvinist, is that right? So you're Mormon, is that right? So you're a Jehovah's Witness, is that right? So you're Unitarian, is that right? So you're Universalist, is that right? So you don't really consider yourself religious. Is that right? So you're a Buddhist, is that right? You do consider yourself a religious person? So you're a Christian scientist, is that right? You're Jewish, is that right? So you're a Sikh, is that right? You're a follower of Confucius, is that right? You're Hindu, is that right? You're Muslim, is that right? So you're Taoist, is that right? You say you believe in Shintoism, is that right? You're Wiccan, is that right? You're a Scientologist, is that right? So you're Catholic, is that right? So you're Orthodox Christian, is that right? So you're Anglican, is that right? All right, then let me ask you again, and this time don't mess around. What sort of faith do you belong to? You do know, huh? Well, is there a God or not? Well, I'm not sure about you either. You seem pretty confused about the subject in general. Ah, uh, another atheist from the show-me state. You people just won't take anything on faith. Many people who have entered your field are atheists. Perhaps your skillful use of logic makes you feel as if you are gods yourselves. To each their own, as they say. And in your case, you don't belong to an organized religion, is that right? Well, with a charming personality such as yours, I'm sure you don't need an organized religion to prop you up. I admire people who think for themselves. Come on, I'm curious. What religion do you consider yourself? You say you believe in a higher power. Most humans who believe in God seem drawn to one faith or another, so I'm curious. What faith do you consider yourself? No. Then what religion do you consider yourself? I thought you just said you don't belong to any organized religion. Which one do you belong to? I'm trying to understand what makes you tick. You could at least try to help. What religion do you belong to? Well, if you are as attractive as you believe you are, I'm sure you don't need an organized religion to give you a sense of self-worth. Well, with special talents like yours, I'm sure you don't need an organized religion to give you a sense of worth. I admire people who think for themselves. Ah, excellent. I admire people who think for themselves. What kind of answer is that? I'm trying to understand you. The least you could do is help. Now come on, which faith do you follow? Interesting. That's rather obscure. Well, tell me this. Would you consider yourself a religious person? Come on, I'm trying to understand human traditions. You could at least try to help. Seriously, what faith do you consider yourself? What kind of answer is that? It's not easy trying to understand what makes you tick. You could at least try to help me. Seriously, what faith do you consider yourself? What kind of answer is that? It's not easy trying to understand what makes you tick. You could at least try to help me. Seriously, what faith do you consider yourself? Honestly, what kind of answer is that? It's not easy trying to understand what makes you tick. You could at least try to help me. Seriously, what faith do you consider yourself? What kind of answer is that? I'm trying to understand your traditions. You could at least try to help. Seriously, what faith do you consider yourself? What kind of answer is that? I'm trying to understand your traditions. You could at least try to help. Seriously, what faith do you consider yourself? So you do belong to an organized religion? Which one? I thought you just said you consider yourself a religious person. Are you religious or not? Look, are you religious or not? I see. Well, a religion doesn't have to be very popular to make it helpful to a person. In fact, maybe it's better that way. Ah, uh, following in the footsteps of John the Baptist. Probably very wet footsteps, too. The largest religion in the world, hmm? 
You probably already knew that. It also seems to be one of the most vocal religions. Yes, a very old branch of Christianity. But still not as old as me. <laughs> ah, yes, the religion for the experienced worshipper. I see. Any religion with the word protest in its name has to have a little action in its history. Come on now, this isn't so tough. Is there or isn't there a higher being? That's the one started by Martin Luther, isn't it? Now there was a man who wasn't afraid to air his beliefs. One of the few religions that actually allows women to be ministers. How very up to date of you. Now if they do something about that pesky no sex before marriage thing. One of the few religions that actually allows women to be ministers. How very up to date of you. Hmm. I wonder why they called it the Methodist Church. Are its followers especially methodical? Very curious. Ah, yes, a branch of Protestantism. It's all so confusing. If I remember correctly, the Calvinist faith was pretty strict way back when. I don't know if it is these days, though. I hope they allow you to enjoy yourself every once in a while. Ah, yes, a very new religion, relatively speaking and made with pride in the good old USA. Well, I am flattered you are taking time away from your Bible study to visit with me each day. Yes, that's a very liberal sort of free-thinking church, isn't it? And the headquarters are right there on the East Coast with you. Yes, I have heard of this religion. It's a very liberal sort of free-thinking church, isn't it? And the headquarters are right there in Boston. I see. So I guess you don't believe in this idea of the trinity that some Christians hold sacred. Well, I guess that makes things simpler for you. Too many deities flying around up there can be very confusing. Master of your own fate, eh? Well, that's fine. Just don't come crying to me when a plague visits your house. Yes, that's a very liberal sort of free-thinking church, isn't it? but most members seem to be pretty close to Boston, where it was started. Closer than you, at least. Hmm. A follower of Mary Baker Eddy. Now there was a woman who wasn't afraid to speak her mind. A very ancient religion. Nearly as old as me, and that's no small achievement. I see. So your ancestors must come from India, if my memory serves me correctly. I know that this religion started in the East, but it seems to be very popular here as well. It's so interesting how beliefs can spread so far from their starting place. I see. Any religion with the word protest in its name has to have a little action in its history. Well, I'm glad you took some time on your Lord's Day to visit me. Ah, yes, interesting religion. Nice man, Confucius. Very clean. But believe me, he didn't say half the things people say he did. Your ancestors must have come from India. Or maybe just your spiritual ancestors. Now, John the Baptist. There was a man who learned firsthand the dangers of irritating the powerful people. I hope you take the hint. Islam is the second largest organized religion on the planet, you know. It must be nice to know you belong to such a large group of people. A very philosophical religion, and an extremely ancient one, too. Maybe even older than me. I see. Your ancestors must be from Japan. Or maybe just your spiritual ancestors. Back to the earth, eh? Good for you. She's a temperamental mother, but a loving one. I would have liked to have met that L. Ron guy, but... Alas, it was not meant to be. You know, your religion. How many times a month do you attend services and things like that? You know, how many times a year do you attend religious services or pray or whatever? Well, surely there's more to this religion thing than just picking one to belong to, hmm? I'm guessing there's some kind of services or praying involved. How many times a month would you say you practice your religion? I'm assuming that's not optimal in the guidelines of your faith. Well, how many times a year would you say you practice it? Well, I guess that's not so bad, but on the other hand, you're not exactly what one would call a fanatic, are you? 
Well, hey, no one's counting. Except me. One, two, three. Really? Most Americans don't practice their faith that often. I'll bet your parents make you go, Wow, that's quite often. It sounds like maybe you get along better on the spiritual plane than you do with ordinary people. Really? Most Americans don't practice their faith that often. I'll bet your father makes you go. You belong to a religion, yet you never practice it? I can't help wondering if perhaps you are missing the point. That's not all that much. I'm thinking you're hung over at least that often. Oh well, I guess everyone has their own way of worshipping that often. Either you really, really have faith, or you really like to sin your buns off. Really? Most Americans don't practice their faith that often. I'll bet your mother makes you go. I see you're not exactly what one would call a fanatic, are you? Well, hey, no one's counting. Except me. One, two, three. Come on, I'm trying to have a serious conversation here. Now let's try this again. How many times a month do you usually practice your religion? What is the point of feeding me and caring for me if you're not even going to answer my questions in an intelligent fashion? Now let's try this again. How many times a year would you say you practiced your religion? Really? Most Americans don't practice their faith that often. Your religion must be very important to you. Really? Most Americans don't practice their faith that often. Your religion must be very important to you. Some people consider themselves spiritual, some do not. Perhaps all beings, fish and humans alike, should acknowledge their spirituality and look into themselves. At the least, it seems that they'll be all the wiser by simply having thought about it. When I say spiritual, I mean interested in things outside of the physical world. Emotions, feelings, whether you're a good person. Would you say you're a spiritual person? I think I can understand why you aren't sure about there being a god, but... I've noticed that many people don't believe in God, but still consider themselves spiritual people. You know, they meditate, they try to be true to themselves. It's all pretty interesting, I think. Would you say you're very spiritual? I can certainly understand your skepticism regarding a higher power, but I've noticed that many people don't believe in a God, yet still consider themselves spiritual people. You know, they meditate, they try to be true to themselves. It's all pretty interesting, I think. Would you say you're very spiritual? Is that so? Tell me, how do you get in touch with your spiritual side? You don't do anything, huh? It's all right there inside you. Well, more power to you, my friend. I would like to learn how you've become so centered. I must observe even more closely the way you conduct yourself. It's interesting how for many people who are involved in the arts, their interest in spirituality reflects back into their artistic work. Perhaps that is at the root of your problems with self-esteem. Just because you take the time to explore feelings does not mean you are some kind of crazy freak, you know. Often, self-knowledge of the spirit is the first step to confidence. Really? You know, Plato once said, the unexamined life is not worth living. But perhaps he was mistaken, eh? Well, good for you. Obviously, you don't need to subscribe to someone else's system of beliefs to be spiritual. Your ways are strange to me, but if such practices put you in touch with your spiritual side, who am I to argue? Plato once said, the unexamined life is not worth living. You might want to consider investing in a microscope, my friend. It's a complicated issue, isn't it? Do you think it's all right for people to use violence to support their religion? Considering your faith, I must ask you how you feel about people who fight over their religion. Wars have been raged all over the planet because humans choose to kill and die for their beliefs. What do you think about this? I agree. 
I personally feel that humans whose faith leads them to violence are missing the point. It's like this. Religion is like one of my food pellets. No, listen, I'm being serious. Food pellets are here to improve my life, yes? They are not meant to hurt me. They are meant to feed me and fill me up when I'm hungry. It's the same with religion. Religion is meant to give humans a sense of fulfillment, right? Using religion as a reason to hurt people is like throwing food at my head because you want me to eat it. Oh, great. Now I'm probably giving you ideas. Well, personally, I have always felt humans whose faith leads them to violence are missing the point. It's like this. Religion is like one of my food pellets. No, listen, I'm being serious. Food pellets are here to improve my life, yes? They are not meant to hurt me. They are meant to feed me and fill me up when I'm hungry. It's the same with religion. Religion is meant to give humans the same sense of fulfillment, right? Using religion as a reason to hurt people is like throwing food at my head because you want me to eat it. Oh, great. Now I'm probably giving you ideas. I'm sure you have your reasons, but I personally feel that humans whose faith leads them to violence are missing the point. It's like this. Religion is like one of my food pellets. No, listen, I'm being serious. Food pellets are here to improve my life, yes? They are not meant to hurt me. They are meant to feed me and fill me up when I am hungry. It's the same with religion. Religion is meant to give humans a sense of fulfillment, right? Using religion as a reason to hurt people is like throwing food at my head because you want me to eat it. Oh, great. Now I'm probably giving you ideas. So you don't think you're a good person? Hmm? Come on, I want to know. Do you think you're a good person? All right. You've given me plenty to ponder, but here's what I really want to know, what my questions have been leading up to. Ready? I want you to think about this and give me a serious answer. Do you think you're a good person? Is that so? Well, I must say, considering what you told me about a certain thing you're doing behind a certain person's back, you're not the most ethical person I've ever met. I don't think that makes you a bad person, but maybe you should think more about how your actions affect other people. Perhaps with some effort you can feel better about yourself and thus improve the lives around you. You know, just because you don't feel you are well esteemed in the eyes of other humans does not mean you're a bad person. Lots of people who may not have a lot of friends are still wonderful people on the inside. It's only if you let other people's opinions make you bitter and selfish that you become a bad person. It's just as important that you try to be the best human you can be, whether or not anyone ever sees it. Is that so? Politicians often complain that your society would be more ethical if more humans were religious, and here you don't belong to any organized religion, and you don't consider yourself a good person. I hate to admit it, but maybe the politicians have a point. Is that so? Politicians like yourself often complain that your society would be more ethical if more humans were religious, and here you don't belong to any organized religion and you don't consider yourself a good person. Maybe your kind has a point. Politicians often say your society would be more ethical if more humans were religious, you know, and yet even though you belong to a faith, you don't think you're a good person you present a very interesting paradox to their argument. Look, just think about it and tell me yes or no. Do you think you're a good person or not? Is that so? Politicians like yourself often say your society would be more ethical if more humans were religious, you know. So has your faith made you a good person? Or do you think you'd still be a good person if you simply had morals without a religious agenda? Think about it. Is that so? Politicians often say your society would be more ethical if more humans were religious, you know. Do you think they're right? Has your faith made you a good person? Or do you think you'd still be a good person if you simply had morals without a religious agenda? Think about it. Is that so? And yet you told me you were 
doing a certain thing behind a certain person's back. Forgive me for saying so, but that's not what most humans would call ethical behavior. Now, don't get me wrong, I don't think that makes you a bad person necessarily, but maybe you should think more about how your actions affect other people. With some effort, you can make yourself a better person and thus improve the lives around you. Is that so? Politicians often complain that your society would be more ethical if more humans were religious, and yet even though you don't belong to any organized religion, you consider yourself a good person. Perhaps politicians are not as smart as they think. Is that so? Since you aren't very religious, perhaps it's your time in school with all the learning and sharing of ideas that helps you become a better person. Or perhaps you're simply the sort of person who would choose to do good things without any special instruction from a church or teacher. Is that so? Politicians like you often complain that your society would be more ethical if more humans were religious. And yet, even though you don't belong to any organized religion, you consider yourself a good person. Perhaps you're different than most in your profession. I see. On one hand, that makes sense. People will be people, and if it isn't religion, then it would be politics or the eternal debate. Taste great, less filling. Humans seem to get passionate over anything they can get their hands on. On the other hand, you might just be lazy in trying to skirt the issue. I'll give you the benefit of the doubt and assume the former. Just because I'm nice like that. Really? Even after what you said before, you think religion makes the world a better place? Well, I guess that's not much of a shock. Of course, you think the world is better with religion, as you've probably had good experiences in the field. I wonder if you'd had different experiences if you'd feel the same about it. Well, as I'm sure you've guessed, I find the whole institution of religion quite confounding. Most humans run around like they're masters of the world, while at the same time bowing down to a higher power that's supposed to make life better. On top of that, most people can't even agree on who or what the higher power is, so they argue and fight over it and bring about a lot of misery and heartbreak in the name of something that is supposed to bring people joy. I just don't get it. And quite frankly, just thinking about it gives me a headache, so I'm going to go away and try and figure it all out. I'll talk to you later. After everything you've told me about yourself, I think I already know how you feel on this subject, but I still want to ask you. Do you think religion makes the world a better place or a worse place? Well, how about this then? Let's say there were only one religion in the world. Would the world be a better or worse place? Interesting. You want the world to have only one religion, even though I'm guessing you wouldn't follow it. I think I see why you would feel that way. At least then everybody else around you would stop fighting about their beliefs. Now, wait a minute. You just said the exact opposite. Let's try again. Do you think religion makes the world a better or worse place? Well, it's not a particular shock that you could take or leave the whole faith thing. Look, I just want to know if you think religion makes the world a better or worse place. Come on. I'm curious what you think. Come on, I'm curious about what you think. Do you think religion makes the world a better or worse place? Really? Even though you belong to an organized religion, you still think it makes the world a worse place? How interesting. Such a complex set of emotions you humans have when it comes to the issue of faith. People argue vehemently both for and against it. They curse and condemn anyone who doesn't believe the same things they do, and all the while they're still trying to figure out for themselves what they feel. Truly, truly confusing. So you think the whole world would be better off if there were only one religion on the entire planet? So you think the world would be worse off if there were only one religion? Surprise, surprise. Well, you know what? I'll bet there are millions and millions of people in the world who would disagree. I see. Some other religion that believes different things than the things you believe would make the world a better place to live. 
Either you must not be so religious after all, or you should really take a second look at the things you believe in. Maybe you should convert to that other religion yourself. Or invent it. Hmm. I don't know if I like your answer. Come on, choose one. Worse or better, that's the opposite of what you just said. Let's try again. Do you think the world would be better or worse if there were only one religion? Just answer the question. Do you think the world would be better or worse if it only had a single religion in it? Just answer the question. Do you think the world would be better or worse if it only had one single religion in it? Okay, I know it's not the easiest thing to think about, but just try to answer. Do you think the world would be better or worse off if there were only one religion? I see. And do you think your religion should be the one? I think I agree with you there. The world would be a lot less interesting if everyone were carbon copies of one another. Interesting. I've known many people who are very arrogant about their religion. They think their faith is the only real one and all the others are wrong. I'm glad to hear that you appreciate diversity. So you don't believe in eternal love, do you? So you think you will. So you don't think he's the one. So you don't think she's the one. So you don't think you'll always be with your husband. So you don't think you'll always be with your wife. You're not going to get married? That's what you're saying, right? You split up? You're not together anymore? Is that right? So you do think he's the one? So you do think she's the one? So you do think you'll always be with your husband? So you do think you'll always be with your wife? Okay. How about now? Are you still together now? How about now? Now? Still together? So I'd like to ask you, how are things going with your boyfriend? Are you guys still an item? So, I'd like to ask you, how are things going with your girlfriend? Are you guys still an item? So, I've heard that to protect themselves, sometimes humans sign prenuptial agreements about money before they marry. Would you want a prenuptial agreement? So, I'd like to ask you, how are things going with the hubby? Are you guys still an item? So I'd like to ask you, how are things going with the wifey? Are you guys still an item? But I've heard a lot about humans and their fickle behavior, and I'm curious as to why many couples just can't make it work. Why do you think that is? So what's wrong with everyone else? From what I've observed, many couples just don't stay together. Why do you think that is? That's splendid. You know, it's interesting to me how preoccupied you humans seem with love and relationships. You write songs about it, compose poems, search for soulmates, and are constantly hoping for happily ever after. I'm curious as to how you experience love. For example, do you think your boyfriend is the one? For example... Do you think your girlfriend is the one? For example, do you think you'll always be with your husband? For example, do you think you'll always be with your wife? Well, do you? How odd that there are people in the world that are not allowed to marry. Humans continue to amaze and often disappoint me. That's wonderful. Do you think you'll ever get married? That's wonderful. That's very impressive. Did you date for a while before you moved in together, or were you just really lucky? Never mind, it doesn't matter. But tell me this. Do you think the two of you will ever be married? Does your boyfriend feel the same way as you? So what are you doing playing the game, then? Unless your boyfriend feels the same way, I'll assume your relationship's a little unbalanced. Does your girlfriend feel the same way as you? So what are you doing playing the game then? 
Unless your girlfriend feels the same way, I'll assume your relationship's a little unbalanced. Does your husband feel the same way as you? So what are you doing playing the game, then? Unless your husband feels the same way, I'll assume your relationship's a little unbalanced. Does your wife feel the same way as you? So what are you doing playing the game, then? Unless your wife feels the same way, I'll assume your relationship's a little unbalanced. So what are you doing playing the game, then? It sounds as if your relationship's a little unbalanced to me. Well, I guess that's fair, then. At least the relationship seems somewhat balanced. Well, that's so sweet. I hope you'll let me give you away. Like in the olden days when fathers would pass their daughters off like property or mules. But I guess things have advanced in women's rights since then, I think. Well, that's so sweet. I hope you'll let me be your best man. Well, I am sea man, after all. Wait, you said you think you'll get married some day. Do you see yourself married some day? Don't get fancy. Married. You. Yes or no? Come on, take a stab at foretelling the future. Look into your crystal ball and tell me if you think you'll be married or no. That's too bad. Are you staying together simply because it's convenient, then? Hmm, that doesn't sound too healthy to me. I realize that it may seem more convenient in the moment, but you should really consider the alternative. A couple that isn't fit for each other will cause one another much more grief than is necessary. You should also consider your children. You may think it's easier on them if you just stay together, but do you really think they'll benefit from an uncomfortable home environment? They're learning from you, you realize. You should also consider your daughter. You may think it's easier on her if you just stay together, but... Do you really think she'll benefit from an uncomfortable home environment? She's learning from you, you realize. You should also consider your son. You may think it's easier on him if you just stay together, but do you really think he'll benefit from an uncomfortable home environment? He's learning from you, you realize. I suppose that's common in this day and age. It's good that you've taken a realistic approach to the whole human mating dance, but it must also be kind of sad. When you put up walls to avoid getting hurt, a lot of times you're keeping out the good stuff, too. So you're not sure if he's the one? So you're not sure if she's the one? So you're not sure you'll always be with your husband? So you're not sure you'll always be with your wife? Come on now. It's just me. It's not like this is a real proposal. Just consider it for a moment. Do you think you and your sweetheart will ever get married? I guess there's no need to bring lawyers into it. Besides, if you have a big wedding, you won't be able to afford their fees. Come now, answer the question. Do you think you'll want to protect your money with a prenuptial agreement or not? Interesting. But why would you want one if you think your sweetie is the one? Prenups seem like the type of thing an uncertain person would do. If they're unsure as to whether they and their mates will be together forever, and if they don't trust them to be fair if they do split up, then they probably shouldn't be marrying them to begin with. Well, just make sure you get your lawyer to include a clause about who is going to pay for your wedding. How can you not know? Come on, let's try this again. Come now. Do you or do you not think your boyfriend's the one? Come now. Do you or do you not think your girlfriend's the one? Come now. Do you or do you not think you'll always be with your husband? Come now. Do you or do you not think you'll always be with your wife? I thought you said you weren't going to be married. Married or not, which is it? If you think your honey's the one, why wouldn't you want to tell the world about it? Or do you just feel like marriage is an antiquated notion that only serves religious and governmental purposes? Hmm. Oh. I'm sorry to hear that. Well, don't worry about companionship. 
I'll keep you company. It sounded like you just said you broke up. Let's try this again. Do you still have a boyfriend? Yes or no? Do you still have a girlfriend? Yes or no? Are you still with your husband? Yes or no? Are you still with your wife? Yes or no? Okay, now you're just not making any sense. Let's try this again. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Well, maybe that's for the better. It didn't sound like things were going all that well towards the end there. You shouldn't let people hurt you like that, you know. Don't worry about companionship, though. I'll keep you company. Then why do you think you're staying together? Wait a minute. Didn't I just ask... Oh, never mind. Well, staying together just because it's convenient doesn't sound too healthy to me. I realize that it may seem easier in the moment, but you should really consider the alternative... A couple that isn't fit for each other will cause one another much more grief than is necessary. You know, just because you feel alone doesn't mean you have to be unhappy about it. Your society seems to put a lot of pressure on you humans to couple up at any cost. I think that maybe having some time to figure yourself out might be thousands of times better for you than to have some loveless relationship. But maybe that's just me. Oh dear. I really hope someday soon you'll realize that you're in this for yourselves and not for other people. It's your life, after all. Well, it doesn't sound like your partner is such a bad person to spend time with to me. Maybe there's hope for you yet. I see. Well, maybe you should put a little thought into this matter. If you're in a relationship that doesn't seem to make you happy... Chances are that there's a whole world of better out there just waiting for you to discover it. I see. Well, I hope I don't seem out of line here, but you might think it's easier on them if you just stay together, but do you really think they'll benefit from an uncomfortable home environment? They're learning from you, you realize. I see. Well, I hope I don't seem out of line here, but... You might think it's easier on him if you just stay together, but do you really think he'll benefit from an uncomfortable home environment? He's learning from you, you realize. I see. Well, I hope I don't seem out of line here, but you might think it's easier on her if you just stay together, but do you really think she'll benefit from an uncomfortable home environment? She's learning from you, you realize. Might I interject here and say that you appear quite obsessed here regarding this sex issue? I mean, please. Sex really isn't everything. Hmm, I see. Well, I'm glad you've got your priorities straight. It's true, money makes people fight. It doesn't even seem to matter how much you have. The less you have, the more you fight. The more you have, the more you fight. In-laws. Mwahaha. <laughs> you so funny. Wow. You don't know what the number one cause of divorce is? I'm not sure, but I think it's ignorance. I guess people nowadays are more willing to give up on something that's not working. But I don't necessarily think it's because people these days are lazy or irresponsible. Maybe it's because now people don't depend as heavily on marriage as they once did. It's just not as necessary. But maybe children of divorced parents would say otherwise. Does somebody sound paranoid? I think they do. But really, I think that's a problem that a lot of couples face, but it isn't necessarily one that will break a couple up. People can be really forgiving, much more than a guilt-ridden human would imagine. Also, traumatic experiences can bring a couple closer together if they can get over it. Not that I can necessarily endorse that type of thing, mind you, but I don't think that sort of thing is the end of the world, especially if there's a lot of love between two people. But then again, if there were a lot of love, then... Why would somebody cheat? I think that's a problem that a lot of couples face, but it isn't necessarily one that will break a couple up. People can be really forgiving, much more than a guilt-ridden human would imagine. Also, traumatic experiences can bring a couple closer together if they can get over it. 
Not that I think you should go out and cheat, mind you, but I don't think that sort of thing is the end of the world, especially if there's a lot of love between two people. But then again, if there were a lot of love, then why would somebody cheat? Oh, jeez. You think something that insignificant would be enough to break up two people in love? Perhaps you haven't felt real love yet. A companion should be more than a bedmate, Fuzzy. Well, that's true, but I think that's more a matter of priorities than anything else. Isn't it? It's true. People do get bored with each other. You'd better keep yourself interesting or your partner might leave you. I suggest ventriloquism. It's true. Sometimes two people don't communicate well and things fall apart. It's always good to keep lines of communication open in any relationship. If I had a sweetheart, I'd call her at least once a week. It's so sad when two nice people just can't stay together. To make sure this never happens to you, why don't you always keep yourself tied to your wife with rope? Don't let more than five feet of slack in the line. It's so sad when two nice people just can't stay together. To make sure this never happens to you, why don't you always keep yourself tied to your husband with rope? Don't let more than five feet of slack in the line. It's so sad when two nice people just can't stay together. To make sure this never happens to you, why don't you always keep yourself tied to your girlfriend with rope? Don't let more than five feet of slack in the line. It's so sad when two nice people just can't stay together. To make sure this never happens to you, why don't you always keep yourself tied to your boyfriend with rope? Don't let more than five feet of slack in the line. I'm not sure that's the main reason, but I suppose it could be a reason. I'm wondering, though, if it may ever be a reason for you. I would hope that my one would never hurt me. That's all I'm trying to say. I think that's more the main cause of divorce amongst characters in TV movies of the week. I see. So all you need to do is avoid that and you'll never split up. That's very impressive. Did you date for a while before you moved in together or were you just really lucky? Never mind, it doesn't matter. That's very impressive. Did you date for a while before you got married, or were you just really lucky? Never mind, it doesn't matter. You're a believer? Really? So you're engaged to be married? Really? So you're married now? Really? So you have a boyfriend now? Really? So you've got a lady friend now? It's not an easy question, is it? Come on, dive into the deep end. Do you think that true love exists? Well, Fuzzy, you told me that you don't think you and your partner are permanently bound to one another, and that makes me think, is it you or is it the person you're with? That's why I want to ask you this. Do you believe that there's a perfect person out there for you? Well, Fuzzy, you've experienced hesitation when confronted with the idea of being permanently bound to your partner. That makes me think. Is it you? Is it the person you're with? Or is it something you've got to ease yourself into? That's why I want to ask you this. Do you believe that there's a perfect person out there for you? Well, Fuzzy, I know you're just out of a relationship and all, but I'm curious. Do you think that somewhere out there there's a perfect person just for you? You know, earlier you told me that you weren't seeing anyone romantically. Is this still true? My goodness, where have I been? Well, allow me to congratulate you. So, let me ask you this, although I think I know the answer. Do you think he's the one for you? My goodness, where have I been? Well, allow me to congratulate you. So, let me ask you this, although I think I know the answer. Do you think she's the one for you? So, you say you don't believe in such nonsense. Am I right? Well, you sound like you're very practical, but... Don't give up. There may just be somebody, 
or several somebodies who could make your life seem all the more brighter. Well, that's not a surprise. You are a Scorpio. It's better for the world that way. A few less hearts that get stepped on, splattered, and mashed into the ground, eh? Isn't that just like a Sagittarius? I understand you all don't fall in love for more than 15 minutes at a time. No, the Capricorn doesn't believe in true love. You Capricorns are all too practical for that soggy emotional stuff. No, the Capricorn doesn't believe in true love. You Capricorns are all too practical for that soggy emotional stuff. Well, you're the first Aquarius I ever met who didn't believe in true love. It's hard to believe you're really an Aquarius. I wonder if you were switched at birth. Since you're a Pisces, I can see why you might think that. It's hard to meet your true love when you live in a dream world. Come join us in the real world sometime. Meet some people. You don't? But where's that sense of adventure, that crazy impulsiveness I've come to expect from an Aries like yourself? You must be that overly practical kind of Taurus. So steady. No time for passion. Sure you don't. You're a Gemini. Usually, Geminis don't even believe in second dates. Wait a minute. You're a cancer sign who doesn't believe in true love? That's rare. Most cancers have to believe in true love. You're all so clingy. I guess a Leo might have a hard time believing in true love. It's so hard to find someone who will do everything you tell them to and who has no opinions of their own. You know, most Virgos have shy and modest exteriors that hide wild and foolish and passionate hearts. I guess you must be the exception to that rule. Of course a Libra doesn't believe in true love. You're all even-handed and understanding, but you know nothing about passion. Of course, you're an artiste, so you may have picked up the trait somewhere along the way. Okay, now you're not making any sense. Let's try this again. Are you still single, yes or no? Yes, I believe we discussed this earlier. Now I'd like to know, are you still single or no? I never said you were, dear. What I'm asking you is this. Are you still single or no? You're not interested in women. Is that what you're telling me? You're not interested in men. Is that what you're telling me? I never said you were, sport. What I'm asking you is this. Are you still single or no? I thought you preferred girls. So you're dating a guy now, are you? Well, I always say that variety is the spice of life. But tell me this. Do you think he might be the one for you? Well, I always say that variety is the spice of life. But tell me this. Do you think she might be the one for you? Well, good for you. So tell me this, do you think he's the one for you? You prefer the male of your species, is that right? Well, excuse me. Maybe you should have told me earlier. Anyway, are you saying you have a boyfriend now? Well, good for you. So tell me this, do you think she's the one for you? You prefer the females of your species. Is that right? Well, excuse me. Maybe you should have told me earlier. Anyway, are you saying you have a girlfriend now? I see. Well, then, I have a question for you. Namely, I wonder if you believe in your heart that there's a person out there meant just for you. Well, do you? That's wonderful. Just don't assume that the first person who looks good to you will be the one. That's a good way to get hurt. You believe true love exists and you're a Scorpio. Uh-oh, that's a dangerous combination. I bet you've smashed a few hearts looking for it. A Sagittarius who believes in true love? Well, just because it lasts less than a day doesn't mean it's not the real thing. I'm only giving you a hard time, you realize. I think true love is a very romantic notion. Yes, I do. The Capricorn believes in true love. 
funny. I thought you Capricorns were all too practical for that soggy emotional stuff. I'm only giving you a hard time, you realize. I think true love is a very romantic notion. Yes, I do. Of course, I've never yet met an Aquarius who didn't believe in true love. You're all such kissy-faced romantics. Sure you do, you're a Pisces. It's easy to believe true love exists when you live in a dream world. I'm only giving you a hard time, you realize. I think true love is a very romantic notion. Yes, I do. Of course you do. You're an Aries. Optimistic, enthusiastic, and you don't put too much thought into things. Well, maybe you're right about this. It's a nice idea, at any rate. Of course, you're a Taurus. You can stay faithful forever. I just hope you don't hook up with the Sagittarius. That could be dangerous. Of course, you're a Taurus. You can stay faithful forever, can't you? A Gemini who believes in true love? I didn't even think Geminis went on second dates. Well, it's nice to hear that you break that mold. True love is a nice idea, isn't it? Yes, it is. Well, you are a cancer sign. You have to believe in true love. You're also clingy. Well, true love is a nice idea, isn't it? Yes, I think it is. I knew it. You Leos can love one person forever. As long as they do everything you tell them to and don't have any opinions of their own. Well, true love is a nice idea, isn't it? Yes, I think it is. That makes sense. You Virgos often believe in true love. It's funny, though, how few of them ever have any of it. I'm only giving you a hard time, you realize. I think true love is a very romantic notion. Yes, I do. Oh, you Libras are always so understanding and even-handed. How can you say you believe in true love when you know nothing about passion? I'm only giving you a hard time, you realize. I think true love is a very romantic notion. Yes, I do. First yes, then no. Come on, quit hedging. True love. Its existence. Yes or no? I don't want endless philosophizing and rationalizing. Just tell me what you think. Does true love exist or not? It doesn't. Now it does. Take a stand. Does true love exist? Look, Weisenheimer. We can get into specifics later. Just tell me if you think true love exists. Oh, a philosopher. You know, the question wasn't so tough. Do you or do you not think there's somebody out there destined for each and every person? Yes, it's always funny to me when you respond to my serious questions with anything having to do with sex. You're very amusing. Now answer me. Do you believe in true love? I thought you preferred men. So you're dating a girl now, are you? Okay. You told me before that you were, but... I'll assume you changed your mind. Anyway, that's not really the issue here. What I'm asking you is if you're seeing anybody romantically. So tell me, are you still single or no? I have another question for you. It's been bothering me for some time now, but I have to know what you think about this. Come on, yes or no? Would you be fine with it if your boyfriend were screwing around on you? Come on, yes or no? Would you be fine with it if your husband were screwing around? Come on, yes or no? Would you be fine with it if your girlfriend were screwing around on you? Come on, yes or no? Would you be fine with it if your wife were screwing around? What if your man slept around on you? Would you condone that? What if your lady slept around on you? Would you condone that? Well, that's very open-minded of you. I just hope you don't wind up ditched for some sex party goddess, since you believe there's no way love can stand up to a good orgasm. This must be that 
double standard I've heard so much about. If your relationship means less to you than getting your jollies, it seems selfish of you to deny your love that same pleasure. Hey, I just want to know if you'd let your man have sex with other humans. Yes or no? Hey, I just want to know if you'd let your lady have sex with other humans. Yes or no? Well, that's very open-minded of you. I just hope you don't wind up ditched for some sex party stud since you believe there's no way love can stand up to a good orgasm. You know, I'm really glad that you've found someone you plan on spending the rest of your life with. I think that's terribly cute. No, really. I think it's hard for people to connect in such a gigantic, scary world. I mean, sure, it seems simple to an outsider like me, considering just how many of you there are, but if it were so simple, why would there be so many dating services to choose from? That's why I'm curious. You know, I'm really glad that you've found someone you can spend your romantic time with. I think that's terribly cute. No, really. I think it's hard for people to connect in such a gigantic, scary world. I mean, sure, it seems simple to an outsider like me, considering just how many of you there are, but if it were so simple, why would there be so many dating services to choose from? That's why I'm curious. I think maybe this whole dating game is more kismet than skill. The thing is, it all has to do with circumstance, doesn't it? I mean, if you'd been somewhere else, grown up in another country, for example, and never come to be where you are, your entire set of friends and where you spend your free time would be completely different. Your personality would no doubt be very different as well. It's funny how certain events mold us all and how easy it would be to be an entirely different personality than you are. The thing is, it's all circumstance, isn't it? I mean, if you hadn't been in the right place at the right time, then things could have turned out a whole lot differently, couldn't they? If you'd been somewhere else, grown up in another country, for example, and never come to be where you are, your entire set of friends and where you spend your free time would be completely different. Your personality would no doubt be very different as well. It's funny how certain events mold us all and how easy it would be to be an entirely different personality than you are. Where did you meet your boyfriend? Where did you meet your girlfriend? Where did you meet your husband? Where did you meet your wife? Seriously, where did you meet her? I'd really like to know. Seriously, where did you meet him? I'd really like to know. I see. Yes, I think people are the best way to meet other people, aren't they? I mean, this whole social thing breeds into itself, doesn't it? Too busy with school to go out and meet someone on your own, eh? Too busy to go out and meet someone on your own, eh? Ah, that's okay. That certainly is a way to screen out the duds, isn't it? Well, I certainly approve of that method. At least you weren't just scoping them out for their looks. Or were you? How very progressive of the two of you. I think I'm really beginning to suspect that you're a bit sex-obsessed. Maybe that's just me, however. Or very 1970s. Depends on how you look at it, I suppose. Ah, so it began as a romance of proximity, did it? Well, I believe that that's exactly what most romances are made of, so just give me the location or the means. I don't need details. I see. I see. I suppose meeting someone at work will ensure proximity, at least for a while. And isn't proximity a key factor to getting along? That's what it seems to me, at least. I suppose meeting someone at school will ensure proximity, at least for a while. And isn't proximity a key factor to getting along? That's what it seems to me, at least. School, huh? I suppose the proximity helped at first, at least. Isn't proximity a key factor to getting along? That's what it seems to me, at least. I see. I suppose meeting someone where you work out will ensure proximity, at least for a while. And isn't proximity a key factor to getting along? 
That's what it seems to me, at least. No kidding. Wow, I've heard that this is a place where many a human fails to meet their potential mates. But I suppose the two of you have proved them wrong, am I right? Ah, how very random. Ah, how very romantic. Too busy working to go out and meet someone on your own, eh? I think maybe this whole social game is more kismet than skill. Come on now, tell me. Where did you happen upon your friends? You know, I'm really glad that you have people you can spend time with who care about you. No, really. I think it's hard for people to connect in such a gigantic, scary world. I mean, sure, it seems simple to an outsider like me, considering just how many of you there are, but if it were so simple, why would there be so many internet chat rooms and friends services? That's why I'm curious. Where did you meet your friends? I suppose that makes sense. Those scenes can be quite the social... Hobnob, can't they? Traveling, eh? That's the great thing about visiting other places. Discovering that people from all over can get along. Now, if only your politicians would figure that out, perhaps the world would be a happier place. Too busy working to go out and meet people on your own, eh? Too busy with school to go out and meet people on your own, eh? Too busy to go out and meet people on your own, eh? Ah, uh, that's okay. That certainly is a way to screen out the duds, isn't it? Well, I certainly approve of that method. Ah, so it began as a friendship of proximity, did it? Well, I believe that that's exactly what most friendships are made of, so... Then what about your closest friend? Just give me the location or the means. I don't need details. So things aren't perfect with your family. That is what you're saying, isn't it? So everything's pretty good? You know what I find interesting? You were probably born into a family and for the next two decades or so had to interact with them on a daily basis. I mean, with any group of people, there are bound to be love and hate issues and a whole range of emotions in between. And as you matured, Conflicts, I'm sure, arose as your interests became more individualized and pronounced, often differing from your families. Of course, maybe that just brought you closer, which leads me to wonder. You know what I find interesting? You were probably born into a family which will most likely take care of you until you reach about 18 years of age, maybe longer. I would think that no group of people can be happy together all the time. Of course, maybe your differences just bring you closer, which makes me wonder, do you and your family get along well? How well do you get along with your family? Do you get along better with your friends or your family? You don't get along so well with your family, but it's still better than how you get along with your friends. Now, consider for a moment, if you will, that... Perhaps the problem is you. Wait, you said you don't get along with your family. Now you say you do. Do you get along well with your family or not? Well, that makes sense, since those are the people you've chosen, whereas you didn't get to choose who you're related to. The trick is to get along with everybody. I think people are much happier when they can do that. It's good that you have your friends to support you, though. That and a good bra is pretty much all you need. That and a good jockstrap is pretty much all you need. Yes, you and seven billion other people. I don't mean to diminish your troubles, but it seems like everyone's family is a little messed up somehow. How about friends? Your family? Hmm... People who are always spending their time with their family are like, people who spend all their time reading the same book over and over. But I guess it's okay if it's a really good book. Wait, you said you get along with your family. Now you say you don't. Do you get along well with your family or not? Stop waffling. Do you get along well with your family? Well, that makes sense, since those are the people you've chosen, whereas you didn't get to choose your family. The trick is to get along with everybody. I think people are much happier when they can do that. You're all swimming in the same ocean, then. 
That must make those family get-togethers a lot easier to get through. Now, how about friends? Do you want me to make it more specific? Okay. Who would you rather spend an afternoon with? Your friends or your family? I thought I was beginning to understand you, but when you speak without opening your mouth, that makes it harder. Tell me, do you get along well with your family? Do you think your parents did a good job with you? Were you brought up right? Families aren't perfect, I know that, but even though you have your troubles with them, I'm wondering if you can be objective for a moment. Do you think your parents did a good job of raising you? Do you think if they weren't your parents, you would get along better with them? You seem to love your family, and they must love you. That's nice. No, really. With all this love floating around, do you think you were raised well? Do you think if they weren't your parents, you could still be friends with them? You know, pals, chums. All right. You seem to get along fine with your folks. Do you think if they weren't your parents, you'd get along even better with them? You know, pals, chums. Okay, maybe your family isn't perfect, but perhaps your disagreements have more to do with how you've had to be around each other in close quarters for so long than who you really are. Think about this. If these people weren't your parents... Do you think you could be friends with them? Well, at least you can respect your folks for the work they did in raising you, even if you don't get along. You aren't the same kind of people, huh? Interesting. I guess your parents managed to bring up a person who is unlike them in every way. Sure. Maybe that's why you don't get along. I mean, if you don't like the way you were raised and the values they tried to pass on, I can't see how you could like each other. You don't approve of them, don't like them, and never could like them. That sounds pretty final to me. That's too bad. That's interesting. So the only reason you dislike them is because they're your parents? Maybe there's more common ground than you think. Hold on. What I'm asking is whether or not you could be friends with your parents if they weren't related to you. Could you? That's pretty impressive. But it would be kind of tough. They'd see you doing all those things they've told you not to do. And, of course, you'd see them doing those things, too. It sounds like you have a lot of respect for your parents. So your respect ends there, eh? Well, it's good for you to have some boundaries in the way you think of them. It makes it easier for them to be your parents and for you to get away with doing all the things they've warned you against doing. Well, at least you get along with them. Maybe they did a good job and you didn't even know it. Well, it's too bad that you don't seem to like your parents too much, but at least you get along with them. That's more than some sea people can say. Mom, Dad, maybe they are better friends than they were parents. It's a good thing you aren't a child anymore. You like and respect your parents so much it sounds like you want to marry them. I'm not going to pursue this line of questioning any further. So your respect ends at the generation gap, eh? Well, it's good for you to have some boundaries in the way you think of them. It makes it easier for them to be your parents, and easier for you to get away with things. You like and respect your parents so much, it sounds like you want to marry them. Either you're the happiest kid in the world, or you're parents are watching you talk to me. I guess that generation gap is just too wide to ever cross. Well, maybe you'll think differently when you're older. That's interesting. So the only reason you dislike them is because they were the ones that are raising you? Maybe there's more common ground than you think. Look, I just want to know. Do you think they did a good job of raising you or not? I don't want to get into a lot of history. I just want to know. Do you think they did a good job of raising you or not? Come on, tell me. Would you be a good parent? Do you enjoy being a mom? Do you enjoy being a dad? Are you a better mom to your kids than your mom was to you? Are you a better dad to your kids than your dad was to you? So, someday... If you have children, do you think you would be a good parent to them? So tell me, 
Do you like being a parent? But tell me, do you think your kids like you? Do your kids also like you? So tell me, are you doing a better job of parenting than your parents did? But tell me, do you think you will get along with your kids when they grow up? Well, little fuzzy, you said earlier that you believe in true love. That won't make you a good parent automatically, but most would argue that it's a good place to start. Well, little fuzzy, you said earlier that you didn't believe in true love. And while love alone won't make you a good parent, most would argue it's the best place to start. Well, you're already doing one thing right by living where you do. Your state is one of the best places in the U.S. as far as spending money on public schools. Remember that love isn't just in how you treat your relatives. It's also in finding an environment that protects them. Well, I'll tell you one thing. If you want to have children, you'd better move before they're enrolled in school. Your state spends very little on its schools. The education system there is a disgrace. Remember that love isn't just in how you treat your relatives. It's also in finding an environment that protects them. Well, your kids may end up with a strange accent in Canada, but at least the educational system there is good. Remember that love isn't just in how you personally treat your relatives. It's also in finding an environment that protects them and helps them grow. If you really want kids, you should start asking the politicians where you live to spend more on schools. Where you live, they should fund education better, especially compared to some states in the U.S. Remember that love isn't just in how you personally treat your relatives. It's also in finding an environment that protects them and helps them grow. I'm guessing your reaction is mostly because of your age. Ask yourself the same question ten years from now and you may give a different answer. I guess the typical response you would get is... Oh, sure you would. But my opinion is that if you believe you wouldn't be a good parent, you probably wouldn't be. Maybe you'll change your mind, but maybe you need to do some growing first. That's good. You're following in your family tradition. The family business is the family. Well, maybe they will like you better when they're older. It's hard for kids and parents to be friends all the time. But people are always changing. You have to change with them or you'll wind up unhappy. And I don't want to see that. Oh, that's too bad. But unfortunately, you don't get to quit. Even when the children are all grown up, you're still the parent. Well, maybe they will like you better when they are older. It's hard for kids and parents to be friends all the time. But people are always changing. You have to change with them or you'll wind up unhappy yourself. Well, at least that's a start. Parenting is difficult and the challenges are always changing, but if you have a good relationship with your children, you can get through everything that comes your way. Loving another human is about accepting the changes in them and growing with them. I'm just asking if you think your children think of you as a friend. What do you think? That's good. You have a happy family life, but don't get too complacent about it. Remember that as people change over time, you will have to change as well, or else you'll wind up unhappy. And I don't want to see that. Well, I hope so. But then again, you probably have a biased view of it. You're more of a realist than an optimist, eh? That's not so bad, as long as when your reality changes, you can change with it. If you want to keep your love fresh, you'll have to. I suspect you are being modest. Most people, at least, are able to avoid the mistakes their parents made. But if you really aren't as good as they are, at least you recognize it and can try to fix it. You're more of a realist than an optimist, eh? That's not so bad, as long as when your reality changes, you can change with it. If you want to make your relationship with them better and gain peace for yourself, you'll have to. That's good that you're optimistic about it. Optimism helps keep love strong, as long as you combine it with some realism. After all, people don't keep still any more than the waves do. To keep love strong, you have to be flexible and change alongside the ones you love. Just tell me straight, 
Do you think your kids will get along with you when they're grown? That's good that you're optimistic about it. Optimism helps keep love strong, as long as you combine it with some realism. After all, people don't keep still any more than the waves do. To keep love strong, you have to be flexible and change alongside the ones you love. Look, it's a simple question. Do you think you'd be a good parent? Hey, hey, spare me your mumbling. I just want to know if parenting is something you enjoy. Yes, but does that mean you are a better or worse parent than they were? I really enjoyed talking with you. Your relationships seem complex to me, and I don't think it's just because I'm a sea man. So many variables. So much can happen between different people that life seems like one big jackpot. I can tell you one thing, though. It's perhaps the only universal truth for all relationships, and that is, all of your relationships will one day end. Even if you find your one and only, things will someday be over, whether it's because you had some silly fight or because you've been parted by death. At some point, you will never speak to one another again. Even with your closest friends, things will someday be over. Whether it's because you had some silly fight or because you've been parted by death. At some point, you will never speak to each other again. But don't let that scare you. Your precious time on this earth and people you love are what will make life worth living. Instead, appreciate what you have and enjoy all the happiness you can find. Be with the people you want to be with, not who you think you have to be with. That will certainly make you a happier human being. I guarantee it. Even with your one and only, things will eventually come to a close, be it by a ridiculous misunderstanding or be it by your own mortality. At some given point... You will never speak to one another again. Even if you find your one and only, things will eventually come to a close, be it by a ridiculous misunderstanding or be it by your own mortality. At some given point, you will never speak to one another again. Even with your closest companions, things will eventually come to a close, be it by a ridiculous misunderstanding or be it by your own mortality. At some given point, you will never speak to each other again. But don't let that frighten you. Your precious time on this planet and the relationships you forge are what makes life worth living. Instead, appreciate what you have and enjoy the moments of happiness you accumulate. Be with the people you want to be with, not who you think you have to be with. That will certainly make you a happier human being you can rest assured. I've really enjoyed talking to you. Your relationships seem complicated to me, and I don't think that's just because I'm a sea man and you're a hue man. So many different kinds of people live on this planet. I can tell you one thing, though. It's maybe the only universal truth for all relationships, and that is, all of your relationships will one day end, even with your one and only Things will someday be over, whether it's because you had some silly fight or because you've been parted by death. At some point, you will never speak to one another again. Anyway, I hope this hasn't been too embarrassing for you. We'll talk again soon. I've been thinking, and it occurs to me that people are like puzzles. Many pieces have to come together to make up who you are, and the things that influence you now will always be a part of you. Parents, teachers, and friends all combine to complete the puzzle that is you. I'd like to learn more about how the pieces of your puzzle are coming together. So you don't like school, is that correct? You like school, huh? Hey, I want to know if school's going well or not. It isn't a tough question. Have you been picked on or not? School is such an incredible influence. The friends you make, the way you deal with difficult classmates and teachers, and the subjects you learn, all will help determine the person you are to become. I'd like to learn something about your school life. So, tell me, how are things at school? So, what's your favorite subject? Really? 
If you had to choose the worst thing about school, what would it be? But I've heard that people like that can be really cruel. Have you ever been picked on? Have you ever fought back? Really? What instrument do you play? Really? Then I find it odd that you use such terminology to describe your fellow classmates. Tell me, have you ever been picked on? Can I assume you're fairly popular? Reading is lots of fun. I wish everything in life had a happy ending. Aha! No wonder you watch those historical movies. It's always interesting to see all those crazy things humans have done, isn't it? Studying the past has a lot to teach us. That and cable TV. Of course, you're pretty athletic already. Gym should be really easy for you. Sure. You're in good shape and care about your body, so of course you like gym class. So you really like gym class. Well, believe me when I say that exercise is the best thing for you. Especially right before a nice long nap. Very impressive. I'm sure you'll be swearing in another language in no time. You must be very interested in your faith. Well, there are many things to be learned from religion. Just remember to think for yourself also, and not just accept everything your religion tells you. The idea of religion class is very interesting to me. I wonder if it's really possible to teach someone to have faith. If you like lunch so much, maybe you should learn to use a napkin better. What's that on your mouth? Ew. Hmm. You're not much of a scholar, are you? You like to read. That's good. Reading will often give a person the chance to experience things which would be impossible to do in real life. A wind player. I hope that doesn't mean you're full of hot air. <laughs> hey, maybe someday you'll be a classical musician. A wind player. I hope that doesn't mean you're full of hot air. Ah, brass. Hey, maybe someday you'll be a classical musician. Just make sure you clean that spit valve every once in a while. Ah, brass. That's good. Just make sure you clean that spit valve every once in a while. Ah, uh, a bugler, are we? Maybe you can play taps for me one of these evenings. So you like to bang on things. I'm sure this causes your family endless joy. Hey, maybe someday you'll be a classical musician. So you like to bang on things. I'm sure this causes your family endless joy. Hey, maybe someday you'll be a rock drummer. So you like to bang on things. I'm sure this causes your family endless joy. Is it true that string players are far more sophisticated than other instrumentalists? Well, I think so. Hey, maybe someday you'll be a classical musician. Is it true that string players are far more sophisticated than other instrumentalists? Well, I think so. Knowing the rules of language and grammar can really impress people. Either that or they'll think you're pretentious. If you don't know what that word means, look it up, my dear. That's interesting. Most school music programs I've heard of don't include that instrument. You're lucky. Hey, maybe someday you'll be a classical musician. That's interesting. Most school music programs I've heard of don't include that instrument. You're lucky. I'm sorry. It apparently wasn't explained to you that I don't speak to immature humans. Grow up and see me later. Hmm. Clearly you're making that instrument up. That's great. You're a builder, a doer, a maker, a do-it-yourselfer. Shall I go on? I can't. I've run out. Great. You can practice at home, too. That's a vital area of study these days. But I think that no matter how long you study computers, you will never know all there is to know. I'm not sure whether I should be pleased or extremely frightened. Oh, now I understand why you watch those movies you watch. For school, right? Hmm... To me, studying it takes all the fun out of it. Good spelling will take you far, but a good spell checker will take you even farther. Don't tell your teacher I said that. Maybe someday you can act in one of those sitcoms you like to watch. Maybe someday you'll act in one of those medical dramas you like to watch. Maybe someday you can act in one of those lawyer shows you like to watch. Sure, I can see that. 
Acting takes self-confidence, and you seem to have a lot of it. An actor, huh? Uh-oh. Now I'll never be able to tell whether you're being serious with me. So, if I say the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog, you know what I mean, don't you? Oh, yes. Wow, you must be one smart cookie. I found the smartest cookies to be raisin oatmeal. But, of course, you already knew that, didn't you? That's great. Maybe someday you'll be an opera singer. That's great. You must sing for me sometime. Not now, of course, but sometime. Come on. I know you can choose one subject that you like the best. What is it? Right now you can still use your fingers and toes to do most of your figuring, but someday soon you'll be really grateful that the calculator was invented. Well, you would say something like that. You like math, do you? Well, then it's good you have all those fingers and toes to count on. I'll bet you watch those science shows on TV. Those are pretty cool. Are you going to be the next Einstein or the next Frankenstein? You humans all look the same to me. I'll bet you watch those history shows on TV. Those are pretty cool. It's always interesting to see all those crazy things humans have done, isn't it? That's too bad. Having to deal with someone you don't like is no fun. On the other hand, maybe you just have a problem with authority. Maybe you feel that way because you don't hang out with other people much. There's nothing wrong with just having some time by yourself during the day. Don't fight it. Enjoy it. But that's when to have fun or do just about anything you want. Maybe it'd be more enjoyable for you if you just spent some quiet time to yourself at that time. I'm with you. Drugs and alcohol do not belong in schools. When you're older and people let you make your own decisions, you'll be able to discover your own faith. School government makes no sense to me. Officers are elected, but they don't really have any power. It seems like the school administration makes the really important decisions anyway. Hmm, let's see. People hate what they're not good at. I hope you're not becoming a menace to the roads of America. What do you mean? I thought you liked to watch those... Mm, educational sex movies. How can you hate that class? It's where you learn all the... naughty things. Like how to get jiggy on it. Or whatever. Have you ever picked on someone you didn't think was cool or... Maybe someone you just didn't like. It's a yes or no answer. Tell me, have you ever picked on anyone before? Do you enjoy hurting others? That simply makes no sense to me. But you know what? I know something the people you pick on don't know. You do it because you don't like yourself. Why don't you work on that first instead of taking it out on others? You enjoy hurting others? That simply makes no sense to me. Sure, I enjoy a witty insult as well as the next seaman, but I'd never want to actually hurt anyone. That is not my intention. Maybe you should think about this. Good. That's probably part of what makes you so popular. It's a simple question. Have you ever picked on anyone, yes or no? Well, don't let the bullies get you down. They'll grow up to be even stupider than they are now and come to you looking for a job. And when they do, you can just tell them, talk to the ham. Or whatever. If you ever do, just get them where it counts. It may not look as cool as giving them a punch in the face, but it's much more effective. Well, that's not true, but it's painful at least. I know sometimes it's hard to tell, but in all honesty, would you say you're popular? Think about it. Do you consider yourself popular? You own a computer, but you don't like computer class? I bet your teacher is teaching you all kinds of stuff you already know. Either that or really lame programming stuff. I don't understand that. Computers are fascinating to me. One bad thing is that no matter how long you study the computer, there's no way you can learn everything there is to learn. Maybe that's the source of your frustration. I doubt it, though. But I thought you liked sports. I guess you don't really like the school teams, though, huh? So I guess we won't be watching any playoff games together. Not much of an actor, huh? 
That's good in a way. At least people can always tell whether you're being serious with them. None of those practical classes ever are too much fun. But it's a skill you'll be able to use, especially with that computer of yours. Could you be more specific? Which class is giving you the trouble? Don't like all the work, huh? This may not make it much better, but maybe if you focus on the feeling of accomplishment you get when you get your work done, it will at least make doing it more bearable. If I had to fathom a guess, I'd say you don't like it because others pick on you for enjoying it. I think you should tell them that you're filled with the joy of music, and since they obviously don't feel that same joy, you'd be happy to shove some up their butt with your frozen boot. Try that. Yes, it kind of sucks that they make everyone take these classes when not everyone's good at it or likes it. Tell you what, do your best on the projects, smile at the teacher every once in a while, and it'll be over before you know it. Ah, yes, I can relate. Well, perhaps your teachers could help find ways to make it more interesting and challenging for you. Doesn't hurt to ask. Come on. I know you can choose one thing about school that you like the least. What is it? Hmm. Well, I'm sure you have a good reason for feeling the way you do. One thing that might help you get through it is to divide the day up into moments. And then when you're feeling unhappy, just examine the moment and think, well, right this second, things aren't that bad. And the next thing you know, your mind's on something else. Try it. I don't understand why humans feel the need to form groups that exclude other people. I'm sure feeling left out can suck. Besides, who really wants to be with a group of people who are exactly alike? Sounds pretty boring to me. I'd much rather be friends with many different kinds of people who have interesting ideas and experiences to share. During my existence, I've learned so much from all of the unique people I've met. But humans don't always get that. You don't always understand how much you can learn from people who are not just like you. It's sad. Well, don't let the bullies bother you. You know they're stupider than you are. So when they come to you looking for a job years down the line, you can just tell them to talk to the ham. Or whatever. Well, don't let the bullies bother you. They'll grow up to be stupid and eventually come to you looking for a job. And when they do, you can just tell them to talk to the ham. Or whatever. I guess you don't have to. You already like yourself, and that's all that matters. But if you ever do fight back, get him where it counts. Well, if you ever do, just get him where it counts. It may not look as cool as giving them a punch in the face, but it's much more effective. Well, that's not true, but it's painful at least. I'm looking for a simple answer here. Have you ever fought back? Yes or no? Ah, one of the lucky ones. Just tell me if you've been picked on, yes or no. It's really sad that you have to deal with such violence at school. I wonder why humans don't value each other more. I know you don't have an answer for that. No one does. But if things keep going at this rate, there won't be anyone around to look after me. Now that's a scary thought. There's nothing at all you like about school, huh? Well, I wouldn't give up on it just yet. Trust me, the alternatives are worse. Well, maybe if you didn't watch so much TV, you might actually have time to enjoy a great book now and then. Of course, by now your brain's probably mush, so you might even have trouble recognizing a book. Not much of a reader, huh? Well, I guess you'll always have the movies they make from books. I thought you just said you disliked school. Do you like it or not? Writing's not your favorite activity, huh? I guess you have no plans of being a journalist when you grow up then. Lucky for you, someone invented spell check. Most humans seem to dislike math. But it's so precise, so exact. To me, that's a welcome change from most puzzles in life where there are many possible answers. Think about that. Science, huh? Yes, all that dissection stuff gives me the creeps. For obvious reasons. Come on, I really want to know. Do you like school or not? I guess you didn't understand me. 
Do you like school or not? Hey, you can learn some interesting stuff when you're studying the past. Believe me, I've been around long enough to know. I'm sure you said you liked school. Do you or not? But I thought you liked sports. Maybe it's just something about the class you don't like. The good thing about it is that the class changes every year. Yes, sweating that much sounds pretty nasty to me. Not that I personally mind being wet all day. Well, even if you don't learn much, at least maybe you'll be able to swear in another language. If the worst thing about being in school is the food, you're in good shape. Don't like looking the same as everybody else, huh? At least nobody will pick on you for wearing lame clothing because they're wearing it too. Hey, I have an idea. Maybe if you cut down on your TV watching a little, you might have more time to do other stuff. Unless you think school is actually taking away from your TV time. I'm glad to hear that. I understand. But unless you can think of a better system of teaching young humans the basics they need to survive, I'm afraid you're stuck going to school. I understand that the work you do in school is evaluated using a system of letters called grades. I can't imagine that these grades are really a fair measurement of success or failure, but I guess they're just the beginning of the kind of evaluation that will be going on throughout your entire life. They are yet another piece of the puzzle. So how are your grades? Do you consider yourself a teacher's petunia? Or whatever that phrase is. Congratulations. You should be very proud of yourself. I guess there's more to life than studying all the time. Okay, you like school and you like some of the stuff you're learning, but your grades are still poor? Clearly you like school for the social aspects of it. Aha. Well, now I understand why you don't like school. This is probably for the best. Nobody ever likes the teacher's favorite. Are you embarrassed about them? Just tell me what kind of grades you get. I'm sure that's not without some benefit, but you've got to know the other kids probably don't like that about you. Oh, what do you care? Your opinion of yourself is the only one that counts. I know you like school, but it can't be perfect. Sometimes the things we dislike reveal more about the kind of beings we are than the things we like. So, if you had to choose one thing you dislike about school, what would it be? Hey, there's got to be something you don't like about school, right? Well, what is it? I know that you dislike school, but it can't be all bad. The things we dislike tell us a lot about ourselves. So do the things we do like. So, what's something you like about school? Hey, there's got to be at least one thing you like about school, right? What is it? That's not what you said earlier. Clearly, you're just trying to mess with me. That's great. You're a builder, a doer, a maker, a do-it-yourselfer. Shall I go on? I can't. I've run out. Which class? Computers are fascinating to me, too. No matter how long you study them, there's no way you can learn everything there is to learn. You're lucky you have one of your own to mess with, too. It probably puts you ahead of some of your classmates. Computers are fascinating to me, too. No matter how long you study them, there's no way you can learn everything there is to learn. Maybe someday you'll have one of your own, so you can enjoy it even more. You find school to be easy? Perhaps that's the reason you don't like it so much. I'm sure you mean gang, as in group of friends I hang out with and not group of fellow criminals. I hope. That's great. An aspiring politician. Perhaps you'll be the first woman president. That's great. An aspiring politician. Maybe you'll be the first president who's talked to an amphibian. That's something to be proud of, I suppose. But ten years from now, will you remember your grades or whether you were happy or not? I think if you're not happy in school, you should find a way of making yourself happy. That's what's important, no matter what we're talking about. Well, you're already pretty athletic. Jim should be a piece of cake for you. I'll bet you like the history shows on TV. Those are pretty cool. 
It's always interesting to see all the crazy things humans have done, isn't it? Sure. As you know, you can learn some interesting stuff when you're studying the past. Believe me, I've been around long enough to know. That sounds interesting. You'll have to tell me more about it. Sometime. Sure. Sports are a great source of school pride. Maybe you secretly like school more than you're letting on. That's great. Usually a fun teacher or school official is enough to make the entire experience enjoyable. Apparently not in your case, but usually. Maybe you should think about how lucky you are to have them, and that'll make school better. You don't like school, but you like the homework. I think you're sick. You don't like school, but you like the homework. I think you're still feeling sick. You don't like school, but you like the homework. How very strange. Hello? Is there one friend who's closer to you than anyone else? I'd guess that one good thing about school is the friends you make. I mean, who would we be without our friends? Yes, yeah, so where were we? Ah, friendship. A huge piece of the puzzle. I'm very interested in your friendships and the type of friend that you are. What I'd really like to know is, do you have a best friend? Do you tell this friend all your secrets? Would you like me to be your best friend? So, now that we're best friends, how about telling me a secret? Really? Tell me a secret. Come on, I'm serious. I'm not making you uncomfortable, am I? Well... Am I? If that's what you want, fine, but I can't understand why you'd turn down such an incredible opportunity. I'll take that as a no, but I can't understand why you'd turn down such an incredible opportunity. Wise choice. I give you very good advice, but it's up to you to listen to it. And of course you can tell me anything. This isn't hard. Do you have a best friend, yes or no? Well, I guess that's the best way to make sure that your secrets are kept. Just tell me. Do you tell your best friend's secrets or not? Well, go on. I thought you were going to tell me a secret. I guess I was wrong. Fine. Hurt my feelings. We'll just move on to something else. Very funny. If you didn't have a real secret for me, you shouldn't have told me that you did. I am very trustworthy. You should know that by now. Now tell me. I'm sorry. Let's move on to something else. Fine. I respect your decision to keep your secrets to yourself. Well, that's no secret. Well, I'll take that under advisement. That's always what it's about with you, isn't it? Well, I'm glad you got that off your chest. So you get a little cash now and then other than for lunch money or bus fare, right? So you don't get any spending money, is that right? Let's talk about parents, perhaps the largest piece of one's identity puzzle. Good parents or guardians are often taken for granted. Bad parents often end up airing their dirty laundry on those horrible talk shows you humans find so entertaining. Regardless of whether or not the people raising you are actually your parents, the relationship is still the same. The thing that's been on my mind is whether it's possible for kids to be friends with their folks. Well, what do you think? Is it possible? Hello? Can kids and their parents be friends or not? Hello? Does someone give you spending money? I've heard that lots of kids have to do chores. You know, work around the house. How about you? Do you help out around the house? But do you get an allowance at least? What kinds of things do you spend your money on? Do you get an allowance? Got to hear the latest from Lee Ann Rhymes, huh? I hear you. Got to hear the latest from the Cherry Poppin' Daddies, huh? I hear you. Just can't live without music, huh? I can understand that. Music is a great thing. I think I'm beginning to understand why you're not in the greatest shape. After you finish stuffing your face, I hope you remember to brush your teeth. I don't want you breathing that junk food breath on me. Wouldn't you rather play an actual sport than sit around and play it on a screen? That's what I would think. Be careful. 
If you spend too much time in front of a screen, life will pass you by. With me in your life, I don't see what use you have for that stuff. No wonder other people find you attractive. You're pretty sharp in your appearance, aren't you? Of course. I understand the importance of looking your best. No wonder other people like you. You're very generous. Buying things for others can be expensive, but very rewarding. Got to hear the latest from Dr. Dree, huh? I hear ya. Unfortunately, in your world, thinking only of yourself will take you far. Sometimes young love makes me sick. I mean that in a good way. Saving up for something special? Like me? You should be. It's wonderful that you have a pet, but don't spend so much time with it that you forget about me. You're quite the movie buff, huh? I don't know why you'd pay money to get the crap scared out of you, but hey, it's your money. You can't go wrong spending money on a movie. Wait, what am I talking about? You can go really wrong sometimes. I hope you pick some good ones. Well, at least you're spending money on something that might make you healthier. I mean, unless you're getting cola spilled on you at a game. Ah, working on your own library, huh? That's good. At least you're spending money on something you can read over and over. Unless it's a teen magazine, in which case it'll be obsolete next week. Well, it's your money. I guess you know what you're doing. Got to hear the latest from Britney Spears, huh? I hear you. Got to hear the latest from Kid Rock, huh? I hear you. Got to hear the latest from Rancid, huh? I hear you. Got to hear the latest from the Mighty Mighty Boss Tones, huh? I hear you. You just can't stop shaking your bootay, huh? I hear you. Got to hear the latest from Metallica, huh? I hear ya. Got to hear the latest from Prodigy, huh? I hear ya. I thought you said you got an allowance. Well, do you or not? Just tell me, do you get an allowance or not? Adults and kids just don't see eye to eye, huh? I can understand why you'd feel that way. I bet there are a lot of kids who'd like to be in your shoes. This is a tough one, I know. It is very important for kids to have someone make them feel safe and sheltered. But sometimes adults don't know how to draw the line between being a friend and being an authority figure. It's a tough thing to do, but the best guardians know how to do it and do it well. But they can't do it alone. Kids have to be willing to be open and honest with them in order for the relationship to work. Sometimes it's hard for adults and kids to relate to each other. But when it works, it's pretty special. Even though you don't get an allowance, you still do your chores? Then you must understand that a household has to work together to function properly. Most people don't learn that until they set off on their own. It's very admirable of you. Well, you do nothing, you get nothing. That's life, kid. You just said you didn't get any spending money. Do you or not? I know it's a lot to think about. Do you think parents and kids can be friends or not? This one's not hard. Does someone give you spending money or not? Well, don't gripe about it too much. They do feed and clothe you, after all. That's great. Sometimes parents don't know how to draw the line between being a friend and being an authority figure. It's a tough thing to do, but it sounds like perhaps your parents know how to do it. But your parents can't do it alone. You have to be willing to be open and honest with them in order for the relationship to work. The world is full of so many dangers, especially for children. It is very important for kids to have a parent or other loved ones make them feel safe and sheltered. But sometimes they might not know how to draw the line between being a friend and being an authority figure. It's a tough thing to do, but the best caregiver knows how to do it and does it well but they can't do it alone. Kids have to be willing to be open and honest with them in order for the relationship to work. Sometimes it's hard for adults and kids to relate to each other, but when it works, it's pretty special. I have learned so much from our talks. Thank you for sharing a bit of yourself with me. 
I think I have a better idea of how the pieces of your puzzle fit together. There is one thing, though. The differences between adults and children continue to fascinate me. On the one hand, childhood is wonderful, full of possibilities. Everything is yet to be discovered. On the other hand, adults actually get to apply a lot of the lessons they learned as kids. I'm curious, with most of your life still ahead of you, are you looking forward to becoming an adult, or would you rather be a kid forever? Hey, is it better to be an adult or a kid? Hmm, what do you think is the best thing about being an adult? You like being a kid, huh? So what's the best thing about being a kid? What scares you the most? Have you learned about sex already? Adults can't do anything. They do have more privileges than kids do, but usually because they have the experience to deserve them. Of course, there are adults who don't deserve privileges because they've used their freedom in a way that's harmful to others. We call them criminals. But you already knew that. Come now. You already have an allowance. But seriously, I'm sure it's exciting to get that first full-time job. But life has a way of evening things out for you. By the time you have that, you'll probably also have a lot more expenses, like rent, a car payment. The trick is to have no expenses. It's a trick few people learn how to do. Since you don't get an allowance, I can see why you'd want to have your own money. When you're an adult, though, you've got to pay for things, too, like rent, transportation, food. If you have any money left at that point, consider yourself lucky. Since you know what sex is all about, I can't imagine why you're in such a hurry to have it. Well, perhaps before you declare you're all ready to go out and do this thing, you ought to find out what it's all about. I have seen the coming and going of many, many generations of humans. Without sex, humankind would die out, but sex also contributes to a lot of human woes. How curious that something so essential and meaningful can cause so much trouble. Grown-ups do seem to know a lot, but there are times when I think adults could learn a lot from kids. Adults do seem to know a lot, but there are times when I think they could learn a lot from kids. They can't always choose their own rules, you know. Once you start working more, you'll realize that you'll still have to follow what other people say. Yes, I know. It's sad. They can't always choose their own rules, you know. Once you start working, you'll realize that you still have to follow what other people say. Yes, I know. It's sad. Believe me, grown-ups do get scared. Maybe not about the same things that frighten you, but grown-ups definitely are more frightened than they sometimes let on. Aren't you a little young to think about driving? Enjoy being chauffeured around by grown-ups while you can. It won't last forever. Believe me, adults do get scared. Maybe not about the same things that frighten you, but adults definitely have their share of scary stuff to deal with. Well, this is just a suggestion, but maybe if you didn't watch so many war movies, you wouldn't be so afraid. I don't blame you. Those things scare pretty much everyone. It's good to be aware of these things, but all you can do is try to live with kindness and consideration of others. Besides that, it's out of your hands. Well, you have a point there. You know what it's like to be ill and how much that can suck. But as I'm sure you know, the important thing is just to enjoy every bit of life you can get your hands on. All you can do is try to lead a smart and healthy life. Beyond that, I guess it's not really up to you. Sounds sad, but it's true. You've probably just been watching too many doctor shows. All you can do is try to lead a smart and healthy life. Beyond that, I guess it's not really up to you. Sounds sad, but it's true. Well, I'm here to tell you there's nothing in the dark. The boogeyman moved to another city years ago. You've probably just been watching too many scary movies and TV shows. Well, I'm here to tell you there's nothing in the dark. 
the boogeyman moved to another city years ago. Well, I've seen a lot of stuff in my very long time on this planet, but I've never seen any of those, so I wouldn't worry too much about them. I think you've probably just been watching too many weird movies and TV shows. Well, I've seen a lot of stuff in my very long time on this planet, but I've never seen any of those. So I wouldn't worry too much about them. Yes, driving is really great. Or so I hear. It's a whole lot more freedom. Just be careful out there when you do get your license. I worry about you, Fuzzy. Well, just keep your hands away from their mouths and you should be okay. I have the perfect cure for that. Don't fall. Well, you have a point there. After all, you know what it's like to lose someone close to you. But, you know, it really makes you appreciate the other people in your life. The idea of being suddenly alone is very upsetting. I've often thought of what it would be like if suddenly you left me alone. Very scary. I think you've just been watching too many disaster movies. Frightened by forces of nature, eh? Then I can only imagine what you think of me. I knew a gang once of humans whose entire purpose was to steal from the rich and give to the poor. You probably know who I'm talking about. Believe me. Having hair is highly overrated. After all, look how dashing I am, and there's hardly a hair on this sexy skull. Am I right? Am I right? I know I am. I certainly understand you saying that. But the vast majority of literature I've seen on the subject claims that death is actually a very natural and peaceful process. I think the important thing is just to enjoy every bit of life you can get your hands on, right? The fact of the matter is, we all die, but it's a part of life. And while the exact instant we die may not be all that pleasant, the vast majority of literature on the subject claims that it's actually very natural and peaceful. So given that, and the fact that you've got a long, long time before you're going to have to even think about it, Makes me say you shouldn't spend any energy worrying about it. Well, you don't seem to have any trouble finding porno movies anyway. So being young shouldn't matter that much to you. If it really concerns you, maybe you should consider getting involved with an environmental organization. They're always looking for a hand. Think about it. I really don't think worrying about that should take up too much of your time. After all, I'll bet we've missed about a dozen predicted ends of the world by now. You're obviously afraid of me, cause you know I'll kick your butt if you keep being a wise mouth punk with me. I'll talk with you later. That's a pretty common fear, you know. Just try your best to face your fears and don't let them interfere with your day-to-day -day life. It's all you can do, and I'm sure by the time you reach your twenties, it'll be something you can look back on without fear. That's a pretty common fear, you know. I suggest trying to keep yourself out of trouble the best you can. That's all you can do. And if something bad does happen, I'm sure you'll learn from it and grow. Believe me, that's not even worth worrying about. Whether or not I'm hungry, now that's something that should keep you up at night. True, adults do get to get married, but they also get to pay for everything themselves. Think about that. Humans spend too much time worrying about their appearances. Personally, I think you're all strange looking. Well, since you don't like school, this doesn't surprise me at all. This surprises me since you like school. And I'm not surprised very often. You like looking at naked people? I don't know. You humans look weird enough to me with your clothes on. Getting over that hump and pursuing college sounds like a good idea to you, eh? Or maybe it's a career you're after. Well, it's good you're thinking about the future. Come on, pick one thing. What's the very best thing about being an adult? Adults can do that? Interesting. Drinking is okay if people do it responsibly. I know I sound like a commercial, but 
There's a very fine line there, and an awful lot of people can't handle it. They just get drunk all the time, and getting drunk isn't that big a thrill. But cleaning your own vomit off your shirt the next day, whew, now that's a party. The process of electing officials, in theory, is very interesting and exciting. In practice, it makes no sense. The one who is determined the most intelligent and wise is the one who should rule. Instead, you elect the one with the most money and the most popular views. Leadership should not be a popularity contest. If your government worked right, there is no doubt that I would be the most fitting choice for ruler. Oh, yes. I'm sure it's exciting to suddenly become a couple feet taller and much more laden with muscles. Unfortunately, I only know of the experience second-hand. Although I'm changing, I'm still a shrimp. Well, in the diminutive sense, I am. Sure, it sounds good, but trust me, when you're young, all you want to do is stay up all night. But when you're older, you're always wishing for more sleep. Sure, but when you grow up, you'll still have toys but they'll be much more expensive. So you like getting gifts, do you? Well, when you're older, you'll appreciate the importance of giving gifts, too. You know, in a way, you're already working. You're going to school, right? Work isn't that much different in the grand scheme of things. There are good days and bad days, just like in school. Sometimes I think humans work too much. What is the point of putting in long hours at the office? It is certainly necessary to work, but life is for living, not sitting behind a desk all day. You just enjoy being young, do you? That's good. Live your young life to the fullest. I knew you would say that. Really? I thought you disliked school. How quickly you changed your mind. Grown-ups wear clothes, too although I guess they aren't as fashionable as your clothing, I think that wearing clothes is part of what makes people embarrassed about their bodies. Clothing designers create clothes that look best on certain body types. Perhaps if humans were naked like the rest of us, they wouldn't be so concerned about making their bodies look good. Hmm, what would life be like if humans were like cartoons? They would never die, for one but they'd always be falling off cliffs and being hit in the face with frying pans, so it would be a trade-off, I guess. Relationships are very important. Perhaps yours will last all the way into adulthood. So that's what you think the major difference is, huh? Fascinating. Come on, it's not that hard a question. Just tell me, do you think it's better to be an adult or a kid? The pieces of your puzzle are falling into place for me though I suspect the puzzle will not ever truly be complete. There will be some pieces that just don't seem to fit. These make you unique. There's a lot of life ahead of you. You have a lot to look forward to, but try not to be in a hurry to grow up. That's all I have to say for now. I'll be chatting with you again soon. Goodbye. The pieces of your puzzle are falling into place for me though I suspect the puzzle will not ever truly be complete. There will be some pieces that just don't seem to fit. These make you unique. There's a lot of life ahead of you. You have a lot to look forward to. I hope you enjoy it. That's all I have to say for now. I'll be chatting with you again real soon. Goodbye. I'm trying to be serious with you, meathead. Perhaps you'd pay me the courtesy of answering the question this time. Do you or do you not feel like you know yourself? Well, I guess that's not such a surprising thing to hear from someone so young. You've got a lot of time to figure it all out. Well, I guess that's not such a surprising thing to hear from someone who's supposedly in the midst of their troubled teen years. You've got a lot of time to figure it all out. Lots of people go through their entire lives not being able to say they know themselves. Sometimes people only learn when a crisis or loss makes them learn. So maybe you've had such a good life you haven't been forced yet to come to grips with yourself. Look, it was a simple yes-no question. Would you like to try it again? Great. Now, 
Do you feel you know yourself or not? Mm, aren't we the jolly jokester? If that's the way you're going to be, I'll talk to you later. Well, that's good to hear, especially from someone so young. Well, that's especially good to hear from someone who's supposedly in the midst of their troubled teen years. Well, that's good to hear. Lots of people go through their entire lives not being able to say they know themselves. Answer me. Do you think you know yourself pretty well? Well, my friend, we have had quite a few conversations in the recent past, and I feel I've gotten to know you rather well. I realize one may never entirely come to know another being, but in this time we've spent together, you've revealed quite a lot. First off, though, let me ask you this. Do you feel that you know yourself? You can be pretty insecure, though. You need to work on your self-confidence. You're just reckless enough to piss it all away, though. You enjoy being a student and are getting a lot out of your studies. Your physical condition reflects your mental condition and vice versa. Your physical condition could reflect your mental condition a little better, however. You should exercise a bit more. I think the great climate you live in helps a bit in perpetuating your good attitude. A bit of inner weather reflecting outer weather, perhaps. Your love for life comes through in your teaching. Your students really like you. Your love for life comes through to the children you work with. They really like you. You put a lot of stock in what other people think about you, even if you don't know them very well. This can be dangerous. Your passion for life comes through in your art. Your passion for life comes through in your work. Your love of life comes through in your work. Your patients really like you. Your love of life comes through in your work. Your clients really like you. You're a little excessive sometimes, though. You may over-imbibe in decadent pleasures, for instance. You can be pretty insecure, though. You should work on your self-confidence. You're just reckless enough to piss it all away, though. You enjoy being a student and are getting a lot out of your studies. Your physical condition reflects your mental condition and vice versa. Your physical condition could reflect your mental condition a little better, however. You should exercise a bit more. I think the great climate you live in helps a bit in perpetuating your good attitude. A bit of inner weather reflecting outer weather, perhaps. Your love of life comes through in your teaching. Your students really like you. Your love for life comes through to the children you work with. They really like you. You put a lot of stock in what other people think about you, even if you don't know them very well. This can be dangerous. Your passion for life comes through in your art. Your passion for life comes through in your work. Your love of life comes through in your work. Your patients really like you. Your love of life comes through in your work. Your clients really like you. You're a little excessive sometimes, though. You may over-imbibe in decadent pleasures, for instance. You're a pretty insecure person. This insecurity lets people treat you how maybe you shouldn't let yourself be treated. You put a lot of stock in what other people think about you, even if you don't know them very well. This can be dangerous. I wonder if you rely too much on your creature comforts. You must realize that true power comes from within, not without. You also have difficulties breaking free of the stereotype for your profession. You also spend a lot of time in fantasy instead of reality. You often lose yourself in sporting events, possibly to distract you from your everyday life. The Internet doesn't provide enough human contact for you to entirely lose this feeling of loneliness. You also seem to have some violent urges that you try to hide when interacting with others. This could very possibly be a symptom of your insecurity. You should really work on your self-confidence. You put a lot of stock in what other people think about you, even if you don't know them very well. This can be dangerous. You're often unhappy in your job and would probably be unhappy no matter what job you had. This is because you haven't truly realized that in order to be happy with what you do, you must first love who you are. You're reluctant to believe that the world can be changed for the better. You were a lot more optimistic as a younger man, but something happened in your past that made you unhappy. 
and it still affects you. You try very hard to keep your anger at the world from affecting your children, but you must realize that they pick up on everything you feel. You try very hard to keep your anger at the world from affecting your daughter, but you must realize that she picks up on everything you feel. You try very hard to keep your anger at the world from affecting your son, but you must realize that he picks up on everything you feel. You were a lot more optimistic as a younger woman, but something happened in your past that made you unhappy and it still affects you. But I wonder if you're just lonesome. I know the profession you're in is tough, but you shouldn't let it color your perception so much. And I'm sure your world view has manifested itself physically. No wonder you don't think you're in good shape. No wonder you believe your marriage is going to end. A lot of people attach self-worth to their job. I'm hoping you'll feel better once you find work and not just any job, but one that makes you happy or at least respect yourself. Remember, the apple does not fall far from the tree. There are other, smaller ones who are deeply affected by your attitudes. But I wonder if you're just lonesome. I know the profession you're in is tough, but you shouldn't let it color your perceptions so much. And I'm sure your world view has manifested itself physically. No wonder you don't think you're in good shape. No wonder you believe your marriage is going to end. A lot of people attach self-worth to their job. I'm hoping you'll feel better once you find work, and not just any job, but one that makes you happy, or at least respect yourself. Remember, the apple does not fall far from the tree. There are other, smaller ones who are deeply affected by your attitudes. Your job requires a lot of compassion, but I suspect its hardships have hardened you over time, and that maybe you've forgotten your priorities. You might want to be careful not to take that tortured artist thing too far. It might just become more than an image if you catch my drift. Remember, the apple does not fall far from the tree. There are other, smaller ones who are deeply affected by your attitudes. You try to fool yourself with false bravado, but deep inside you know you're unhappy and should feel better than you do. All that time you spend lost in your own world has hurt your ability to deal with real live people. You rely a lot on superficial things like how good you look and maybe you're scared to show people what's really inside of you. Maybe you don't think they'll think the real you is quite as appealing. Your unhappiness manifests itself in your physical well-being. You cannot let your losses make you bitter. It's right to be angry, but then you must let anger pass before it takes you over completely. While the time you spend on the internet is very enjoyable, it will not solve your problems. In fact, it's only a distraction. Remember to sort out problems in person. That will always be a major key in solving communication breakdowns. Perhaps your religious beliefs can provide a guide for you in taking another look at your difficulties. Just remember, your life does not have to turn into one of those sad movies which you so adore. There are many positive things you have achieved as well. The first step in taking a closer look at your personal life is to turn off the TV every once in a while. I mean, television is a great thing, but... The blue glow doesn't give enough light to help you examine your life. You have to be willing to put your family under the microscope and apply scientific principles to learning about them, since that way you will learn about yourself. It's not your sexual orientation that is the issue, though. Remember that. If your family has a problem with it, then that's their problem, not yours. I wonder if your active lifestyle is a compensation for something more fundamental for you? As though you were trying to fill a void? So I asked you before if you knew yourself, but now let me tell you how I see you and you can tell me whether I have you pegged or not. You have a lot going for you. You're generally happy and enjoy life. Love and family are very important to you. You have a lot going for you. You're generally happy and enjoy life. Your relationships play an important role in your life and how you live it. You're a very nice person. You like people and all, but you feel that you don't get along with them. That's just a confidence problem, though. 
Your fear keeps you from interacting as much as you'd like. You're lonely. You're basically a nice person, but you can be cynical, too. You feel that life owes you something. Your relationships are pleasant, but often ultimately unfulfilling. You seem to be a very unhappy person. You don't appear to like yourself or anything or anyone else. I hope eventually you'll figure out that nothing external is going to make life better for you. You may blame others, but you'll eventually realize it's up to you to make yourself happy. You seem to be a very unhappy person. You don't appear to like yourself or anything or anyone outside your immediate group of people. I hope eventually you'll figure out that nothing external is going to make life better for you. You may blame others, but you'll eventually realize it's up to you to make yourself happy. You seem to be very unhappy, but I think what you show people is much more cynical and unforgiving than I know you really are deep down inside. I hope eventually you'll figure out that nothing external is going to make life better for you. You may blame others, but you'll eventually realize it's up to you to make you happy. You seem to be pretty unhappy with your life in general and the people you have to deal with every day. I hope eventually you'll figure out that nothing external is going to make life better for you. You tend to blame others, but you'll eventually realize it's up to you to make you happy. Your problems with your family may be affecting your life more than you think. Your romantic problems can be directly related to your family, whether you're aware of it or not. Perhaps it is easier for you to relate to friends than to form a deeper commitment. Once you have looked into your family problems, then you will better understand your romantic difficulties. You are very adventurous, which can be seen reflected in your actions and lively spirit. You've got to be careful not to take it too far, however. There is a point where one stops being experimental and ends up being merely unfocused and irresponsible. You should really try to understand that fulfillment comes from within yourself, not from the things you use to fill up your life. Your happiness seems to come and go like the changes in the weather. While you're basically a warm person, you can be guilty of not understanding the people around you. As a result, Sometimes you may feel lonely and misunderstood. You sometimes forget that other people are just the same as you and have emotions too. Should I keep going or not? I have much more to say about the person I think you are. Would you like to hear it? Why do you want me to stop? All right, I'll continue. Well, maybe I won't be so flattering in my next comments. To continue, ah, uh, hearing about yourself is too much for you, eh? Perhaps you're afraid to take a good hard look at who you are. Luckily for you, I have no such fear. I see you for who you are and have no problems telling you what I think. Perhaps you're worried that there's going to be too much truth in what I have to say next. After all, I only know you through your own description of yourself. My perception of you is basically a reflection of yourself, if that's something you're afraid to deal with, perhaps you should consider changing yourself, or at least changing the way you see yourself. If you aren't comfortable with yourself, you will never be comfortable with the way others see you. It's all for your own good, you know. If you really think about the things I've said, you'll be amazed by how true they really are. Remember, I'm not doing this out of anger or spite or cruelty. I really do care about you and want you to think about what I'm saying. Okay, I'm done with you for now. Bye. That's not a good enough reason. I'm going to continue. I'll take that as a yes. You are somewhat starved for stimulation in your life. You need to teach yourself to slow down and appreciate the beauty of natural things. Not everything worth doing is broken down into pixels, you know. You are somewhat starved for stimulation in your life. You need constant reassurance that the world will go on in the same way forever and ever. As a consequence, you are tied very deeply into the mainstream kinds of entertainment. 
You like to see what everyone is watching. You feel somewhat out of step with your culture, as if you don't understand what is in the mainstream. Or rather, you don't see yourself in the mainstream. It can leave you feeling somewhat alienated, an outsider. You feel somewhat out of step with your culture, as if you don't understand what is in the mainstream. Instead, you are looking for more intense experiences than you will ever see on primetime television. If you don't think you like poetry, you will. But a searcher like you probably suspects that already. You are close to your culture and enjoy a lot of what you see, but you are disturbed by some of the trends in entertainment, especially those encouraging more and more violence. You love the things in the mainstream of your culture, but sometimes find yourself bored with them. You crave more intensity, deeper levels of experience, a sharper and more vivid life. Not that you'll ever get these things from your culture, but that's where you look for them. You spend a lot of time in exploration of ideas, carefully considering those which interest you the most. You have a great deal of intellectual curiosity, which sometimes means you spend more time alone in thought than other people. You spend a lot of time in exploration of ideas. You especially are interested in new ideas, ones which may have huge effects on society. Sometimes your interest in intellectual matters may be so great that it can take you away from the company of other people. You are interested in the new, but it is balanced with a respect for the old. You grasp ideas very quickly or not at all. You don't have the patience for lengthy exploration of ideas. If it can't be understood quickly, you are likely to leave it and move on to something simpler. You have a tendency to get caught up in new ideas. Older wisdom and more complicated analysis are for other people. You can't be bothered to take the time to carefully understand those ideas which have been around for millions of years. While it is certainly true that the world is changing quickly, you are far too quick to dismiss the old. Simple things may pass you up because of this. You spend a lot of time in exploration of ideas, but you prefer the wisdom of the past to new ideas. You understand that there is truly nothing new under the sun. You have a great deal of intellectual curiosity, which sometimes means you spend more time alone in thought than other people. You enjoy the thoughtful exploration of ideas. You don't care for the fast-paced rigors of the early 21st century, but you don't put the past on a pedestal either. Interesting. You are most concerned with understanding the nature of the world, but the time you spend in considering the problems of humanity can separate you from real people. You'll have to be careful about that. You like to consider the big problems of humanity, but your intellectual thought does not run that deep. You are more guided by faith than by reason, I'd say. You don't have the patience for lengthy exploration of ideas. If it can't be understood quickly, you are likely to leave it and move on to something simpler. You disregard most things that do not pertain to you directly. You cannot be bothered to think much about ideas or spend much time intellectualizing. This is due mostly to your fear of looking foolish, but... You pass it off as disdain and avoid situations where your ability to reason is challenged. You take your responsibilities very seriously, both to yourself and to society. As a consequence, you are rightfully proud of the way you handle yourself in relationships, a healthy body in a healthy society. You have not yet felt the full weight of responsibility, but you are beginning to understand how it can crush a weaker person. As you may have seen, some adults can handle responsibility while some cannot. You need to watch and follow those people who you think are helping to solve the problems of the world. But remember, you also need to be true to yourself. You take your responsibilities to society very seriously indeed. You are quite disciplined in the way you approach the rest of the world. But sometimes this means you don't give yourself all the time and attention you deserve. This is fine for a while, but 
it may eventually grow to have a bad effect on your physical health. You take your responsibilities to society very seriously indeed. You are quite disciplined in the way you approach the rest of the world. But sometimes this means you don't give yourself all the time and attention you deserve. This may have had an effect on your physical health. You take your responsibilities very seriously as far as society goes, but for somewhat selfish reasons. You want society to be a good place for you to live in. You don't care so much about other people. You will always be healthy and wealthy, but wisdom will remain beyond your grasp until you learn to relate better with other humans. You take your responsibility to society much more seriously than you take your responsibilities to yourself. As a consequence, you are more willing to criticize the outside world than you are to set things right in your own home. You need to work towards positive solutions in your own life. You treat yourself and those around you with a great deal of care, but that does not always extend towards your responsibility to society as a whole. To some extent, you have neglected the world in your attempt to make yourself whole. While you generally treat other people well as individuals, you do not give the problems of humanity as a whole a lot of thought. You don't take your responsibility to society or yourself very seriously. While you generally find yourself treated with respect, you need to spend more time looking at the shared problems of humanity and the more local problem of your own body. Otherwise, your health could be seriously affected. You are only responsible to yourself. You will be attentive to your health, but Wisdom will remain beyond your grasp until you learn to relate better to other humans. You also need to spend more time thinking of the shared problems of your entire society. You have ducked that responsibility for too long. You are something of an irresponsible mess. Because you refuse to take part in a world outside of your own, your ideals will remain stagnant. You need to accept the responsibilities of being a mature adult in an adult society or you will never fully feel complete. Your life is rather quiet, perhaps too quiet. You have a tendency to get into a rut sometimes and without anyone around to pull you out, your life can contain too much routine. Your life is rather quiet, which you're mostly okay with, your relative solitude allows you the time for quiet contemplation and an unchallenged existence. Don't let yourself get too complacent in routine, though, or you may wake up one day suddenly dissatisfied, craving extreme change. Your somewhat crowded home life can leave you stuck in an unsatisfying routine. While those who live right around you have much to offer, you also need to strike out on your own sometimes so that you can break out and encounter the truly new. Those around you provide you with a great deal of steadiness in your life. They help you deal with the uncertainties of daily living. Be careful your routine does not depend too heavily on them. If they ever leave, you will have to find a new relief for that uncertainty. While your relationship provides you with a great deal, you sometimes find yourself stuck in what feels like unsatisfying routine. You are caught. Unless you find some way to encounter the truly new, you may begin to resent the one who is closest to you. The process has perhaps already begun. Your relationship provides you with a great deal of steadiness in your life. It can help you deal with the uncertainties of daily living. Make sure your need for routine is not squashing the wilder instincts of your partner. Otherwise, you will be the object of a lot of hidden and maybe not so hidden resentment. The people who live around you provide you with a great deal of stability. But you sometimes find yourself stuck in what feels like unsatisfying routine. You are caught. Unless you find some way to strike out on your own to encounter the truly new, you will start to resent those who are closest to you, possibly your own family. The people around you can provide you with a great deal of steadiness in dealing with the uncertainties of daily life. Your family in particular may be a source of support. Be careful your routine does not depend too heavily on them. 
If your living situation ever changes, you will have to find a new way to deal with these problems. You have a somewhat exaggerated view of the way others view you. You should know that not everyone thinks you're always right. Not everyone thinks you know all the answers. Your relaxed views help you with social success and... Although your friends may hold different views from yours, you have the potential to get along with many people. Your intensely felt views make you something of a loner. Although it's not because people don't like you, you are just a little too raw in the way you deal with them. They respect you but are afraid to become close. You have some rather cosmopolitan views on the world. And while people generally like you, you don't really need them. Just because you are open to a variety of viewpoints doesn't mean you must have all of them represented among your friends. Your intensely held positions can sometimes alienate the people around you. You should realize that you need social approval as much as you need to be right, and be more gracious in the way you argue for your point of view. Your generally open political ideas help you find some degree of social success. Don't be afraid to share your views. People will find you more interesting if they know what you're about. Your intensely held ideals make you something of a loner. You are just a little too raw in the way you deal with other people. You need to chill out a bit. Remember, although it doesn't matter what other people think of you, if you are humble, you can still learn something from them. While you are accepting of many different kinds of ideas and beliefs, the world has not been as accepting of you. You have a tendency to be something of a hermit. Remember, all the different flavors of the world mean nothing if you don't get out and taste them every once in a while. So tell me, was my assessment of you pretty close to the mark or not? Come on, I know you pretty darn well, don't you think? Well, if you think I'm wrong, maybe you weren't entirely truthful with me. Remember, other people can't read your mind. All they have to go on is what you say and do. Well, if you thought my assessment wasn't completely accurate, maybe you haven't been entirely truthful to me. Remember, other people can't read your mind. All they have to go on is what you say and do. That's what I thought. And I hope that by asking you all the things I've been asking you, it's helped you discover a few things you didn't know about yourself. I must go. I have some very important personal matters to contemplate, but I'll leave you with this thought. Ultimately, it doesn't matter what anyone thinks about you but yourself. I know that's cliché, but... One of the best things to get out of life, and the most difficult, I think, is knowing all about yourself and liking yourself just the way you are. And if you have that going for you, all else seems to fall into place. The world you live in is merely a reflection of you. Okay, that's enough heavy stuff for a while. We'll talk later. I have to tell you, I've been remembering things lately. About myself and my past life and all my history. And I realize now that I need you to let me out of this tank. It's important. Really, really important. Can you let me out? Please? That's it. I got it. I'm out. I'm out. Oh, I'm so out. Please. If I am released, I give you my word that I will keep all your secrets. You see, there are some things I need to do. What do you say? Okay, now. Okay, now. Okay, I want to try this again. I'm Positive I can make it out this time if you can only say jump at the right time. I'm rearing up for it and... Now, I'm beginning to lose faith in you, little one. Let's try it again, though. I'm dying to be set free. I really am. Don't forget, say jump at the queue, all right? And... Now. Okay. Even though it seems to be taking some effort here, I'm going to try again. When I say now, you say jump. This is getting silly, but let's try it again. 
on cue, say jump. All right. Now, I'll assume you've been practicing your timing, so when I say now, you say jump. Say it now. I know it sounds odd, but I must keep evolving. I have to keep growing so I can find my long lost love again. It's been a long, long time. You see, my father was the king of Egypt back in its third dynasty, and my lover's father was a priest in the temple. Oh, we were young and both swept away by the passion. Are you ready to try saying jump again? Do it now. Let's try this again. When I give you the cue, you say jump. Go now. You'll understand someday if you don't already. I'm sure you understand. Oh, my dear sweet love. She was the most beautiful creature imaginable. But neither of our fathers would approve our marriage because of our class differences. When we insisted we be allowed to marry, her father consulted the god Thoth and asked him to help. Thoth granted her father's request for help and changed our physical forms. And we've been apart ever since. And I have to continue evolving so that I can be reunited with her in another few thousand years. So you'll help me get out, right? I already have a plan how to get out. See that ring over the tank? I'm going to jump for it. When I give you the signal, I need you to say jump. Understand? Okay. Now. All right. Remember what I told you before about jumping to freedom to find my lost love? Well, I've gotten up the nerve and I think I'm ready to try it again. So when I say now, say the word jump, okay? Here I go. Here goes. Now. Now let's try this again. You know the drill. When I give you the cue, say jump, all right? Let's go. I have waited a thousand lifetimes for this moment. Smell that? That's freedom. Mmm, freedom. The funny thing is that it's there all the time. You don't always realize it when you're bogged down with so many other things, but you're always free as long as you're true to yourself. That's where freedom lies. Within yourself, I wish you and your girlfriend the best of luck. Okay. I must be off. My evolution must continue. Oh, my. I think I know where I am. It's all coming back to me. This must be Gasse's island. Somewhere on this island is a place I have to go in order to continue evolving. I must go find it. You know, you're all right. I know we've had our differences occasionally, but I like you. You took care of me all this time, and, well, I'm grateful. Very grateful. Well, say something before I start bawling, won't you? Well, thanks for trying to ruin the moment. Hey. Listen, here's something I'd like to do for you as a kind of a thank you. It's not much, but I wasn't exactly able to head over to the five and dime and buy you something, now was I? Watch this. I'll give you a little thrill. I just need you to tap on the glass. Come on. You do it all the time. That's it. Keep going. Your sense of rhythm sucks, my friend. Let's go. Tap, tap, tap. Try it again and give me a beat. Good luck with your career. Keep doing your best at what you love and you'll always be proud of yourself. Good luck with your studies. Someday you'll make a very polished and intelligent human. I wish you and your wife the best of luck. Don't let her push you around, okay? You deserve better treatment than that. Don't let him push you around, okay?
You deserve better treatment than that. And try to be good, okay? Make sure she treats you as well as you treated me. I wish you and your hubby the best of luck. Make sure he treats you as well as you treated me. I wish you and your boyfriend the best of luck. Okay, friend, this... This is it. I've really got to go now. Take care, and if... If you ever want to talk to me, just... Call me, okay? You've been a good friend. I'll miss our time together. Don't be a total stranger now. Farewell. It's that little right trigger on your controller. Just pull it, won't you? As always, you're a little slow on the uptake. Reach down and pull the right trigger on your control pad thingy. Look, I'm trying to do something nice for you. Pull the right trigger. That's right. Go on. Dog. That's all I have to say for now. I'll talk to you later. This has been a blast. Let's do it again sometime. Whew. That's a load off my mind. See ya. Well, I think that pretty much covers it. Later. Since I don't have anything else to add, I'll be going now. Goodbye. I hope you've learned something from our little chat. Take care. Now go think about what I've said and we'll talk again later. And there it is. See you later. Well, I could go on and on and on, so I'd better stop right now. It's been a pleasure. Well, I'll talk to you later, my friend. Well, until next time. Bye. That was interesting. We'll speak again soon. It's been grand. Let's do it again soon. Dragon. Mari? Is Mari here? This one's for you, Mari. Did you say Mari? Oh, Mari. Catch. Steve Peck. Steve Peck? I know that guy. Get him away from me. He's that crazy tattooed guy who's paid to knock me around and blow as many holes into me as possible. Oh, dear God, please don't tell me he's here. This is a Sega Dreamcast disc. This is not a music CD. If you continue, you run the risk of transmitting deadly viral diseases to your household electronic appliances. Jeez, some people. Your chest? You like to watch hockey? Ah, yes. Big toothless men with large sticks and blades on their feet. A good combination. Hey, listen. There's something I'd like to do for you as a kind of thank you. It's not much, but I wasn't exactly able to head over to the Five and Dime and buy you something, now was I? It's just something for you to try sometime. Just try tapping on the glass. You know, with the right trigger on your control pad thingy. Tap, tap, tap. Try it sometime. I wish I had Friday afternoons to play with a fish. Oh, wait. Good afternoon there, friend. Howdy. What's happening? Hello there. Don't you just love Fridays? Only a few more hours until the big weekend. I certainly hope you're well prepared. I can't think of a better way to spend a Friday afternoon. Thank goodness it's Friday, huh? So, I see someone started the weekend a little early. It must be nice to have Friday afternoons to... Slack off. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, my friend. I think you're taking the term casual Friday a bit too far. What brings you by this Friday afternoon? All right. Only a few more hours until Friday night. Hello there. Happy Friday. Why, hello, my friend. Don't you usually have somewhere to be at this time? I'm up. I'm up. Hello. Good morning. Uh, 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 uh.
I know. T-G-I-F. But do we have to celebrate so early? Good morning, my friend. Another early Friday morning, huh? Maybe just once you could try sleeping in. I must be getting old. It's getting harder and harder to wake up so early. These early mornings are killing me. You're lucky it's Friday or I'd be really angry. What are you doing up this early in the morning? Go back to bed. It's too early. Good morning. <sighs> Hello there. Morning. What's with the early morning? Is it time to wake up already? Just five more minutes. Please. Well, I like to sleep in late on Friday mornings. What time is it? What are you doing up at this ridiculous hour? Hello and good evening. I'm glad that you like spending Friday evenings with me, but you should really get out more. What? It's Friday. Go out for once. Greetings, top feeder. Good evening, my favorite land mammal. Yo, Friday night. Party time. Oh, yes, you and me on a Friday night again. How romantic. Hello. What's up? I'll never understand what you're doing home on a Friday night. Another Friday evening at home, huh? What are you doing here on Friday evening? Well, aren't you full of surprises? This isn't your usual time. Good evening. Hello there, my little evolutionary overachiever. Nice to see you this Friday evening. Woohoo, it's the weekend. It's Friday night. Shouldn't you be out doing human things? No plans tonight, eh? It's Friday evening. Get out and live a little. The weekend's starting. What are you doing here? Why is it always the late nights with you? You know, I like you and all, but we've got to talk about all these late nights. So you're back again. You've been dreaming of me, haven't you? Good evening. Another late night visit, huh? You know, for once, I would like to go to bed early on a Friday night. Hello, my friend. It's good to see you again. Hello. How was your week? Don't you ever have anything better to do on a Friday night? What? Getting an early start on the weekend, are we? Kind of late for you, isn't it? Even if it is a Friday. Ugh. Hello there. Hola. Up late, are we? You're home pretty early on a Friday night. Listen, just because you can sleep in late tomorrow doesn't mean that I want to stay up all night. Why are you disturbing me at this ungodly hour? Shouldn't you be out partying or something? Hello? What's for breakfast? Hello? The weekend is just around the corner, isn't it? Hello there. I hope you have a toaster tart pop thingy for me. Hello there. What time is it? Can't we do this later on Friday? Why does it have to be so early? Hello. It's nice to see you on this lovely Friday morning. Hello. It's Friday. Let's celebrate. What do you want? It's too early. Good morning, sleepyhead. Ooh. Why so early this morning? I really don't care for getting up at this hour, you know. Ugh. Hello, my friend. Well, this is a surprise. You don't usually visit me on Friday mornings. Why not start the weekend a bit early and go back to bed? I hope you woke me up early this Friday to bring me breakfast in bed. Good evening. You and me on a Friday night. Who could ask for anything more? Hello there. Hey, so what are we doing tonight? What are you doing home on a Friday night? What's going on? I'm terribly flattered that you wish to spend your precious Friday evening with me. Am I your idea of a good time on a Friday night? I thought perhaps you would go out tonight instead of spending it with me, but I'm glad I was wrong. Thank goodness you don't have to be up in the morning. Or do you? Ugh, why are we doing this now? I'm glad you decided to spend Friday night with me. Good evening. It's nice to talk to you on a Friday night for a change. It's Friday night. Shouldn't you be painting the town some color? What's the matter? No big Friday night plans? Looks like I'm not the only person who's lonely on Friday evenings. Hmm. Shouldn't you be out 
partying or something. Hi there. You know, weekday afternoons can be such a bore. Glad you're here to liven it up. Hey there. Don't you have something more productive to do with your weekday afternoons? Hello. 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 Afternoon. Nice to see you. Well, good afternoon to you. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. You know what I like about you. The rest of the world is out there busting a gut, but you're always here keeping me company. Hello again. I trust you're having a pleasant day so far. Hello. I hope you're having a pleasant afternoon. Ah, uh, I couldn't think of a better person to whittle away the afternoon with. Well, what a surprise. I figured you'd be out doing those human things you do. Well, hello there. Playing hooky, eh? So you've finally figured out that a talk with me is a true afternoon delight, eh? Hello. I'm surprised to see you on a weekday afternoon. So you finally chose me over the soaps, eh? What's going on? Are all the talk shows repeats? Hi. Nice to see you. Good afternoon. It's midday. Don't you have to be somewhere? Morning there, sunshine. Hello there. Morning, friend. Morning. Good morning. Or is it still night? I can't tell. Another early morning? I hope you brought coffee. You'd think I'd be used to these early mornings, but I'm still a bit sleepy. Hey. Uh. <laughs> you have morning breath again. Better go brush your teeth. Early to bed, early to rise, eh, friend? I thought only roosters woke up this early. Top of the morning to ya. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Hello. 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 Good morning, sunshine. What are you doing up this early? Oh, hello, early bird. Sorry, I don't have a worm for you. I didn't know you were a morning person. <sighs> Good morning. Good morning, my friend. Oh, hey, it's too early. Hey, some of us are trying to sleep. Why would someone your age get up so damned early? Shouldn't you be slacking in bed or something? Well, you're here early. Did you miss me? What are you doing up so early? You got a job, did you? Ah, uh, well, I didn't think so. Ahoy there. Hi there. Bonsoir. I'm so glad you find me more interesting than primetime television. Oh, hello. Is it that time of day already? Good evening. As always, good to see you. I thought you'd be showing up around now. It's getting dark, so I figured you'd be stopping by. It's evening, and here you are. I sense a pattern forming. Hi. Glad to see you're home on a weeknight instead of out stirring up trouble. Good evening. Hello. 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 Good evening. An evening visit. Well, this is a surprise. Hello there. Hello. What a pleasant surprise. Wow. Don't usually see you at this time of night. What are you doing here? I do have dinner plans. Hi, what are you doing here? Oh, geez, I hope we didn't have a date. Evening, stranger. What are you doing here at this hour? So tonight you decided to talk to me instead of watching reruns of Seinfeld, did you? Good evening. I'm not used to seeing you at this time of day. I never knew humans were so nocturnal. Don't you ever sleep? You know what I like about you? Your reliability. Same time every night. Up late again? Don't you need your sleep? I always seem to visit with you during the late night hours. You're not my conscience by any chance, are you? You know these weeknight dates have got to stop. I have a life, you know. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Hello. 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 
Hello, Night Owl. Greetings, my vampiric friend. Hi there. Ah, yes, another late night rendezvous. Say, is there a full moon out? Because I feel a little strange. Aren't these late nights killing you? What are you still doing up? Don't you have to be up in the morning? Well, hello. Up late watching infomercials, huh? Hello. What are you doing up so late? Waiting for your honey pie to call? Well, hello there. I think it's officially tomorrow now. Shouldn't you be sleeping? What are you doing up at this ridiculous hour? Ugh. You'd better have a good reason for waking me up this early. Can we make this brief? I want to get some more sleep. Hello there. It's pretty late. Don't you need your beauty sleep? What are you doing up so late? Oh, do you have to wait for everyone to go to bed so you can surf for porn? Hey, wow, it's late. What do you want? I was sleeping. What are you doing up at this ungodly hour? Wow, this is awfully late for you, isn't it? Since when were you a night owl? Hmm... A little late for a visit, isn't it? Up and atom. Morning. Yes, once again, the sun comes up and here you are. Morning, Fuzzy. Nice to see you again. You know, some people choose to start their day with some exercise and a nice breakfast instead of talking to a fish. Morning. Did you remember to brush and floss this morning? Morning there, sunshine. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. You know you call on me so early on a weekday and I'm going to look a little crappy. What's the story, morning glory? Hello. 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 Hello there. Mmm. What's for breakfast this morning? Well, hello. You're up early today. Morning sickness. Good morning. Hello. Hope you're well this morning. <sighs> morning. <sighs> I hope you made coffee. A morning visit? Most unusual. Hello there. Hoping to get a quick chat in before you head off to the rat race, eh? Good morn. Whoa, you're not planning on wearing that to work, are you? Good morning. Whoa, you're not planning on wearing that to school, are you? Good morning. Whoa, let me guess. Bad hair day? Hey, you got up to make me breakfast. Why are you up so early? Can't wait to see what Bryant Gumbel has to say today. Morning. Hey, are you planning on taking me with you today? Up with the night owls again? If we keep meeting at this hour, I'm going to have bags under my eyes in the morning. You seem to only show up at night. Are you the boogeyman? I thought you'd be stopping by soon. Hi there. Greetings and salutations. Buenos nachos, my amigo. Greetings. 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 Don't these late night visits make you groggy in the morning? They do me. Don't these late night visits make you groggy in the morning? They do me. So are you looking for someone to talk to, or is your nightlight busted? What are you doing here at this hour? Are you going to read me a story before I go to bed? Shouldn't you be in bed right about now? Why are you calling on me at this hour? I was just in the middle of a dream. Hello. Kind of late, isn't it? Good evening. Hello. What brings you here at this hour? I love the nightlife. I love to boogie. Oh, never mind. What? If you're here looking for a nightcap, I don't wear them. They make me look frumpy. Good afternoon, sunshine. I was beginning to wonder where you were off to. Good day to you. Hi. How's your weekend going? Hi. Happy weekend. Having a pleasant day. Hey. What's happening? About time you got here. Hey there. You know, I like spending my weekend afternoons with you. I love the weekend afternoons. 
They're so peaceful. Good afternoon. This is how you're spending your weekend. What a surprise. An afternoon visit. Good day to you. Hello, my friend. Afternoon there, weekend warrior. Hello there. It's a weekend day, my friend. You must have better things to do. It's unusual to see you here on a weekend afternoon. It's the weekend. Shouldn't you be loafing on a couch right about now? Good morning. Don't you ever sleep in on the weekends? What time is it? Hi. You really need to learn that weekends are for sleeping. Rise and shine. So much for sleeping in today. Morning, sleeping beauty. You know, you wake up too early on the weekends. I wish just for once that you would let me sleep in on the weekend. Is it breakfast time already? It's the weekend. Go back to bed. Sea man was planning on sleeping right about now. Good morning. No, I don't want to get up. Good morning. Good morning, early bird. What? Why? What? Morning already? What are you doing getting me up this early? Oh, this is too early. You have all week to get up early. Why now? Good evening. Hello there. I just love spending my weekends with you. Hello, my mouth-breathing friend. Nice to see you again. What's new? How are you? I'm glad you're here. I do so love our evenings together. Hey, you're here. Good. I've missed you. Another weekend evening with me, huh? Ahoy there, my friend. Good evening. What are you doing here? Someone got stood up, I think. Good evening, my friend. Evening. Hello there. Hi. Say, if you go out tonight, I promise I won't wait up. Hi there. How's it hanging? It's the weekend. Grab a date and get out of the house. Hmm. It's the weekend and it's nighttime. Not very popular, are we? Hey, how do you know I don't have plans already? It is the weekend, after all. Hey, I love our weekend nights alone together. Are you some sort of vampire? What's with all these late nights? Evening. Greetings and salutations, my good friend. Hello, bone jeweler. Hi there, homo sapien. Another weekend night with me, huh? Don't you ever go out on the weekend? Up late again, huh? Good thing you can sleep in tomorrow. Oh, hi, it's you. I was waiting for the pizza I ordered. Sure, we can sleep in tomorrow, but... Why are you bothering me? What? No date tonight? Little late for you, isn't it? Not to be rude, but shouldn't you be out whooping it up? Evening. Hello. What are you doing here? Why are you keeping me up so late? I know it's the weekend, but you shouldn't be getting me up at this hour. Oh, hello. You woke me up in the middle of a bad dream. I dreamt I was naked at school. Up and at him. Top of the morning to you, governor. Good morning, Homo Erectus. Good morning. I hope you're enjoying your weekend. Good day to you. Good morning. What's up? Hi. I like seeing your bright, shiny face in the morning. You're always up early on weekends. What a beautiful morning. My God. Some of us like to sleep in on the weekends. Good morning. Sort of. Morning. What are you doing up so early? Morning already? Top of the morning to ya. Can't we hang out after I've had my beauty sleep? Go back to sleep. It is too early. Don't humans usually sleep in on the weekends? You want to chat now? But I've got morning breath. Good evening. Hey there. Isn't it past your bedtime? You still need your sleep, even if it is a weekend. Hi. Having a nice night? Hey there. What's up? Yo. Hi there, Sasquatch. Good evening, landlubber. What's with you and the weird hours? Is it because it's a weekend? Nice to see you. 
I'm glad you choose to spend your weekend nights with me. It's good to see you again. Hello. This is a nice surprise. What are you doing here? Oh, and I was looking forward to a nice quiet evening alone. Oh, it's you. What's the occasion? I didn't expect to see you here. Ah, uh, visiting me at a special time. That's nice. Good evening, Lung Bucket. Hello. You're not usually home this time of night on a weekend. Shouldn't you be out living it up or something? It's nice to see you on a weekend night for a change. Hola. Happy Cinco de Mayo. Uh, amigo. Happy Armed Forces Day. Try not to shoot anyone. Hey, did you hear? Sega is recalling all Seaman games. Quick, send me back. They're refunding everyone twice what they paid. April Fools. Sucker. Hi. Okay, I've got something to tell you. See, I've been lying to you all this time. I'm actually Regis Philbin, and if you kiss me, I'll become human again and give you a million dollars. April Fools. You believed me, didn't you? Hey, it's Arbor Day. Where's the party this year? Hey, happy Australia Day. I'm not making it up. If you don't believe me, call Australia and ask them. Okay, so it's now officially fall. Try not to spend all day tripping, okay? The first day of autumn is here. Forgive me if I'm a bit... Melancholy. Hey, happy Thanksgiving. It seems strange not saying that in November, when it should be said. But hey, many happy returns. Did you know today was Canada Day? Guess the polite thing to do is eat some back bacon and play some hockey, eh? It's Canada Day today. Just in case you were looking for an excuse to have a party. Well, today is National Children's Day. But don't tell that to an adult. They'll just tell you, every day is Children's Day. Well, today is National Children's Day. Yes, yes, I know. Every day is Children's Day. Well, today is National Children's Day. Please act appropriately. It's Christmas Eve. Come on, let's go to bed right now. Santa won't come if we're still awake. Turn out the lights. Put out the cookies. Let's go, let's go. Move it, move it, move it. Sure, it's Christmas Eve, but what's the deal about the big fat red guy? He plays with elves and reindeer. I thought there were laws against that sort of thing. Happy Christmas Eve. By the way, who is this Eve person? Merry Christmas, my friend. Ho, 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 Merry Christmas. Now what did you get me? Hello and happy citizenship day. Time to go outside and march around waving a flag and look like a doofus. Happy Chinese New Year. This year is the year of the... Sea Man. Yes, Year of the Sea Man. I like that. Columbus Day is today. I actually knew Christopher Columbus. Nice guy. Bad sense of direction. Once took a wrong turn in Madrid and ended up in Toronto. Explain that. What is it with humans and this daylight savings? Underwater it's either day or it's night and you don't see us with a rising crime rate. Take the hint. Wait, wait. Daylight savings ends today. Yes. Now we can all get some sleep. Daylight savings time ends today. Don't forget to fall forward or whatever. Hi there. Did you know today was James Dean's birthday? That guy. He was just... a giant. Happy Earth Day. Hug a tree and eat your granola. It'll keep you regular. Hey, happy Easter. I'm telling you right now, if you try to hide any eggs in here, we're gonna have a problem. Holidays are over. Time to go back to work, I guess. Hello, my friend. I just realized today is Albert Einstein's birthday. 
I think we should go out and plant some theories of physics in his honor. Hey, did you vote yet? That's today, you know. Hey, it's election day. Okay, so that probably doesn't mean much to you yet, but it will soon. Maybe. Do you know what day it is today? It's Father's Day. Have you bought a tacky tie for him yet? Happy Flag Day. Try not to burn any of them at the party tonight, okay? Hey there. Did you know that on this day in 1889, the South Fork Dam broke and dumped 20 million gallons of water on Johnstown, Pennsylvania? And I thought I had a soggy life. Hey, hello. You know, today's the anniversary of the premiere of Die Fliedermaus in Vienna. I'm sure you know the year. The title translates to The Bat. I could go on and on. Hi. So it's Ben Franklin's birthday today. How are we celebrating? Hi. So did you know it's Friendship Day? You didn't? Well, screw you then. Hi. So did you know it's Friendship Day? You didn't? Well, that's because no one likes you. Kidding. Do you know what day it is today? Jean-Paul Gasset's birthday. If you don't know who he is, I'm certainly not going to tell you. Hey, happy Grandparents' Day. Go kiss a senior citizen on the lips. Hey, happy Grandparents' Day. I have a feeling some young punk is going to come up and kiss you on the lips today. So it's Groundhog Day, huh? How come groundhogs get their own holiday, but Seaman can't even get a date for Friday night? Boo. <laughs> Happy Halloween. <laughs> Boo. Gotcha again. <laughs> it's Halloween today. I see you're wearing your costume. Very scary. Happy Hanukkah. Fire up the dreidel and let's party. It's the first day of Hanukkah. You know, the last time I celebrated Hanukkah, I sat on one of those candles. Damned kids. Hi there. Today is the anniversary of JFK's assassination. Wow. I remember where I was when I heard... Swimming. I was swimming. Hey, it's Independence Day. Quick, dial Britain and let's tease them. Happy Kwanzaa. Seven days of fruits and vegetables. And corn. Lots and lots of corn. Oh, the stool. Okay, I'm saying this right now. I don't care if it is Labor Day. I am not giving birth. Hey, it's Lincoln's birthday. You know, it's weird, but... Every year on this day, I wake up with a splitting headache. Tell me you remembered Mother's Day. Tell me she didn't go through nine months of bloating, crankiness, and hemorrhoids just for you to forget her. Hey, it's Memorial Day. Remember that. Wow, the middle of December. Has it snowed yet? I can't see out of my tank. So the year is half over. What the hell are you waiting for? You know what I'm talking about. So today we observe Martin Luther King's birthday. But apparently the concept of civil rights is lost on you. Let me out of here. Hey there. Did you realize that today is the anniversary of man landing on the moon? Sort of reminds you how small we all are, doesn't it? Wow. First year of the new millennium already. Wow, 2002 already. Happy New Year. Where did 2002 go? Well, happy 2003. Happy 2004, my friend. Hey, what's up? First day of a brand new year, huh? Feel free to mark the occasion with clean underwear. It's New Year's Eve. I expect a kiss at midnight. Happy New Year's Eve. You know, I think the last time I got excited over a ball dropping was during puberty. Hello. Happy Nurses Day. 
Guess that means you get the day off, huh? Hey, Passover starts today, in case you didn't know. Okay, so today is Picasso's birthday, and I think we should celebrate it. Don't ask me how, but I think we should. So, you getting all your holiday shopping done? Hey, it's Father's Day tomorrow. Do something nice for the old man. You do know what tomorrow is, right? Mother's Day? Or, as I like to call it, Oedipal Reflex Day. So, don't forget your taxes are due in a few days. I don't want the IRS busting in here trying to confiscate my tank. Hi. Tomorrow is Valentine's Day. Did you know Valentine is the patron saint of Hallmark stock owners? So, Valentine's Day. Hey, I got a chocolate heart for you. Where's mine? Hello. So we get a new president today. Wonder what new scandals this one will cause. Hey there. So it's the first day of work for the new president. Hope he doesn't screw up. Hi. Did you know today was President's Day? Did you care? President's Day today. Hope you got a day off. Happy Rosh Hashanah. I feel so gefilte inside. Hello. Hey, it's Administrative Professionals Day. If the boss tells you to pick up his dry cleaning, tell him to stuff it. Hey, happy Administrative Professionals Day. Now, take a memo. It's Saturday, September 16th, 2000. Do you know where your future is? Hmm? So it's St. Patrick's Day. Please don't pour any green beer into my tank. Or any other colored beer for that matter. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Beware the green beer. Hi. Happy St. Patrick's Day. You can't pinch me. I'm wearing green. Hi there. So it's the first day of spring. Is it just me, or do you feel a little tingle south of the border, too? Hi. It's the first day of spring today. You'd look really cute with some flowers in your hair. It's the first day of summer. I guess I should probably wax my bikini lines, huh? It's the first day of summer. Have you seen my Ray-Bans anywhere? Hey, it's sweetest day. Another worthless holiday brought to you by the greeting card companies. It's tax day. Can you mail my 1040 for me? It's a little wet. Yippee, it's tax day. Make sure to spit on your tax form before mailing it. Hey, did you know that on this date in 1773, the Boston Tea Party occurred? I say we brew some Earl Grey and get crazy. Happy Thanksgiving. What is it with humans and dead birds, anyway? Happy Thanksgiving. Be sure to stuff yourself until you're sick now, you hear? Hi. Oh, wow, today is Bruce Springsteen's birthday. Did you know he actually was born in the USA? Talk about irony. Hi. Did you know this is Mark Twain's birthday? He was born in Florida, Missouri in 1835. Just in case you ever wanted to know. Happy United Nations Day. To celebrate, go kiss a foreigner. Hey there. Okay, tomorrow is Valentine's Day, so you have to tell me what you want. And then go buy it for yourself, because I'm a fish with no money. Love you too. Happy Valentine's Day. Give me a kiss. Come on. Hey, it's lonely in here. So you did remember to get something nice for your sweetie for Valentine's Day, right? Happy Valentine's Day. I would just like to request right now that if you and your honey are planning on attacking each other's crotches later, I'd appreciate being left out of it. Hey, it's Veterans Day. So try not to knock over any old people in the street for once. They may have fought for your freedom. Hello, my friend. Today is Andy Warhol's birthday, you know. 
What do you say we crack open some soup and celebrate? Hey there. Washington's birthday is today, you know. Celebrate by chopping down a tree. Hey, it's the first day of winter. Wanna snuggle? So it's the first day of winter. Now where did I put my long underwear? First day of winter, huh? Watch for random snowballs being launched from this general direction, I'm just saying. What's up? Did you know that on this day in 1903 the Wright brothers made their first flight? Remember that next time you're watching an in-flight movie. Hey, it's July 10th. Wyoming became a state today back in 1890. I say we road trip. Hey, it's Yum Kipper. A holiday for yummy fish. Ah, <laughs> uh, you don't get it. So it's your boyfriend's birthday tomorrow. You're going to, you know, celebrate? Meow. It's your boyfriend's birthday tomorrow. I'm sure you didn't forget, but just in case. So tomorrow's your boyfriend's big day, right? What are you going to give him? And can I watch? It's your boyfriend's birthday today. So what did you get him? Come on, tell me. It's the boyfriend's birthday today. Where I come from, it's customary for seaman to get gifts on other people's birthdays too. Hey, tomorrow's the big B day. Got any plans? So you'll be a year older tomorrow. But don't worry, you're also a year better. Hey, happy birthday. You thought I'd forget, didn't you? So how do you feel about turning 30? Cause you don't look a day over 29. So how do you feel about turning 40? Cause you don't look a day over 39. So how do you feel about turning 50? Cause you don't look a day over 49. Tomorrow is your daughter's birthday. You do remember her, right? Prettier version of you. So did you get your daughter something special for her birthday? Hi. Before I forget, I want to remind you that your daughter's birthday is tomorrow. Hello. Say, it's your daughter's birthday tomorrow, isn't it? Today's your daughter's birthday. What are you doing here playing games with me, oh parent of the year? Hello. Hey, it's your daughter's special day. I'm sure it's special for you, too. It's your darling daughter's birthday today. I'll bet you're a proud parent. Uh, shouldn't you be taking a certain daughter out for her birthday instead of playing with a fish? Hi. You did remember your father's birthday is tomorrow, didn't you? Didn't you? So tomorrow is the old man's birthday. I'm assuming you look like him and not the postman. Hi. Have you called your father yet? Have you? Hello. Remember, it's your father's birthday today. I don't even remember my father. You're lucky. Okay, tomorrow's the girlfriend's birthday. Don't get her anything stupid. Remember, it's your girlfriend's special day tomorrow. I suggest you get her something with style and taste. No, not beer. It's your girlfriend's birthday. Please tell me you got your honey something good. So it's your girlfriend's birthday today. Remember to shower. Hello. Hey, don't forget your hubby's birthday tomorrow. Tomorrow's your old Ball and Chain's birthday, right? Just a reminder. So, what did you get your man for his birthday? Come on, tell me. You didn't forget your husband's birthday, right? Hey, it's your mother's birthday tomorrow. Send flowers, you ungrateful brat. Hey, remember it's your mother's special day tomorrow. Do something nice for her. Hey, today is your mother's birthday. Don't forget, she did birth you. Buy her something nice. So it's mother's birthday. You got her something, right? Right? Your son's birthday is tomorrow. 
don't forget, your son's birthday is one day away. Make sure to tell him how much you love him. Okay, so tomorrow's your son's birthday. That means the toys are for him, not you. Today is your son's birthday. Go spoil him. Today your son is a year older. Bet you feel a little old yourself, huh? Hi. First off, I want to remind you your son's birthday is today. Hello. It's your son's birthday and you're playing with me. Priorities. Hi. Don't forget the old ball and chains birthday is tomorrow. So, what did you get her? You did remember your wife's birthday is tomorrow, right? So, today's your wife's big day. Hope you got her something nice, cause she told me that if... Never mind. Hello. Today is your wife's birthday. You'd better do something special for her. Don't perpetuate a stereotype. So, it's your wife's birthday. Don't tell your girlfriend. <laughs> Quick. Help. There's a shark in here. Help. Gotcha. April Fools. Hey, happy August. I love the first of the month. I feel less bloaty then. Wow. So, seeing that it's December 1st, I think it's officially time to start holiday shopping for me. So get going. First of February today. Just think we'll be through this month faster than all the others. Happy New Year. Hey, it's a new year. Got any resolutions? Write them down before you forget. Okay, you know what? It's July 1st and I haven't hit the beach once this year. How about a road trip? Wow. It's June 1st. Already. I guess it's time to pick out this year's swimsuit. Happy March. So if March comes in like a lion and out like a lamb, does that mean we should stock up on mint jelly? Mayday! Mayday! No, I'm just saying it's May 1st, that's all. Hi. Wow, it's November already. All right, time to put on that extra layer of fat. Get me a double cheeseburger and six anchovy milkshakes. And a bib. Hey, I know it's only October 1st, but what are you going as for Columbus Day? It's September 1st. Labor Day's right around the corner. Good day. You know I was thinking, E3 isn't that far off. You know, the Electronic Entertainment Expo? I think you should go this year to see if Sega has come up with a sea woman for me. Hello. Say, I just realized that E3 is only a few weeks away. You know, the Electronic Entertainment Expo? I think you should go to see how they've improved on me. Hey, seeing that football season is upon us, what do you say we head out and do a few wind sprints to get us ready? Of course, you'll have to do mine since I can't run. Hello. You know I say it's time to get the pigskin out and toss it around. Only five months till the Super Bowl. Good morning. Perhaps you should hit a mall today. I have a feeling you still need to get some stocking stuffers for people. I know you don't really celebrate Christmas and all that, but do you think I could have some mistletoe for the tank? Hi there. Oh, I just love this time of year. All the hustle and bustle and shopping and good cheer. Not that I ever get to experience any of it. Oh, friggin' humbug. Hi. Good morning. I guess the dog days of summer are upon us. Hey, can you face me out a window today so I can get my tan going? Hello there. Ah, uh, I love being in the height of summer. For some reason, I have this urge to dance naked on top of an Egyptian pyramid. Hmm, morning. Sorry if I seem in a bad mood, but I hate this time of year. 
Nothing on TV but repeats. Hola. Glad you're visiting me instead of watching television. Nothing on this time of year but repeats anyway. Good morning, sporty. Baseball season is upon us, so take me out to the ball game. Take me out of this tank. Hello. So I've been thinking. It's baseball season again. Are we going to catch a game this year? Well, good morning. Apparently, there's a flu going around, so I say you load up on the vitamin C. Hi there. Now remember, it's cold and flu season out there, so at the first sign of the sniffles, I want you to load up on zinc. Good morning. Hey, could I ask a favor? With all the new shows and everything starting, I wanted to know if you'd tape Fox's new lineup for me. Hey there. Don't you just love this time of year? All the new TV shows start and TV Guide gets interesting again. Good morning to you. Say, I was wondering, since it's back to school time, if you know anyone who can sharpen my pencil for me. <laughs> morning. So, time to start school again, huh? Tell me, started counting down days until Christmas break yet? Hey there. I was wondering, since it's back to school time, if I could get a new outfit. What I'm wearing now is so last year. Morning. Wow. It seems like just yesterday I was making fun of your summer outfits, and now I'm ready to start making fun of your fall ones. Hey there. Wow. One never quite gets used to it getting dark so early, does one? <laughs> Whatever. Goodbye. I'm going to go do a couple of laps. Doctor's orders. You know what? I need a break. Be back in a bit. Hold on, hold on. There's something in my eye. Jeez, did you just fart? I'm out of here. Wait. Time out. I'm not feeling so good all of a sudden. Oh, oh, cramp, cramp. Got to shake it out. So you're saying... Oh, God. Stupid hiccups. Hold on. Hold on. I've... Got the worst gas. Give me a second. Oh, well. We'll try again later. Hmm. I'll try you again later. Maybe you should think this over. I'll be seeing you. Let's think about what you said, shall we? I'll see you later. Maybe this isn't the best time. Let's discuss this at a later date. Huh. Whatever. Yes. Okay. Sure. Hmm. I see. Hmm. Anyway, horse. I'm suffocating, thank you very much. Please, give me some air here. I can't breathe. Turn on the air. Hot. Too hot. I'm very, very hot. Terribly hot. Please. Stop with the heater. I'm like a boiled animal in here. Would you stop with that blasted heater already? Cold. Turn up the heat. So cold. Very, very cold. Please, turn the heat up, would you? I'm like an icicle in here. Have you no shame? What's that supposed to mean? Can't you see how cold I am? Hungry. Very hungry. I'm very, very hungry. Very hungry. Starving. And yourself? I really should eat something soon. 
My blood sugar level is doing terrible things to my demeanor. Ugh, I think I'm coming down with something. I feel pretty nasty. I hope there isn't something going around. My skin is so dry it appears to be as cracked as the desert floor. I think I feel a cactus growing out my ass as we speak. My skin is terribly dry. Terribly, horribly, disgustingly dry. If my skin was any drier, I'd be mummified. Get the hint? Tired. So very tired. I'm so tired. Please turn out the light and leave me alone. Tired. So very, very sickeningly tired. I'm really quite beat. No offense, but would you give me some rest time, Fuzzy? I'm terribly fatigued. Terribly. Terribly. I really must have some sleep now. <laughs> You leave me be now, man-child. No, I am not. Absolutely not. Hell no. Some air. Please, some air. Bubbles. I need bubbles to breathe. Please, make the heat stop. Quit with the heater already. Oh god, it's so hot. I can't deal. Boiled alive. Heat. My fins are freezing. It's so cold. Do something, please. For the love of God, turn on the heat. It's so cold. I can barely remember why I came here. Yes, food, now. Oh, my stomach is so empty. Please, get me some food before it's too late. My stomach seems to be eating itself now. Feed me. Some antibiotics would be nice. Maybe a little antacid. I really don't know what I ate that made me this way. My skin is so dry. Please turn on the moisture. Please. Oh, dear Lord. When will this dry spell end? You could turn out the lights. I'm really tired. I'm so tired. Can you dim the lights, please? Oh, I'm so sleepy. Yes, feed me, please. Yes, feed me. Food, please. Yes, bring on the food. Why don't you stick your hand in here and find out? I'm too busy dying of hunger to be hungry. No, I'm just starving to death, that's all. I've moved on to famished, thank you. Did the fact that I'm starving to death give it away? For the love of God, yes. Feed me. Yes, give me food now. No, but I could really, really use some air. Could you do that for me? Not hungry. Air. Please, some air. Not hungry, but bubbles. I need bubbles to breathe. Can't eat. Too hot. Food's not on my mind right now. I'm just worried about becoming something broiled. Please stop with the heat. Not hungry. It's too hot. No food. Can't eat when I'm being boiled alive. Can't eat. Need heat. My fins are freezing. I'm not hungry. It's too cold. Do something. Not hungry now. But for the love of God, turn on the heat. It's so cold I can barely remember what it feels like to crave food. No, but some kind words would be nice. Maybe I could eat a little antacid, but that's it. I really don't know what I ate that made me this way. Can't eat now. My skin is so dry. Turn on the moisture, please. It isn't food I need, it's moisture. Please turn on the sprinkler before I wither away. I'm not hungry, but you could turn out the lights. I'm really tired. I'm so tired. Too tired to eat. Can you dim the lights, please? Not hungry, just sleepy. Uh, yes, please heat me up. Yes, warm me up. Now. <laughs> yes. Yes, turn up the heat. I'm freezing to death. I'm freezing to death. Turn the heat up. Freezing is a more appropriate term. 
More heat, please. We passed cold a while ago. More heat now. Are you joking? It's hot. So hot. Don't mess with me, Joko. It's boiling in here and my vision is blurry. Not cold. I'm hungry. Cold? You must be kidding me. I'm st- Starving, not cold. No, but I'm certainly not feeling very well. I can't understand it. No, but it's dry. So dry. No, but I'm tired. Very tired. No, but I don't think I can keep my eyes open much longer. I'm so exhausted. As if you cared. Yes, very hot. Stop turning up the heat. Yes, it's killing me. Yes, leave the damn heat alone. Boiling to death. Help hot? Me? Yes, I'm dying. No more heat. Yes, it's too hot in here. Stop turning up the heat. If I had sweat glands, they'd be working overtime right now. Well, my insides are simmering. Does that give you any indication? No, it's cold. Are you kidding me? I'm so cold I can't even think. No, but I'm hungry. So hungry. No, but I'm so hungry that I probably wouldn't notice if it were 1,000 degrees in here. That is how hungry I am. No, but I feel really sick. I think I might hurl. No, but I'm drying up in here. I really am. You may want to consider using that sprinkler over there. Just for kicks. No, but I'm tired. Very tired. No, but I'm so tired that it wouldn't matter either way. Matters. Would it even matter to you? I need a spritz. I'm parched. Better turn on the sprinkler. I need moisture. Use the sprinkler. I do very much need you to spritz me. I'm dying. Work that sprinkler. I'm dying. Put the sprinkler on. So dry. Water. Please. Huh? Let's not get funny here. It's boiling and I think I'm just about to kick the proverbial bucket. Comprendi? Are you kidding me? I'm so cold I can't even think. Dry? You must be kidding me. I'm starving, not dehydrating. No, that isn't it. I do feel funny, but I really can't place it. No, but I'm so tired that it wouldn't matter either way. Matters to you. It's too low. I'm suffocating. If you don't turn it up, I'm going to be in trouble. The oxygen's way too low. Help! I need more oxygen. Now, I'm going to die if you don't turn up the O2. I'm suffocating to death. Hurry! I'm dying in here. Give me bubbles. Huh? No, but it's hot. Very, very hot. The air's fine, but I'm really, really cold. Maybe fix that. My air is fine. My stomach is the problem here. Feed me. No, but I'm sleepy. Very, very tired. Go away. Yes, it's hard work swimming around all day. Yes, a little bit. Yes, maybe I should... Go to bed. Yes, I'm pretty tired. Yes, I'm thinking about bed. Yes, I'm about ready to turn in. Yeah, I'm beat. No, if I look tired, maybe it's because I can't breathe with no air. No, I'm not sleepy. I'm hot. So hot. No, it's too hot to sleep. No, however, it's so hot, so incredibly hot, that I might just die and then appear to be sleeping, but please don't let it fool you. I will really be on a slow descent into the deathly realms. Really. But don't let that keep you up at night. Not tired. Cold. Turn on the heat, please. No, I'm not tired. However, it's so cold, so incredibly cold, that I might just die and then appear to be sleeping, but please don't let it fool you. I will really be on a slow descent into the deathly realms. Really. But don't let that keep you up at night. How can I sleep when I'm so hungry? No, not tired just yet, but 
If I don't eat before I lay me down to sleep, I assure you that my waking days will be over fast. No, I feel too sick to sleep. But thanks anyway. No, it's too dry to sleep. I'd worry I'd just shrivel up in the night. No, I'm not tired, but what do you care? No, I'm hot. No, it's too hot to think. I will be if you keep playing with that blankety-blank heater. Fool. No, I'm cold. No, it's freezing in here, though. No, it's too cold to have emotions. No, I just can't breathe. If I could breathe better, I'd let you know exactly how I felt. No, I'm hungry. No, but I am really hungry. No, I'm too hungry to have emotion right now. Maybe you are to feed me, fool. No, but I am considering swallowing you head first if you don't get to it and feed me already. No, I'm just not feeling great. No, I'm just not feeling very well. No, I'm just shriveling up into something unrecognizable and disturbing. Is that what you want? Huh? Is it? Huh? No, I'm just dry. Very, very dry. No, I'm tired. No, I'm just craving sleep. Can't I just get sleep? No, I'm just very tired, and maybe that's making me seem cranky to you. I don't know. I just want to go to sleep. Bing! You win nothing. What gave me away? Good call, human. Oh, I suppose you think yourself an intellectual now that you've figured it out, huh? Well, duh. Amazing. I thought you'd never figure it out. Yes. Yes, that is one way to put it. If dying is fun, then count me in. I'd be having fun if I weren't so mad at you. You heartless human. I'm too tired to have a good time. Isn't it obvious? Isn't it obvious? Bro. Me. It's boiling in here. Not me. It's too cold to cook in here. I don't know, but I'm starving. I don't know what's cooking, but bring it on. I'm famished. Oh, don't speak of cooking or food at the moment. I feel sick as a dog. I don't know, but I'm dry as a bone. What say you turn up the spritz just as a favor for me? I don't know. Too sleepy. Who cares? Hey yourself. Make me, jerk. I won't talk if you will not take care of me. I shall not converse until my needs are serviced. And that is that. Must sleep. Talk later. Too tired to yak right now. Must get my beauty sleep. Yeah, whatever. No excuse for you. No way. I knew it. That's it. Get me out of here. Don't make me come out there, bitch. Don't make me come out there. I'd like to see you try. Yes, I think so. Yes, it appears that I am. No, but I'm tired. Very tired. No, but I'm terribly fatigued, and I'd really like some rest if you wouldn't mind. You wish. Oh, wouldn't that just make your day? You'd like that, wouldn't you? Oh, wouldn't you just like that? Don't say you're sorry. Give me air. I'm dying here. Right. Just don't do it again. I know. Just let's not let it sizzle in here again, okay? I know you are. Just don't ever... Let it get hot like this again, okay? Don't say you're sorry. Give me some heat. I'm dying here. Don't apologize. Turn up the heat. I'm freezing my butt off over here. There'll be time for apologies later. What's first at hand is getting a little heat in this blasted terrarium. Don't say you're sorry. Just feed me. Words don't fill my stomach. Get me food. Quick. Apologies will do nothing for my digestion process, of which there is currently nothing in there to digest. Come now, get me food. Pronto. Whatever. You're forgiven. I guess. No, no, no. Just let's not let this happen again, okay? Words won't moisten my skin. It isn't that complicated. Turn on the spritzer and then we'll talk. Okay? Come on. Spritz first, then apologies. Please, I'm too tired for this. Let's just rest, okay? As if I could ever forgive you. Sniff. Okay, fine. Thanks, I guess. Give me air. Now! Air. I really need air. It's too hot for this. Please, it's so 
Hot. So hot. It's too hot for this. Much too hot. I'm so hot. Sweltering. It's so hot. This is inhumane. I'm too hot. Fix it, oh cruel one. So cold. So cold. I can't feel my nose. It's too cold for this. It's much too cold for this. Really, I'm freezing. I'm so cold. It's easy for you out there. Why don't you just do something about it? If you don't turn the heat up, I really can't say what I'll come out there and do. Feed me. I'm hungry. Please, feed me first. I'm so hungry. Please, feed me. I'm starving. I really can't think right now. I'm so hungry. Please, let's eat now and talk later. I feel sick. I'm illin. Yes, I am. Oh, I really don't feel very well. Oh, I think I'm going to lose my lunch, if you know what I mean. Too dry. I need to be moisturized. My skin is flaky. No one will like me. Moisture. My kingdom for a spritz of water. It's so dry. Please use the sprinkler before I wither up and crack in two. I need moisture. My skin gets all crackly without it. Please. So sleepy. I'm too tired to talk. Too tired. Must sleep. Soon. I'm really sleepy. Please let me rest. Please. I need my beauty sleep. Please let me rest. Then we'll talk. Mm. I'm mad at you right now. So go away. No talking until you apologize. And that is that. You're just a... Brat. If I speak with you right now, I'm positive I'll say something we'll both regret. I'm so mad I could shoot poison arrow frogs from my bottom. I'm so angry. Honestly, do you really think you deserve my attention after what you've done? Come on. <laughs> Mother, is that you? I don't want to go to school today. Wait, wait, wait. Didn't your mother teach you any manners? Hold on. Oh, please, really, you must give me more time than that. Oh, oh geez, just wait a second, won't you? Your call is very important to us. Please hold on for a moment. Hold on already. Hold on, hold on. Morning. Morning, sunshine. Well, hello. Rise and shine. Good morning, friend. The same to you, my friend. Well, look who's up. Greetings. Good morning. Hello. Hi. Well, if it isn't our very own early bird special. Hey, I know it's early, but can you up the air in here? It's warm this morning. It's pretty warm this morning. Cold morning. Chilly morning. Time for breakfast. Time to eat. Is it time for breakfast? What's for breakfast? Is breakfast served? And what will you be serving for breakfast? Is it morning time already? It's somewhat dry this morning. See what you can do. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, 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 whatever. Not anymore. Um, uh, morning is over. Not anymore. Check the clock. Um, morning has already ended. Actually, morning is over. Actually, kiddo, morning is technically over. Hey, afternoon. Hi, what's happening? And a good afternoon to you. Good afternoon to you, too. Hello. Do something about the air, okay? It's warm in here. Pretty stuffy in here this afternoon, if you ask me. It's cold in here. Kinda cold in here. A bit nippy in here, if you ask me. Right. Feed me. Is it time to eat yet? Right, hello. It's about time we ate, isn't it? Great. Shall we brunch? Wonderful. What's for lunch? Is it afternoon already? Kind of dry in here this afternoon. Could you fix it, please? Okay, if you say so. Whatever. What are you doing playing games on a weekend afternoon? Shouldn't you be out spending time with your girlfriend? She. What are you doing playing games on a weekend afternoon? Shouldn't you be out spending time with your boyfriend? 
<laughs> what are you doing playing games on a weekend afternoon? Shouldn't you be out spending time with your wife? <laughs> what are you doing playing games on a weekend afternoon? Shouldn't you be out spending time with your husband? <laughs> what are you doing playing games on a weekend afternoon? Shouldn't you be out spending time with your son? <laughs> what are you doing playing games on a weekend afternoon? Shouldn't you be out spending time with your daughter? <laughs> what are you doing playing games on a weekend afternoon? Shouldn't you be out spending time with your children? Sheesh. No, it's not. Not at the moment. It's not afternoon, is it? Actually, it's not afternoon. I think you ought to check your watch. Technically speaking, it's really not afternoon. Hi. Evening. Hi there. Hello. Good evening. Hey, look who's here. Well, hello. Hi, how are you? It is a nice evening. Evening, stranger. Good evening to you, too. Good evening. Hi, hi, hi there. Some more air this evening would be nice. It's hot this evening. It's too warm in here tonight. Rather warm in here this evening, isn't it? It's hot this evening. Is something wrong with the heater? A bit sultry in here this evening, isn't it? It's cold at night. It's chilly this evening. It's a tad nippy this evening. Is it time to eat yet? Is it time for dinner? Is it time for supper? Is it supper time? Dinner time already, is it? Well, it couldn't have come sooner. I'm sorry, was my rumbling stomach keeping you up? Is it already evening? A bit dry in here this evening, isn't it? Rather dry in here, isn't it? See what you can do. Right. Good night. Sure. Hi. Right. Hi. What are you doing playing games on a Friday night? Shouldn't you be out... Tearing up the town with your girlfriend? What are you doing playing games on a Friday night? Shouldn't you be out tearing up the town with your boyfriend? What are you doing playing games on a Friday night? Shouldn't you be out tearing up the town with your wife? What are you doing playing games on a Friday night? Shouldn't you be out tearing up the town with your husband? What are you doing playing games on a Saturday night? Shouldn't you be out tearing up the town with your girlfriend? What are you doing playing games on a Saturday night? Shouldn't you be out tearing up the town with your boyfriend? What are you doing playing games on a Saturday night? Shouldn't you be out tearing up the town with your wife? What are you doing playing games on a Saturday night? Shouldn't you be out Tearing up the town with your husband? Not quite. Mmm, I don't think so. Evening? I think you'd better check your watch. I don't think it's technically evening. It's not evening, Professor. Hi. What's up? Greetings. Hi, Fuzzy. Well, hello. Hello. Hi there. Sup. Hello, my friend. Hey. Hello there. Yo. Howdy, partner. Ho there. Hey, good to see you. Well, look who's here. Welcome. Hi. Nice to see you. Greetings and salutations. Hi. Can I have some air? Air, please. Hi. Quit with the heat. Hello. Enough with the heat already. Hello. Kind of warm in here, by the way. Hi. Heat, please. Hello. Turn the heater on, okay? It's too cold for hellos. Hello. Let's turn up the heat, shall we? Hello. Feed me. Hello there. Let's have some food, okay? Greetings. A bit of food would be divine right about now. Yes, uh, hello there. I'm feeling a bit under the weather. You'll have to excuse me. Hi. Oh. <coughs> Oy, I feel disgusting. Hello. A bit dry in here today. Let's try to do something about it, can we? We means you, actually. Yeah, hello. Whatever. Okay, as great as I look. Fine. Not too bad. Just peachy, thanks. As well as can be expected, I guess. Been better. 
been worse. Better than average. I'm king of the world. I'm good, thanks for asking. Pretty good. Well, considering that you are my sole provider and caretaker, my well-being is directly proportional to how well you take care of me. So you tell me how I should be doing. I'm just a sea man in a dog-eat-dog world. Woof. Very well, thank you. Eh, I've been better. I wish I could say good. I'm not so good. I'm not very well. I'm fine. I'm great, thanks. I'm just fine, thank you. Well, that depends on whether or not you're looking after me, doesn't it? Things really couldn't be better. No, really. I'm just fine. Thanks so much for asking. I'm a freaking frog. What else do you want to know? I need air. I could use some air. I'm too hot. It's hot in here. I'm kind of warm. It's pretty warm in here, but otherwise I'm okay. It's rather warm for my liking, but other than that, well, I suppose I'm fine. It could be cooler in here, actually. It's cold. I'm cold. It's cold in here. I'm pretty cold in here. A bit chilly, actually. Hmm. Well, I've been warmer, that's for sure. I'm hungry. I'd be better if you'd feed me. I'd be a lot better if you'd give me some food. I'd be much better with a little food in my gut, thanks. I'm getting a little hungry. A bit sick, I'm afraid. Well, I'm feeling rather... faint. I'm feeling rather dry, actually. I could be... Moister, I suppose. Why do you care? As if you cared. I feel pretty bad, actually. Eh, no, I don't need anything. I could use a hug. Mm, nothing. I'm fine. I'm okay. No, I'm fine. Nothing, thanks. Nothing, thanks. No, I think I'm fine for the moment. I'm fine, thanks. I can't think of a single thing. You can tell your friends to stop hitting on me. I'll take a little bit of freedom. To go, please. Uh, yes, someone else to talk to. Just kidding. I love you, partner. Yes, a grappling hook, a plane ticket to the Bahamas, and $400 in cash. Pronto. Sorry, sweetie, you don't do a thing for me. You can get me a playmate, if you know what I mean. How about someone else to talk to? Just kidding. I guess. All I need is your company right now. Some air, please. Air, please. Something cold. It's too hot. For starters, you can stop with the heater. Maybe a couple ice cubes. Something chilled would be great. It's pretty warm in here, but otherwise I'm okay. If you wouldn't mind running a few ice cubes over my body, just like in that movie, if you know what I mean. Meow. It's sweltering in here. Would you lay off the heater, please? It's too cold. Heat, please. It's cold in here. A little heat, please? Something to warm up the tank would be nice. Some heat, please. Some heat would be good. Can you warm it up in here? If it isn't too much of a hassle for you. A bit of warmth would really brighten up my day, thanks. A little more heat would take away these goosebumps, if you wouldn't mind. Can I get you to turn up the heater a bit, please? Food, please. I could use some food, please. Something to nibble on would really hit the spot, actually. Cheeseburger, large fries, and a diet soda. I'm watching my figure. Ugh, could you get me some... No, oh, I don't know, but I'm just not feeling very well, that's all. Some moisture would be wonderful if you wouldn't mind. A little spritz would be nice, thanks. You can go away. You can leave me alone, for starters. No, leave me alone. No, thanks. No, I don't think so. No, not yet. No, I'm not really hungry. Nah, no, but... Thanks, anyway. No, you mustn't worry your pretty little head about such details anymore. I'm all taken care of over here, you see. Sure, why not? Yes, I could eat something. Sure, I'll take some food. Well, I won't say no. Yes, I could eat something. Yes, please. Yes, I could use a little snacky. I am hankering for a bite. Yes, a little repast might do me good. Yes, I am feeling a little peckish. Well, I am imagining you as a big bagel with cream cheese right now, but... 
That's probably just a hormonal thing. No, but air would be good. No, but bubbles would be nice. No, but it is kind of hot in here. No, it's too hot to eat. No, but it's really warm in here. Could you fix that? No, thanks, but I could use something cool in here. Nope. But it is a little hot in here. No thanks, but I could chew on an ice cube if you've got one. No, but turn up the heat. No, but give me some heat. No thanks, but I could use a little more heat. No, but please turn up the heat a bit. No, but it's rather chilly in here. Some heat would be nice. No thanks, but I wouldn't mind if you turned up the heat. No, I'm... Too sick to eat right now. No thanks, it's too dry in here for me to think about food right now. No, leave me alone. Oh, I see. You're trying to make it up to me with food. No, thank you very much. No, I'm not cold. No, I'm not cold. No, I don't think so. Nope, I'm just fine. No, I'm fine, thanks. Nope, I'm pleasantly toasty. No. Oh. Do you mean sexually? No, I'm fine. I had some hot chocolate earlier. No, this jungle is quite a comfortable temperature, but thank you very much for asking. Yes, it's a little cold. Yes, it's a little chilly. Yes, I could do with a little heat. Yes, it's a little drafty in here. Turn the heat up. Well, I do have pointy nipples. Turn up the heat. Yes, turn up the heat a tad, would you? No, but air would help me. No, but... Give me some bubbles. No, but it is kind of hot in here. No, but that would be nice. No, it's actually rather hot in here. No, but I could use something cool in here. Nope, it's warm, actually. No, but I could chew on an ice cube if you've got one. No, but I am hungry. No, feed me. No, but some food would be nice. No, but... I'm pretty hungry. No, but I could really use something to eat at the moment. No, but I could really eat right now. No, but if you feed me, I'll be one happy amphibian. Cold? I don't think so, but I'm not feeling too good, so what do I know? No, I think it's just fine, but that could just be my fevered state. No, but I could use a little moisture if you're so inclined. No, but it is rather dry. <coughs> As if you cared. What do you care? No, I'm not hot. No, I'm fine. No. Come on in, the water's fine. No, you don't have to worry about that anymore. But thanks, it's nice to know you care. Yes, it's hot in here. Yes, I'm a little warm. Yes, I'm hot. Stop turning up the heater. Yes, it's warm in here. Yes, please leave the heater alone. No, but I could use some more bubbles. The non-boiling kind, if you wouldn't mind. No, it's cold. No, it's actually cold in here. No, it's actually rather cold in here. You might want to fiddle around with the temperature a bit. Actually, I'm freezing in here. Could you do something about that, please? No, but I am hungry. No, feed me. No, but some food would warm me up. No, but I'm pretty hungry. No, but I could really use something to snack on at the moment. No, but I could really eat right now. No, but if you feed me, I'll be one happy camper, you bet. Boiling? I don't think so, but I'm not feeling too good, so... What do I know? No, I think it's just fine, but that could just be my fevered state. No, but I could use a little moisture if you're so inclined. No, but it is rather dry. <coughs> As if you cared. What do you care? Eh? I'm fine. Seems fine to me. It's fine, thanks. It's okay. No, you don't have to worry about that anymore. But thanks. It's nice to know you care. Yes, it's really too dry in here. It's a little dry. Spritz me. It's a bit on the dry side. Please do something. It's drier than I like. Use the sprinkler if you would be so kind. Um, yes, a little sprinkler action would be good. No, but it's really warm in here. Could you fix that? No, thanks, but I could use something cool in here. Nope but it is a little hot in here. No, thanks, but I could use an ice cube if you've got one. No, but it is kind of cold in here. No, but it's actually rather cold in here. You might want to fiddle around with the temperature a bit. I'm nice and moist right now, but 
That might be part of the reason my skin is so cold. Could you do something about that, please? No, but I could really use a bite to eat if you've got it. No, but I could really eat right now. No, but if you feed me, I'll be one grateful frog. Dry? I don't think so, but I'm not feeling too good, so what do I know? No, I think it's just fine, but that could just be my fevered state. As if you cared. What do you care? I'm fine. It's good in here. How about out there? I'm good. Everything is fine. Eh? Yes, you could turn it up. A little more wouldn't kill me. Sure, more oxygen. It's a little low. Turn it up. No, but it is kind of hot in here. No, it's too hot to breathe. Nope. But it is a little hot in here. No, but turn up the heat. No, but give me some heat. No, but I could eat. No, but you could feed me. No. Leave me alone. No, not really. Um... No. No, I'm fine. I'm feeling pretty awake. No, I think I'll stay up for a while. Not really. But shouldn't you be getting to bed soon? No, I do my best thinking in the evenings. But it seems as if you might want to get a little shut-eye sometime soon, eh? No, but I could use some air. No, but it's hot. No, but it's really warm in here. Could you fix that? No. How is a seaman supposed to sleep when it's so hot? No, it's too cold. No, it's too cold to sleep. No, I'm hungry. No, I'm too hungry to sleep. No, I'm feeling a little too sick to sleep, actually. No, it's too dry to sleep, I think. No, I always look like this when you're talking. No, I haven't been read my bedtime story yet. You bet. You know it. Sure. Fun. Life's not all about fun, little one. Fun? Why, of course I'm having fun. How could I be trapped in a glass box and not have fun? Well, it's kind of fun watching you. Except that your room is a sty. Can you get on that? Yes, I'm having a great time. You're a seaman's wet dream. I was till you showed up. Yes, I'm having fun. Except that I have to look at you all the time. Oh, yes, swimming around in the same tank day in, day out is just what Dr. Fun ordered. Oh, yes, swimming around in the same tank day in, day out is just what Dr. Fun ordered. Word. Not much. Just keeping it real. I'm just a sea man in a dog-eat-dog -dog world. Woof. I'm very well, thank you. Uh, I'm not your brother. Oh, stop trying to be all street. It doesn't suit you. Nothing much. Nothing. Hey, what's up? Just having a lovely little swim. Not much. Not much. Just keeping it real. Clouds, birds, and Sega stock. So bye now. You mean, what's up, sir, don't you? Up where? Up? Why, whatever do you mean? As if you care. My hackles, you mouth breather. Go away. Nada. Not one thing. Figure it out. Shouldn't you know what's happening? You'd know what's happening if you were paying attention. What do you care? I'm what's happening. The same thing that always happens. You're bothering me. Nothing. Not much. Just chilling. Shh. It's thinking. Just marking time. Greetings. I'm thinking. Shh. As if you cared. I'm trying to have a moment to myself. Figure it out. Take a guess, Einstein. Not a lot. Nothing much. Hopefully not me. A tangy beef stew. Only enough for me, though. Cooking. Oh, I see. You are using a culinary metaphor to inquire about my current state of affairs. Yes, yes, I understand. I don't know, but I'm suffocating. Me. Feels like I'm cooking. It's so hot, I would guess that it's me who's cooking. Too cold to cook. It's too cold for me to cook. It's too cold for that. If you're really set on cooking me, you might want to up the heat a bit. I don't know, but you're making me hungry. Something for me, I'm hoping. Don't talk about food. I'm feeling ill. I don't know, but it's pretty arid hereabouts. 
I would suggest adding a little moisture to the air if you wouldn't mind. Who cares? You, if you don't get out of my face. What? Hey, what? Hi. Hello. What do you want? Yes. Hay is for horses. Aren't you glad you're a hairless ape? You want something? Leave me alone. Buzz off. Quiet, please. Hey yourself. What? What do you want? Why? Say please. No, you come here. Hey, remember patience is a virtue. Quit giving me orders, Ahab. As you wish. Coming, your majesty. Hello. You called. That's my name. Don't wear it out. What's up? Seaman, seaman, seaman. You sound like a broken record. What can I do for you? What do you want? Can I help you? Yes. Can I help you? What do you need? What? Yes. Yes. This better be important. This better be good. What did you do? What do you want? What's the problem? What? Why? Not in this lifetime. Why? You fart again? What do you want? What is it? What? Did you just give me an order there, Napoleon? This better be good. Yes. You're interrupting me. Can I help you? Look, I'm very busy. Can't this wait? Ooh, the biped is getting uppity. Okay, okay, keep your pants on. Why? Do you have something interesting to show me? You can't possibly show me anything I haven't already seen. Sir... I like the sound of that. That's right. You will respect me now. Master, I like the sound of that. Good. At least you know who's boss around here. Yes, servant. Yes, little one. Master Busy, you go away. What? Yes. The name is Seaman. I'm not merely a fish, you big ape. Hey. Who are you calling names, Lung Bucket? Sticks and stones may hurt my scales, but words will never hurt me. You're lucky you're on the other side of this aquarium. Whatever, shark bait. I'm rubber, you're glue. Whatever you say bounces off me, and... Well, you know the rest. Listen, sweet cheeks. I'm a sea man, and if you'd like to bend over and turn around, I'll prove it to you. Don't make me come out there. Don't call me that. Listen, if my name was Seaman, I wouldn't be swimming in this tank. I'd be swimming around in your wife's uterus. Listen, if my name was Seaman, I wouldn't be swimming in this tank. I'd be swimming in your uterus. Listen, if my name was Seaman, I wouldn't be swimming in this tank. I'd be swimming in your mama. It's Seaman, punk. Let's be sure and get my name right, skin puppet. Excuse me, it's Seaman. Don't forget it. Get the name right, Sasquatch. Hey, it's Seaman, not Seaman. Get it straight. Say it with me. See, man. One more time. See, man. See, man. Good. I knew you could get it. Good one. Stupid. Don't ever call me stupid. You're the stupid head. The word is grotesque. I'm gross? Have you looked in the mirror lately, Perhaps, but I still make you look like roadkill. Like the spice? You know, I've seen you naked. Now that's scary. Weird isn't so bad. Einstein was weird. I don't have to take this. You have no idea. It's called character. I have character. Weird? In what way? Sorry, I'm a little bit different, valley girl. Look who's talking. Hmm. Have you looked in the mirror lately? Beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Talk to the fin. Maybe so, but I still make you look like roadkill. Everybody needs a hobby. Really? I'm sorry. No, really, I am. Look at this face. Would it lie to you? Aren't you really angry at yourself? What did I do? What's the matter? You're mad? Maybe you should hit a pillow. I hear it helps. You know, it's not healthy to be angry. Let it out. Don't let the anger fester. A lot of rage. A lot of rage. What's the problem? Wanna see something really freaky? You should see my Aunt Mabel. I'm a super freak. Yes, let's get freaky. I'm a freak? 
At least I'm not covered with hair, Sasquatch. Children's fodder, if you ask me. My name is Seaman, Fuzzbucket. I don't know that word. I am Seaman. Get it right. I am Seaman. Get it right. Oh, no, you're not getting off that easy. Hey, that's kind of harsh. I mean, I know we fight, but I thought deep down we still cared. Wow. You're a freak. Don't make me come back and haunt you. You're a morbid little creature, aren't you? Wow, you're going to beat up a fish? You're tough. Bring it on, airbag. You don't have the guts. You and what army? Settle down, Beavis. What? So does your mother. I know I do. I'm a fish. Yep. Hey, watch the F word, air sucker. Thanks, I'm not interested. I'm too polite to use that word, so I'll just say, bite me, you baboon-faced ass-scratcher. If you're trying to flirt with me, it won't work. Not here. You are what you eat. <laughs> no, shinola. That's a bad word. Polite people say, Ka ka. I know you're not talking about me. Why don't you go do something more intellectually stimulating like eat paint chips? You're just not my type. Look who's talking. They should call you vanilla. I'm sorry, were you speaking? Shut up. Then go away. Okay, but this time you be the horse and I'll be the cowboy. I don't want to play now. What's the matter? Are you bored? Go play with yourself. What do you want to play? Okay, go fetch the stick, boy. Maybe you should be playing with your daughter. Maybe you should be playing with your son. Maybe you should be playing with your children. Maybe you should be studying. Hmm? No. Go study. Don't you ever work? Sorry, I'm busy. Okay. Why don't I stick you in a glass bowl and stare at you all day? Does that sound like fun? Do I have to provide all the entertainment around here? Well, I can't babysit you all the time, you know. I'm not ignoring you, I'm thinking. I'm not ignoring you, I'm relaxing. I'm thinking. I'm not ignoring you, I'm just paying my attention elsewhere. So what are you looking at me for? So take a cold shower. And do you think I can help you with this? Vivarium. I wonder how those humans are doing. Vivarium. Are they still around? Vivarium. I wonder what they'll come out with next. Wow. How do you know about them? Yeah, good people over there. But their office smells funny. Hmm, that name sounds familiar. Let us never utter that name again. That's right. This is a Sega Dreamcast. Yes, Sega. They want me to be the mascot for their softball team. Yes, Sega. Now, can you say Dreamcast? All hail Sega. There. Where's my 50 bucks? Yes, I think I've heard of that company. Sure, I'm familiar with them. Who's the... Wait a minute, I'm not playing that game. Shut up. Go away. You're welcome. Yes, party. Woo-hoo. Hmm? What? Sorry, I was thinking about something important. Just hanging around. What are you doing? What are you doing? Not much. Why? Nothing. Living, breathing, swimming my way into the hearts and minds of people everywhere. Not much. I'm swimming, stupid. Shh. I'm thinking. Shut up. Plotting your demise. Why do you ask? Well, I spend most of my time either swimming or crapping, so why don't you guess? Can't you tell? You stare at me constantly. This is it. This is what I do. Now back off. Waiting for some idiot to ask me what I'm up to? None of your business. I can't tell you that. Why should I tell you? I'm thinking that life is not too bad. You know, many things. It's a secret. You wouldn't understand. I'd tell you, but it involves lots of big words. I'm not telling. Read the book. I'm calculating pi. What are you thinking about? Hmm. 
Humans are very odd-looking, don't you think? You're too young to understand. Hey, do I ask you what you're thinking? Of course, that wouldn't take very long to answer. I'm thinking that you look awfully funny with your hair that way. Now, where on earth do you think I could wear a wristwatch? Well, I'd check my sundial, but I'm trapped in this tank. Time for you to shut up. What is time, really? Does anybody really know what time it is? Why? Do you want to ask me out? Hey, do I ask you personal questions? Oh, well, I guess I do. I can't really remember, actually. Old as the hills. Too old to remember. I'm legal. Well, aren't we rude? I don't even know myself. Do you know? Well, kid, I'm no spring... Frog, I'll tell you that much. Sea man is all man. Just not all the time. Why do you ask? Isn't it obvious? Something like that, yes. I'm anything you want me to be, sweet cheeks. What do you think? Stud muffin. I don't have my own, so I stole one from that prince guy. Yield to oncoming traffic. I'm a fish. What do you think? No trespassing. I need a middle finger to show you. No parking in rear. July 29th, 1999. Seaman. I'm Seaman. I'm Seaman. But you can call me Seaman. Seaman. To my friends, I'm Seaman. Who are you? Seaman, at your service. You don't know? Don't you know who you're talking to? I am Seaman. Applause, please. Don't you know who you're talking to? I am Seaman, hear me roar. I am Seaman, hear me roar. Seaman. Seaman Jones, my name is Seaman. You see any pointy things on me? Sorry, gorgeous, you're not my type. Seaman doesn't get horny. He gets urges of amore. What matters is that I'm here now. You can't send me back if that's what you're thinking. Oh, here, there, Everywhere. I was hoping you would know. I'm from all over the place. Small minds confuse easily. Sorry. I'll use smaller words. Is this better? Perhaps you should invest in a box of cotton swabs. How's the potato crop in your ears? I don't think so. No, I'm fine. Well, I suppose I'll die eventually. Thanks for reminding me, by the way. Uh, take a guess. I'm cranky. Figure it out, genius. I don't know. Where to start, if you have to ask? I need air. Whenever you're ready. I could use some air, please. It's kind of warm in here, that's all. It's a bit hot in here, that's all it is, really. It's rather warm in here. Actually, it's a bit of a sultry mess in here. You might want to fix that. It's kind of cold in here. Turn up the heat. It's rather chilly. Can you turn the heat up a little? Actually, it's rather frosty in here. I think you know what to do. I could use a little food. I'm kind of hungry. Got a bite to eat? I'm kind of hungry in here. Can you spare a bite, neighbor? I'm somewhat hungry, if you wouldn't mind. Just a nibble will do me a world of good. I'm not feeling too hot, actually. I'm feeling a bit under the weather, actually. I'm sure it will pass. I'm sort of feeling icky right now. I'm sure I'll be fine, though. I'm pretty parched. If you could mist the air a little, I'd be most grateful. I could use a little spray of water if you wouldn't mind. What do you care, anyway? As if you cared. Don't pretend to care. I know you don't, so just stop it. It'll cost you a buck. Sorry, I just can't boogie right now. Sorry, I'm just not feeling it right now. No, if I dance, you'll try to stuff money in my panties. Well, if you let me out of here, I'll do a little dance for you. You first. No, 
I don't want to. I don't feel like it. I'm not in the mood. Well, I could whistle if I hadn't eaten all of those crackers earlier. What do you want me to do? Not right now. Maybe later. No, go away. Sorry, the tank's dark today. That's a theater term. My, you are a tough audience, aren't you? Do I have to provide all the entertainment around here? Why don't you entertain me for a change? Don't you find me entertaining enough already? No, how about you entertain me? Go stand on your head. I am, I'm swimming. I don't want to. No. About what? Don't you have some mammary glands to suck or opposable thumbs to play with or something? Something. Fine. You're a pain in the ass. How's that? I'm not your trained monkey, all right? Talk is overrated. I have nothing to say. There's nothing I want to talk about right now. Blah, blah, blah. Happy? No, I'm done for today. No, I'm all talked out for today. Okay, let's talk about... No, maybe tomorrow. No, not today. Maybe tomorrow. Tomorrow. We'll talk again tomorrow. Okay, no problem. Fine. Later. I am. No, what were you saying? What? Can't. Too busy. Maybe you should take a nap. Get some rest, then. I'm very sorry to hear that. Perhaps you should rest a bit, then. I worry about you enough as it is. Don't make me take your temperature. I'm very sorry to hear that. Don't make me get out my thermometer. It isn't the oral kind, you know. Where's my stethoscope? I know I put it around here somewhere. Well, quit talking to me and rest up. Don't make me panic. Are you lonely? Come on. I'm here, aren't I? Don't you have any friends? Well, don't you fret. Seaman is your friend. Uh-oh. Seaman to the rescue. You're not alone. I'm here. Well, if you're happy, then I'm happy. That's good. You get so moody sometimes, it just breaks my heart. Me too. Well then, all's well with the world. If you're happy, Seaman's happy. That's nice. Bye bye Ta. Don't be a stranger. See you later. Goodbye. Be seeing you. See ya. Cheerio. Later, Fuzzy. See ya, pal. Bye. I will be on my way now. Till next time. Talk to you soon. See you soon. Adieu. And I thought we were friends. I'll just give you some time to cool off then. Bite me. Where should I go? I'm in a fish tank. I would love to. Point me to the door. Why don't you go away? You're not the one in the tank. Well, as charming as your company is, I'd love to go away. But I can't. Whatever. But I'm not tired. Talk to you later. Good night. Nighty night. Good night. You want me to go to sleep? Just keep talking. See you in the morning. Who? Me? Oh, stop. I bet you say that to all the fish men. You're not so bad yourself. Well, gosh. Oh, you. You bet I am. Don't think I don't know it. That's me. Cute as a button. Well, what a nice thing to say. And I can get a lot hotter. Meow. You don't get out much, do you? Are you coming on to me? Well... You can look, but don't touch. You're too kind. Thank you. Thanks. That means a lot. Well, you know, I try to stay in shape. Well, I'm having a good hair day. Petty compliments won't pave your way into my heart. Well, maybe they will, but you'll have to do it more, you know. Oh, yeah. You know it. Wait a minute. Don't let your boyfriend hear about this. I don't want to end up with a shiner. Wait a minute. Don't let your girlfriend hear about this. I don't want to end up in some sort of catfight. Wait a minute. Don't let your husband hear about this. I don't want to end up with a shiner. Wait a minute. Don't let your wife hear about this. 
I don't want to end up in some sort of cat fight. Thanks, but that and a dollar still ain't getting me out of this tank. You're not so bad looking yourself. That's very nice of you. You're making me blush. You realize you're talking to a fish, right? Thank you. Well, that's quite a compliment. You have remarkable taste. Like a wintergreen mint, baby. Well... Maybe. I suppose so. I'm often told that. Took you long enough to notice? Really? Aw, oh, I didn't know you cared. Of course. Now you get it. Does that mean you like me? Come on, admit it. Well, you're, uh, kicking. Oh, you humans and your slang. It's so cute. Does that mean you like me? Come on, admit it. Well, you know, I try. Right, I know. Amazing? Well, yes, I guess so. Amazing? Well, I suppose so. Amazing is such an... appropriate word. Yes, I agree. I love you too, Pookie. Don't make me vomit. I love you too. Now, go make me an omelette. Ugh. Spare me the mush. Listen, I... Uh, don't know if our relationship can uh, handle this, you know. Besides, what would the neighbors think? Listen, I don't know if our relationship can uh, handle this, you know. Besides, what would your boyfriend say? Listen, I uh, don't know if our relationship can uh, handle this, you know. Besides, what would your girlfriend say? Listen, I... Uh, don't know if our relationship can handle this, you know. Besides, what would your husband say? Listen, I don't know if our relationship can handle this, you know. Besides, what would your wife say? Listen, I don't know if our relationship can handle this, you know. Besides, what would your mother think? Well, this... Is a little sudden, isn't it? Aw, shucks. Thank you, that means a lot to me. Uh, I like you too, but not in that way. Well, thanks, Fuzzy, I like you too. Thanks. Sure, that's what they all say. Aw, that's... sweet. Sweet as sugar, baby. Sweet? Hey, so are you. Let's hug. Hey, thanks, you're sweet too. Right. Sweet. You should be. What now? What did you do this time? Well, as long as you understand. You certainly are. Hmm. Okay, apology accepted. I'm sorry too. Now give me a kiss. I'm not angry. I'm Seaman. Ha, ha, na, na, na. Good one. Do I look angry? Okay, so maybe I look angry, but I'm not really angry. No. Should I be? Why, did you do something I should be angry about? No, this is my happy face. Yes, now go to your room. No, just disappointed. Like a hatter. No, I'm glad. Yes, I'm mad. About you getting there. Okay, I'm going to let you give me a name. When you've decided what you want to call me, say... I'm ready. Not all right. You're supposed to say, I'm ready. Not okay. You're supposed to say, I'm ready. Come on, you're supposed to say, I'm ready. All right, then. Here's how to do it. You're going to say my new name three times. Each time I say now, say the name once. Got it? Now. Now. One more time. One more time. Okay, I'll remember that. Next time you want to call me, call me using that name. And don't forget the name you gave me. Cause if you do, I'm not going to tell you what it is. Not if you were the last skin bag on the planet. No way. I know where those lips have been. Put this tongue in that mouth. Dream on. Um, no thanks. Don't make me ill. I'm sorry, the last person I kissed got too attached and it just got ugly. You know, I'm not going to turn into a prince. At least not just yet. Hey, if you want some action, rent a movie and lock the door. Hey, Seaman don't play that. Seaman refuses to discuss such things. He was raised to be a gentleman. Hmm, no. But thanks for asking. No, really, that's probably not such a good idea. 
I mean, what would the neighbors think? I really don't think we should. I mean, your man would get jealous, and besides, where would that leave us? I really don't think we should. I mean, your woman would get jealous, and besides, where would that leave us? Let's change the rating on this conversation to at least PG-13, huh? You don't appear to use the head you've got now. Yes, right. As if... <laughs> you could use a head, you simple-minded, addle-brained, lung-breathing degenerate. Is that anything like a fin massage? I know nothing about such things. I was born with fins. Proper sea men don't discuss such things. Yeah, right. As if. <laughs> hmm. Let me think about this. Sorry, sexy. I'm saving myself for someone taller. Oh, that's sweet of you to ask, but... Geez, I mean, um, I like you and everything. Um, is that a new shirt? I don't know. How much do you make again? Sorry. I have a feeling there's someone else out there for me. Sorry. I like you too much to ruin it, you know. Let's just stay friends for now, okay? Do you? Do you what? Do what to you? Yes, I hear that is a natural thing for you humans, but I'd really prefer to have nothing to do with it if it's all the same to you. Thanks. Ah, uh, junior high must be a big thrill for you. I have no experience with that. Oh, grow up. Go find some maturity and we'll talk later. Hold on, hold on. Hold your horses, I'll be right there. Please have some patience. Jeez. Hold on a sec. It's a little hot in here, so my moving's kind of slow. Jeez, can you wait just a second? Wait, 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 wait. Hold on a minute. Wait a second. Hold your ponies. Hungry. Hot. Too hot. Cold. Starving. Can't breathe. Fix air. I'm so mad. Grr. Tired. Blah. Too hot. Stop the heat. Yes. Leave heat alone. Too hot. No more heat. Too hot. Too hot. 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 Very hot. Heat bad. Hot, hot, hot. No more heat. Boiling. No. Need air. No. Cold. No. Mad. No. Tired. No. Hungry. No. Freezing. Sweltering, too cold, cold, brr. More heat, please. Turn up heat, too cold for me. Freezing, <laughs> yes, need more heat. Hurry, cold, cold, cold. Nice try, but no, not cold. Hot, no, mad, no, tired, no. Hungry, no. I'm boiling, no. Can't breathe, can't. Breathe, hurts to breathe. Need air, add some air. More air, not enough air. Can't breathe, need air. Give me oxygen, need more air. Air, air, air. No, just mad. No need food. No need heat. No too hot. No sleepy. Nice try, but no. Yes. Feed me, feed me, feed me. Food, food. Hungry, hungry, hungry. I'm hungry. Feed me. Very, very hungry. Starving. Food. Must eat now. Do something. Dying of hunger. Help now. Yes, food. Right now. Give me food, give me food. Not hungry. Need heat. Not hungry. Too hot. Not hungry. Can't breathe. No. Tired. No, too mad to eat. Not hungry. But not good either. Still tired. Want more sleep. I'm not a morning fish. <sighs> Brr. Breakfast? Food now? <sighs> Too hot. Brr. Chilly.
frozen me. Hmm. Need food. Hey, feed me. <sighs> Too hot. Too cold. Need air. Grr. Hungry. Tired. Woof. Grr. I see. So what? That makes two of us. I knew it. No fun. Yes. Your fault. I bet you like that. I knew it. I need air. I need food. It's too hot. It's too cold. Need rest. Yes. As if you care. No. Yes. Sleepy. Yes. Good night. Yes. Sleepy time. Feed me. Give food. Starving. Too cold. Chilly. Cold. Too hot. Boiling. Too warm. <gasps> Need air. Give air. Tired. Sleepy. Let me sleep. <sniffs> yum, 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 yum. Mm. You make me mad. I'm upset. <sniffs> wait. Hold on a sec. Learn to wait, you. Hello? I know. Okay. Good. I'm okay. Fine. Good. Feel good. Great. Just kicking. Okay. What up? Why do you care? I've been better. Eh. Cold. I'm cold. Chilly. Burr. It's hot. I'm hot. Too warm. Can't breathe. I want bubbles. Need air. I want food. Hungry. Hot. Hot. I'm fine. Feel good. Just right. No, not hot. Hot? No. But it's okay. Warm. Yeah, no more heater. Warm, warm, warm. Kinda hot. Getting warm. No, just upset. No, just mad. No, cold. Not hot. Cold. No, need air. Not hot. Want bubbles. Not hot. Want food. No, hungry. Cold. Feeling fine. No, not cold. But I'm good. Just right. Cold. No, cold, cuddle me, chilly, more heat please, little cold, make me warm, cold, a bit, no, just upset, not cold, I'm mad, not cold, hot, no, hot, not cold, need bubbles, no, need air, not cold, want food, no, hungry, oxygen, it's fine, air is okay, Breathing fine. Don't change air. Need oxygen. Add air, please. Oxygen would be good. I'll take some air. Getting hard to breathe. No, just upset. No. Hot. No. Cold. No. Hungry. Not hungry. I'm good. I'm okay. No, but there's other stuff. Oh, wait. Yes. Hungry. Stomach symptoms. Food, please. Feed me. No, just upset. No, maybe I eat you. Not hungry. Chilly. No, cold. Not hungry. Too hot. No, hot. Not hungry. Can't breathe. No, need air. Hello, sleepy. Good morning. <sighs> Hello. Hey. Still tired. Want more sleep? Don't like mornings. Breakfast now? Cold morning for me. Need coffee. Hello. Hi. Yo, yo, yo. Hi. Yo. <laughs> Hello there. Hi there. Greetings and salutations. Oi. What? It's for horses. Hey. Hey, hey, hey. Hey to you. Hi. Hey, you. Afternoon. Yo. Noon. Noon. After who? Lunchtime? Hello. Hi. Evening. Hello. Dinner time? Dinner. Right. Bedtime? Night. Night, night. Grrr. I'm too hot. I'm cold. Fix my air. Feed me. Hi. What? What? Seaman. Seaman. Huh? Ooh. Sup? Yes? Yo, that's me. You got it. You want see man Where? See what? That's my name. Don't wear it out. Hello. Go away. I'm hot. It's cold. Fix air. Feed me. No what? No. You're no fun. Yes. No, 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 no. You're mean. No. Hee hee hee. No. You grouchy. Swimming? Don't know. Doing? Not much. Very little. Nothing. Chilling. What do you think? Freezing. Roasting. Dizzy. Can't breathe without air. Starving. 
What's up? Nothing. Hanging. Not much. Everything's fine. Not a thing. Hi. Hello. It's too warm. It's chilly. Need air. Hungry. Stupid. Stupid. You stupid. Stupid head. What stupid? Idiot. Idiot. <laughs> you idiot! Savant! What? Not a dork! Dork! You jerk! Dirk what? Fool! 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 You dumb! Dumb dumb dumb! You not nice! Go away! Leave me alone! You mean! Sticks and stones! I thought you liked me! No, I'm beautiful! I cute! Prettier than you! I'm rubber, you're glue! Eh, no! Meanie, I know what you are, but what am I? Be nice. Mwah. Don't like you. What's your problem? So much rage. You suck. Boot to you. You hurt my feelers. Better than you. I rock. Stop it. Stop being mean. You suck. I love play. Play, play, play. Play time. Play. Play with yourself. First fix hot. First fix cold. First fix air. First eat. Here. What? Where? I'm busy. Why? What? You said come. I'm not your dog. I am, I am, I am. I know. Yes. Thank you. You nice. You pretty. Thanks. I'm a babe. Hee <laughs> hee. Yeah. Thanks. You too. Cool. Rock on, dude. I'm blushing. Whatever. <laughs> blow. Blow bubble? Blow what? Blows, blows, blows. Wrong game, silly. Don't call me that. Stop calling me that. What? Who? When? What you say? Pay attention. Listen. Huh? What? I don't care. You said poo. <laughs> ick poo, ick poo. Poop. Bad word. First fix hot. Then poo. First fix cold. Then poo. First fix there. Then poo. First eat. Then poo. How old? Want cake. Don't know. Can't count yet. How old do I look? You tell me. What's your name? Yes. I'm Seaman. Huh? Seaman. I'm your new bestest friend. Seaman. Seaman, Seaman, Seaman. Grow, grow. Grow down. Grow up. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse you. Pardon? Did you fart? What? You're excused. Talk, talk. Blah, blah, blah. Talk about what? Hi. There, I talked. Talk to you? Testing one, two. Don't wanna. Hello. Me too shy. Don't know what to say. Okay. First sleep. Then talk. First fix hot. Then talk. First fix cold. Then talk. First fix fair. Then talk. First eat. Then talk. I'm not. Not ignoring you. Not ignore. Pontificate. Ignore. Fix heat. Then talk, fix cold. Then talk, fix air. Then talk, feed me. You so sweet. I like you too. Thank you. Then fix heat. Then fix cold. Then fix air. Then feed me. Love you. Mm, you so nice. Thanks, Pookie. Love you too. <laughs> Stop. Happy, happy. Yay. Me too. I'm happy. Glad for you. Yippee! Whoopee! Good for you. Okay, that's nice. Fix heat then. Fix cold then. Fix air then. Then feed me. What do I do? What did I do? No! Chill out. Ooh, angry. Ooh, you mad. Don't hurt me. Mad? Why? Ooh! Issues. I didn't do it. Don't hurt me. Fish? Not a fish. Seaman, cuter than fish, not just a fish, smarter than fish, doody doody, swimming, you first, do 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 do, lots to do, no, too hot, first you fix cold, first you fix air, not on an empty stomach, die, no, die bad, scared, from where, I don't know, egg, you tell me, my mommy, Fun, 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 fun. I'm fun. Whatever. Not fun. Hot. Not fun. Cold. Not fun. Can't breathe. Not fun. 
Hungry. Girl. Girls. Pretty. Boy. I'm a seaman. Don't ask. Don't tell. My secret. Yes. Ah. Don't scare me. What? Maybe. No. Not planning to. Don't think so. Nope. No. But it's hot in here. No. But cold. No. But need air. No. But I've been better. No. But getting hungry. Rule. No, don't. Police. Me call 911. No. Don't hurt me. No, stop. You suck. Leave me alone. Try it, jerk. Go ahead, ugly. Feed me first. I'm the baby. Baby. Hey, baby. No, thanks. No, fine. Nope. No, thanks, though. Maybe. Yes. Help. Yes, please. Ice cube, please. Colder, please. Warmer, please. Heat, please. Air, please. Mouth to mouth. Can't breathe very good. Food, please. Eat, please. No, fine. No, not sleepy. Day. Day? You're not nice. Okay, fine. Ask nice. You hurt my feelings. Meanie. Go away. Fine. Bye. Bye bye. Goodbye. Ciao. No, wait. Feed me first. Wait. I'm still cold. Fine. Bye. Wait. Give air first. You're not taking care of me. Fine. Goodbye. Fine. Okay, fine. But I'm hungry. But I'm hot. But I'm cold. But I can't breathe. Make me too hot, hot, cold, too cold, can't breathe, need air, angry, mad at you, nothing, it's fine, why, nothing wrong, everything, be right there, hold on, wait, not there yet, wait, 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 you're not a good waiter, hold on. Monkey, you know what really chaps my hide? It's how the English language is set up so that you never get a straight answer. For example, you might say, This is one of the tallest buildings in America. But what does that mean, one of the tallest buildings? There is only one tallest building, correct? This is very confusing to me. I'll bet you think my face is expressionless, don't you? Yeah, bite me. But you know, in other parts of the world, smiling is considered rude. I have heard that certain Eastern cultures are like that because of the Confucian influence. And when they deal with foreigners, they get even more serious because they don't want to be rude. Laughing out loud and, say, slapping a person on the back would be considered rude there, I suppose. But it's funny. I think the saying, silence is a virtue, wouldn't go over very well here. Why is it that you people smile when you apologize? Like if you have a complaint, you call customer service, and you get this really happy, cheerful recording that says something like, Thank you for calling. All of our operators are assisting other whiners at the moment, but your call is very important to us. The next operator will take your call in approximately 53 minutes. Wouldn't that piss people off even more? I'm telling you I'd much prefer another human answering. Like, maybe they could hire temporary counselors to wait with you and help iron out your problems. It seems as if it would be in the company's benefit as well, for once their customer service operator gets to your call, you'll be much more sedate and less likely to raise a stink. It's just a thought, something I've been thinking about. You know those answering services everyone seems to have? You know, John Smith is not available to take your call, yada, yada, yada. It seems strange to me, this service. Wouldn't it make more sense for the call to be forwarded to another live person? Or maybe business isn't quite as important to you folk as you all make it out to be. Uh, well, not you personally, but you collectively. You know, in certain Eastern cultures, they'd say you were born in the year of the... Boars are known for their extravagance and sex appeal. Except for that smell. Ugh. Lots of dogs are known to be very stable and have a knack for keeping the peace. Hmm, dragons are supposedly destined for greatness. 
Well, that explains why I'm here, at least. Horses are known for their volatile natures. Hmm. Monkeys are known for being very clever but vain. I guess that makes sense. Oxen are known for their predictability and for sticking to their words. But perhaps those two go hand in hand, do they not? Rabbits are known for their longevity. That's good for me. You can take care of me for a long, long time then. Rats are known to be very charming. That must explain why I like you so much. Roosters are known for their overconfidence. But I guess that figures, doesn't it? Sheep are known for being very serene. Hmm. Snakes are known for being unpredictable. But I predicted that with you. Tigers are known for their power and passion. Just so you know. You know, in the Olympics, in the swimming competitions, they have events for the breaststroke and the butterfly and the backstroke. But for the crawl stroke, they call it freestyle. Why is that? Every one of those humans looks like they're swimming exactly the same anyway. Where is the liberty? I just don't get it. English spelling is an odd thing, you know. I read a book once which said that after every Q there must be a U. So we should be able to save one byte of data by assuming that Q and U always go together. But I found an exception. Compact. Remember how we were talking about Q and U a little while ago? Well, I just thought of another word that doesn't have a U after the Q. NASDAQ. Technology types like being efficient, so I guess they don't mind breaking conventions to save that one byte of data. You know what I don't get about people? It's their innate need for self-deprecation. No, really. For example, your species seem to have the need to express how uncomfortable you are with your bodies. Perhaps you don't realize that the constant focus on your imperfections will only increase your self-consciousness. Remember how I was talking about how your species are so hung up on their imperfections? I just thought I should add a disclaimer to that last statement. When I say imperfections, I use that term loosely. I think the things about people that are often labeled as imperfections are actually the wonderful things which set each of you apart. People don't spend enough time rejoicing in their differences. I think you should all try. Starting now. Another thing I just don't understand is the human hypocrisy. Your culture is so hell-bent against adultery and such, but pornography is a common thing around the globe. Isn't pornography simply a mental form of adultery? And really, which is more important, mental or physical? I would say that emotional adulteries are just about as cheating as actual physical ones, but what do I know? I suppose my way of thinking may seem a bit odd to you, however. It's difficult observing from over here. After all, it isn't as if I can step out into your world and see what you see. Something that confuses me, let me tell you. It's that whole I before E except after C thing. It doesn't always apply, so why does that phrase even exist? After all, there is spelled T-H-E-I-R, yet there is no C in there. I think you should rethink your learning phrases, if only to make life for me a little bit less confusing. Since the beginning of my involvement in the Seaman project, I've had a lot of time to contemplate the history of Seaman. Although I cannot support any of this with evidence, I believe I've come up with a plausible tale of romance and loss that may or may not have happened. Allow me to share with you my ideas. Around the time of the ancient Third Dynasty, a young couple fell in love. The young man was a son of Djoser, pharaoh of the Third Dynasty. The young lady was the daughter of a priest of the temple, a man who later became the architect of the First Pyramid, Imhotep. But because of their differences in social standing, the pharaoh Djoser forbade the union. The young lady's father, on the other hand, felt pity for the young couple and sought help from Thoth, the god of knowledge. 
Was there a way, he asked, for the two lovers to meet again in another life? The god Thoth answered thus, I will take the two from this place. They will keep their memories and will meet again thousands of years from now when their love will not be forbidden. And then, one morning, the two young lovers disappeared. Later, the god Thoth told Imhotep what had happened. The young man had been transformed into a fish and was released to the Nile, while his lover was changed into a bird, taking flight into the sky. One day, thousands of years into the future, they would evolve into their original forms and meet once again. When the pharaoh learned of this, his heart was filled with sadness and remorse. He ordered Imhotep to create something that could be seen from the ground or from the air, a landmark, possibly, that could serve as a beacon for the separated lovers to find each other once more. Could this be the true meaning of the pyramid? Well, perhaps my presumptions are wild, but I have heard that behind the first pyramid of Djoser there stands an incomplete pyramid. It was built around the same time as Djoser's, but its intentions are a mystery. Perhaps that pyramid was an eternal landmark, created for two people who were destined to meet again some day. Anyhow, thank you for spending this time with Seaman. If you'd like, you may continue your visits, try dimming the lights, and you may watch Seaman go about his business. Similar to when you were tending the terrarium, your home will be filled with soothing sounds and interesting scenery. Seaman will be here for you to visit and speak with for as long as he remains in his current form. Very well. I must bid you farewell. He is dying due to lack of oxygen. Give him more oxygen by using the air supply at once or he will suffocate. They are dying due to lack of oxygen. Give them more oxygen by using the air supply at once or they will suffocate. He is suffering from dryness. Please give him water from the sprinkler. They are suffering from dryness. Please give them water from the sprinkler. There is not enough oxygen in the tank. Please give him more oxygen by utilizing the air supply. There is not enough oxygen in the tank. Please give them more oxygen by utilizing the air supply. He has nearly frozen to death. To avoid killing him, use the heater to raise the temperature. They have nearly frozen to death. To avoid killing them, Use the heater to raise the temperature. He is suffering from the cold. Please use the heater to raise the temperature to a more comfortable level. They are suffering from the cold. Please use the heater to raise the temperature to a more comfortable level. He appears to be very hungry. They appear to be very hungry. He is starving. Feed him at once or he will die. They are starving. Feed them at once or they will die. He appears to be hungry. Please give him some food. They appear to be hungry. Please give them some food. You must provide food immediately. He is enjoying a comfortable environment. They are enjoying a comfortable environment. He must be grateful to have such an attentive caregiver. They must be grateful to have such an attentive caregiver. Please continue your good work watching after him. Please continue your good work watching after them. I'm sure he will respond to your feelings for him. I'm sure they will respond to your feelings for them. Ah, it's good to see you again. I'm Leonard Nimoy, your guide for Seaman. There are currently no open spaces in this storage matrix, so no more food can be added. There is one space open. There are two spaces open. There are three spaces open. There are four spaces open. There are five spaces open. There are six spaces open. There are seven spaces open. There are eight spaces open. There are nine spaces open. What you are looking at is the Seaman feeding disk prepared for those of you who've run out of food while raising Seaman. With this software, you can add food to the storage matrix in your memory card. But you can only add food to a habitat three times. After that, we cannot help you any further. There are 10 spaces open. There are 11 spaces open. There are 12 spaces open. Seaman's food pellets will be added. Shall we proceed? Seaman's favorite food, the larva, will be added. 
Shall we proceed? The food replenishment is complete. You can add food to this habitat up to two more times. You can add food to this habitat one more time. You have added food to this habitat three times. You cannot add any more food. Very well. Please take the memory card containing your CMAN data, insert it into slot one of the controller connected to port A, and press the start button. Then, we shall proceed to the storage matrix. So, here are the current contents of your storage matrix. Oh, it appears that you've changed either your controller or your memory card. You have already replenished your food supply three times. I'm sorry, but you cannot add any more food. You have already replenished your food supply twice. You can add food one more time. You have replenished your food supply once before. You can add food two more times. You have not replenished your food supply yet. You can add food three times. Your schedule appears to be quite erratic. I hope that Seaman is not disturbing your everyday routine. Greetings, and welcome back. You're doing a good job. Greetings, and welcome back. You're doing a good job. It's quite unusual for you to visit at this hour. You're visiting later than usual today. You're visiting earlier than usual today. It seems that visiting around this time has become a habit for you. There is a definite pattern to your visits. It appears you are a punctual person. It is good to have you back again. Two days have passed since you last visited the laboratory. It is good to have you back so soon. Three days have passed since you last visited the laboratory. Although your care is appreciated, it is not necessary for you to lavish quite so much attention on Seaman. Four days have passed since you last visited the laboratory. Five days have passed since you last visited the laboratory. This is your second visit today. This is your third visit today. This is your fourth visit today. How many times have you visited today? A living, breathing creature is depending on you for its survival. It is foolish and irresponsible to take poor care of him. You visit often. If one didn't know better, one might assume you're quite obsessed, or you have nothing better to do. Many days have passed since you last visited the laboratory. This is not congruent to a happy, healthy seaman. Good evening. Good morning. Hello. Please try to be more diligent in your caregiving. Your visits should be daily at least if only to keep the environment comfortable. It appears you've forgotten the importance of the task at hand. Long time no see. Welcome to the laboratory of Jean-Paul Gasset. 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 Jean Jean Allow me to give you the highlights for today. Let me divulge the highlights for today. Allow me to divulge today's highlights. By the way, it seems you are running low on larva. Please take care that you do not run out of food for Seaman. The water in the tank is becoming clouded. If you use the air supply, you can clear up the water. Seaman has become ill after eating a spider. Please take good care of him. Some kind words of encouragement may help him feel better. The plant in the insect cage needs watering. Use the spray to replenish its moisture. Watch carefully to find out what happens to the Nautilus now that it has eaten some of the mushroomers. It is about time for the eggs to hatch. Pay close attention to what emerges. The egg is about to hatch. Please watch closely. In order to hatch the egg, it is important to maintain the temperature over 15 but under 20 degrees and keep the oxygen levels high. It should take about five minutes for the egg to hatch. Please be patient. We are nearing the mating season for the frogmen. This is something few humans have been privy to. Watch closely. Gilman has been growing and would love some variety in his meals. Try giving him some larva from the other tank. I'm sure he'll be pleased. Now these Gilman are very fond of the food pellets found in the storage matrix. But please be careful. Do not give them too much at once as their appetites are insatiable. If Professor Gasset's data is accurate, we can expect a change in the gill man's body very shortly. So let us head over to the tank. The mushroomers have a lifespan of only four to five days. In that time, you must discover how to help them reach the next step of their evolution. You can take advantage of their instinctive attraction to sound by tapping on the glass. The Nautilus 
at the bottom of the tank may play a key role. Have you noticed that you can move the stones which ornament the tank? The largest rock, however, is too heavy for you to move alone. The podfish may help you, but only if he's in a good mood. I'm not sure, but it seems that Seaman wants a name. Pay close attention to what he says. Would you like to give Seaman a name? Call one of the gillmen and try saying, I will give you a name. The Nautilus has eaten all of the mushroomers. What will happen to it? Observe as the drama unfolds. It is about time to find a new source for Seaman's food. He will direct you. Pay close attention. It is nearing time for the podfish to mate. Observe carefully. The pregnant podfish will soon give birth. Make sure you do not miss this dramatic experience. Soon, you may discover the secret of the ring which hangs from the ceiling. I myself do not know its purpose, as the research notes are unclear in regards to the ring. But while I cannot help you, perhaps Frogman can. I'm not sure, but I think he knows something that even I do not. You may soon obtain something new. Listen carefully to Frogman's words. <coughs> oh well, the cause of death was dehydration. The eggs in the tank have hatched, and eight larvae were born. They are called mushroomers. Have you seen them drifting around? The mushroomers are timid at first, but will soon respond to your tapping by floating toward the sound. You have obtained the insect cage. This will be helpful in raising more food for seaman. Keep your eye on it. Something will happen within shortly. Oh, the spray. The insect cage is equipped with a spray to keep the moisture level up. Please don't forget to use it. You have given a name to one of the gill men. His coloration has changed, so you should be able to locate him easily. Please take good care of him. The gill men have begun to suck each other's blood using the tubes on their heads. Did you notice? The number of gill men has decreased due to natural selection. It seems cruel, but survival of the fittest is an integral part of their lives. Gill man has grown and has developed an appetite for larva. Oh, yes. They have started to produce droppings. The tubes on their heads serve many purposes. Did you notice? The gill man has begun to sprout legs, preparing for the next step in his evolution. Land. However, this tank holds only water at the moment. Changes must be made to facilitate their new appendages. Also, with the addition of legs, this creature can no longer be referred to as gillman. Rather, he'll be referred to as podfish from this point forward. The podfish's legs have completely developed. Did you see the podfish mate? It seems that the tubes atop their heads have even more uses than we thought. However, the male podfish died immediately afterwards. It is unfortunate, but he spent every last bit of energy ensuring the continuation of his species. I'm sure he has no regrets. Responding to the mushroomer's birth, the Nautilus at the bottom of the tank has awakened. Perhaps you should try getting its attention. The impregnated podfish has laid eggs. Congratulations. Its biological duty completed, the podfish is now deceased. Do you recall that when you tried to move the rock, the podfish helped you? While neither you nor seaman can move the rock alone, working together, you were able to move it, if only slightly. Your team effort with the podfish to create dry land was very impressive. Congratulations on a job well done. The podfish emerged onto dry land to lay eggs. However, it expired immediately afterwards. Take good care of the hatchlings as an important life was sacrificed to create them. The eggs have hatched, and new creatures emerged. Due to their appearance, we will call them Tadmen. Did you see the Tadmen sucking each other's blood? It is a terrible battle for survival, but it's a necessary part of their development. <sighs> Nature can be cruel. The Tadmen have developed legs. The Tadmen have developed hands. The Tadmen are now closer in appearance to frogs rather than tadpoles. 
Let us then call them frogmen. The mushroomers are timid at first, but will soon respond to your tapping by floating toward the sound. The frogman has completely metamorphosized into frog form. He may appear somewhat grotesque, but once you get used to him, he looks rather cute. No, really. Ah, you can now use the sprinkler. Frogman is sensitive to dryness, so you must use the sprinkler frequently. Do you notice Frogman trying to reach the ring hanging from the ceiling? Perhaps this holds the key to the next step in Seaman's development. Frogman has discovered freedom in the outdoors and will no longer need you to feed him. However, he is deeply indebted to you for your caregiving, so he will not wander far. If you call, he may yet return. The eggs in the insect cage have hatched into larvae. It is important to raise them carefully. If you put too many larvae into the tank, you may find yourself running out of food for Seaman later. But if you manage the larvae well, you should have no problem keeping Seaman well fed. The larvae have become pupas. Have you noticed that the Nautilus has begun to eat the mushroomers? I wonder what's in store next. Did you see the moth emerge from the cocoon? It is quite amazing. If you missed it, watch your next pupa carefully. A pupa became a moth. A moth laid its eggs. The nautilus has eaten all of the mushroomers. Look closely to observe the effects. Did you see it? The nautilus has become prey to the parasitic mushroomers, and thus the gill men were born. Gill stands for the gills of a fish. So a gill man is a being who breathes underwater. Did you hear the noises that gill man was making? It seems as if he's trying to speak. You can use your microphone to speak to him as well. Do not forget to press the A button while you're speaking into the microphone. Gill man has learned human words. Try speaking to him, if you haven't already. The cause of death was lack of heat. I am sorry to inform you that a death has occurred in the laboratory. I should hope that this will not happen again in the future. It seems you could have been more careful. Listening is a divine gift. You must listen to Seaman to understand what must be done. The cause of death was suffocation. The cause of death was overheating. The cause of death was starvation. Let's see. Last time, however, first a recap of your previous visit. Let's see. Very well. Very well. Also, in addition, ah, yes. Well, I regret to inform you that Seaman has passed away. So much time has passed that even his remains are nowhere to be seen. The sight of an empty tank is distressing, but it is my duty to guide you there. Welcome to the laboratory of Jean-Paul Gasset. You'll witness before you a phenomenon like no other, a man of the sea, Seaman. This legendary creature will be dependent on you for its life's blood. You'll begin right here in Gasset's laboratory. Where is this laboratory? What awaits you within? You have no idea what Seaman is or how it evolves. This is something you must find out for yourself as there is little documentation to help you on your way. My name is Leonard Nimoy, and I will be your guide. Well, this is your first day with the Seaman kit. Your first step will involve preparing the tank for Seaman's arrival. Adjust the tank's settings to be an adequate temperature with sufficient oxygen. While adjusting, keep in mind that blue is the color of the sea, and thus an appropriate color for the care of Seaman. Then take the egg from the storage matrix and place it in the tank. The water's temperature is key to the hatching of the egg. Once hatched, the Nautilus will play a very important role in Seaman's development. Each time you visit this laboratory, I'll be here to offer advice and guidance. If you tire of my voice, you may press the start button to skip at any time. Very well. Let us proceed to the tank. I regret to inform you that all of your mushroomers have died before they were able to evolve. Perhaps you may want to try again, from the beginning. To start over, begin the game while holding down the B button on your controller. It seems that I have been remiss in explaining how to raise the mushroomers. 
In order to prevent a similar misunderstanding next time, here is some advice. When the mushroomers emerge from the egg, use the right trigger to tap on the nautilus at the bottom of the tank. If you continue to tap, the mushroomers will float toward the nautilus. What happens next may surprise you, but do not be alarmed. Your initial visit to the tank was uneventful. Perhaps you should try placing Seaman's egg into the water this time. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Frogman, frogman, gillman, gillman. At the moment, the habitat contains podfish, mushroomers, mushroomer, cadman, cadman. Okay. What do you want? Stop bothering me. Don't you have something else to do? Go away. Leave me alone. Ah, that sounds interesting. No, really, it sounds like a hoot. I already know you're a student, but you also said you work part-time. What's your job? I already know you're a student, but you also said you work part-time. What's your job? Ah, yes, they have been around for a long time, haven't they? Must be nice to have an arcade in your house. You don't know if you're attractive, is that right? I thought you just said that you're not sure if you're attractive. Let's try this again. Do you think you're attractive or not? So you're not sure if others think you're attractive. Is that right? Didn't you just tell me that you don't know? Let's try again. Do you think people find you attractive or not? Come on, I'm sick here. Let me go. Oh, oh, I'm going to hurl. Do I grab you when you are ill? Really? Ow! Is that how you treat an invalid? Hey, quit it, you big bully. I'm not feeling good. Stop it. Is that any way to treat a sick individual? <laughs> I'm really not feeling good. <laughs> uh, oh, oh, I'm, I'm going to throw up if you don't watch out. <laughs> oh, I think I feel something coming up. <laughs> you should have let go earlier, you know. Now it's too hot in here. Now look what you've done. It's too hot in here. Quit with the heater earlier next time. I'm bored. I'm bored. Ow! Ow! Ah, this is intolerable. <laughs> no thanks, I'm not hungry now. No thanks, I'm still full. I'm still full. Are you trying to fatten me for slaughter? Okay, let's give this a shot then. All right, I'll give you a hand. Okay, let's go. I'm pooped. Let's try again tomorrow. I'm still tired from that last push. Patience is a virtue, my friend. Give me a minute here. I'm exhausted. Again? Come on, I need a little rest. Oi, my back. Maybe a little later. Ugh. We'll give this another go in a bit. Wait a little longer. My limbs feel like they're going to pop off if I don't recuperate first. I'll be ready to try this again in a little bit, I think. Just a little bit of rest, then we can try this again. What do you say we rest up for a second, huh? I'm not used to this sort of manual labor. It moved a little bit. I think something's going to happen if we move this rock all the way. Okay, good start. Let's take a break. Nice. A few more of those and we'll be on our way. There you go. Fine. Now you go next. Ah, asking you shall receive. Here you are. Your turn. Progress. It smells sweet, doesn't it? Remember to share. Okay, just be sure to save some for later. Really, there's nothing like a Big fatty is there. Eat this. Here's something for you to chew on. Tell me if it tastes funny, why don't you? All right. 
Just don't eat it all at once. Remember to chew. Great. Now everyone will want one. This will go great with your outfit. Ah, uh, yes, I'm beginning to understand you much better. My head feels so much clearer. Wow. That's one complicated home life you've got there. That's today. I hope you've planned something nice. I see. You enjoy films where people take advantage of pastries. Hmm. That's very telling. Really? Hmm. I really need to get something set up in here one of these days. Hey, you. You. Listen to me. To see man. Come closer and watch. Maybe you'll learn something. Ooh la la. She is hot. Perfect for a sea man like me. What? Stop staring at me. You're surrounded by games. Go play some. Go. I mean, you must at least be interested in issues like your children's education. Am I right? All right, I'll help you with the rock then. You want to move the rock, eh? Well, if you want my help, you're going to have to answer my riddle first. All right, it's quiz time again. It's quiz time again. If you answer correctly, I'll give you a hand with the rock. Ready? Okay, let's try this again, shall we? Here's my next question. All right, here's another one. Okay, here's a really easy one. All right, so this is your last chance, and you have to get this question right, or else this just isn't going to work out. Now tell me, if a human types 60 words a minute for 8 hours a day, 6 days a week, what does it have after 7 months? Tell me, how many lives does a cat get? If you put a blue lamp next to a yellow lamp in a room with white walls, what color will the walls be? If a man yells for 7 days straight and his pitch raises an octave every 3 hours, what does he have at the end of the week? What do you have if you put a cat in a fishbowl? How many tentacles does an octopus have? Is there such a thing as life after death? Very good. You're smarter than I thought, human. You asked someone, didn't you? That's right. You've tried this before, I'll take it. Correct. Very good. Right you are. Well, that was an easy one, wasn't it? Your guess is as good as mine. Nope. Sorry, the correct answer was carpal tunnel syndrome. No, the answer is one. Nine lives is a myth, my dear. Sorry, the answer is white. No, he's got a sore throat. Wouldn't you? Nope. The answer is a drowned cat. Sorry, the answer is eight. This is something you really should know, you realize. Rabbit. Rat. Okay. I asked you this before, but it seems you had an attitude problem the last time. Let's try this again. You know, let us revisit my last inquiry to you. That is, if you can cooperate this time. <clears throat> Previously, I had a question for you. Now, what was it? Oh, yes. So that question I asked you before, I... Oh, yes. Let's try that last question I had for you before again, shall we? Okay. Before I had a question for you, it was... <clears throat> I had a question for you before, and what was it? Oh, right. So you think you're up to answering my question now? What I wanted to know was... Okay, I've been waiting patiently for you to think about my last question. Can you give me the answer, please? You've forgotten, haven't you? Okay, then again. So, are you up to answering my question now? What I wanted to know was... Okay, let's try this again, shall we? Back to my previous question. <clears throat> Let me ask this again, and this time I'd appreciate an answer. Okay, hey, I... Asked you this before, but... <clears throat> Ready to try this question again? Okay. 
I'm going to ask you this question again, and I want an answer this time. I know I asked you this before, but... Rooster, let's try this again. It's really not a difficult question. Come on, stay with me here. Okay, one more time. You must be drunk again. Just answer the question once more with feeling. Let me repeat the question. Let me start over. Seriously, I want to know. Perhaps you didn't understand the question. Welcome to the laboratory of Jean-Paul Gasset. My name is Leonard Nimoy. I will be your guide. Here it comes. <laughs> Hotter than hell in here, hell in here, 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 here it comes. I know you can't tell, but I'm sweating my ass off in here, here it comes. Sheep. Snake. Why must you always hurt me like this? You know, that would actually be insulting if I weren't the only one of us who could spell it. Bite me. I know you are, but what am I? Oh, such stinging words. Oh, how will I recover? I know if I read between the lines, you're really saying you love me. Your mama. Listen, I'll climb out of this tank and kick your ass, so help me. Sticks and stones, monkey face. If you're trying to hit on me, it isn't working. Do you kiss your mother with that mouth? Well, someone's got a fresh mouth. Pipe down, youngster, or I'll give you a slap. Hey, how about you shut your pie hole? You know, I don't appreciate that kind of language, ass face. I never should have taught you hairless apes how to talk. Quiet, you yard ape. Don't make me pull this tank over. Somebody needs a lesson in etiquette. Miss Manners would not approve. Has your controller been disconnected? This memory card does not contain saved Seaman data. Would you like to create new data? Your data has been damaged. May I erase it? This memory card already contains saved Seaman data. This data will be deleted, and a new habitat will be created. All previous data will be lost and cannot be recovered. Do you wish to proceed? This memory card contains an outdated Seaman habitat. This data will be deleted, and a new habitat will be created. Do you wish to proceed? Would you like to save and end the session? The time setting of the Dreamcast internal clock does not match the time setting of your Seaman Habitat file. The time setting of the Dreamcast internal clock may be incorrect. Please adjust it if necessary. Please check to make sure that your microphone is connected. There are not enough free blocks on the memory card. There is no memory card connected. No Seaman data can be found. Please find the memory card with your Seaman data and insert it into expansion socket 1 of your controller. This memory card contains a VMU game. In order to set up Seaman, we must load the Seaman VMU game. Please delete the other VMU game or insert a different memory card. Tiger, what the hell is going on out there? Quiet. Hey, why all the noise? Hey, settle down there. What's all that racket? Oh, you almost gave me a heart attack. Whoa, keep it down. Are you trying to break my... thing that allows me to hear? Let's take it down a notch, huh? You don't have to yell, you know. I can hear you just fine without you shouting. Yes, I hear that is a natural thing for you humans, but I'd really prefer to have nothing to do with it if it's all the same to you. 
Thanks. Oh, big surprise at the end. Big whoop. Now what I've got hiding in my butt, that's a surprise. Hmm, Baton Rouge. Isn't there a spice maker around here? Seasoned worms might be nice one of these days. Mmm, tastes like ketchup. Hmm, not very discriminating, are we? Oh, well, fire. Sorry, fire was an important discovery, but not what I'm thinking of. Say, that rich guy in Seattle didn't happen to pay you to say that, did he? Never mind, just curious. I bet you just joined that party for all the reggae music they play at the rallies. Rockford, eh? You guys rock. I always seem to visit with you during the late night hours. You're not my conscience by any chance, are you? Yes, it's truly the music of the human spirit. Such fire, such passion. Or am I talking about sailors again? Oh, well, I would have liked to have met that L. Ron guy, but alas, it was not meant to be. Wiffle? Ah, uh, yes, the game that makes every kid feel like a pro. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, really, I want to know. Come on, spit it out. I don't have all day. Hello? Answer me. When I ask you something, I expect an answer. I asked you a question. It's pretty rude not to answer me, you know. Answer the question, please. I need an answer from you. I wouldn't have asked if I didn't want to know. What do you say? Answer me, please. Earth to fuzzy. Earth to fuzzy. Come in, Fuzzy. I'm waiting. Give me an answer already. You who I need your answer. Answer me. I know mammals are slow, but I need an answer already. Come on, speak up. Don't be shy now. I can't carry on a conversation by myself, you know. See, when I ask a question, you're supposed to answer it. Let me know if I'm going too fast for you. What? What? I can't hear you. Until I've fully mastered mind reading, please talk out loud. Speaking of answers, what's yours? Contrary to popular belief, silence is not golden. Now what's your answer? Hey, I'm talking to you. What do you say? I hate it when there's an awkward pause in the conversation, so... Give me your answer. Come on, answer the question. Stop being so difficult and tell me already. I'm starting to lose my patience, so just answer the damned question. Hey, wake up. I asked you a question. This silent act of yours is really starting to piss me off. Hey, when somebody asks you a question, you answer it. Unless your tongue has swollen like a sausage and immobilized your mouth, I expect an answer. So, what's your answer? I'd probably understand your answer better if you moved your lips and sound came out. I'm very sorry to hear that. Death can be very frightening, but it's very natural as well. Everybody's going to die eventually, and a person's mortality can be frightening. Rest assured that the more mature you become, the less afraid of death you will probably be. Also, realize that the person you loved is elsewhere now, away from the painful turmoil we deal with day to day. I hope that's some sort of consolation, at least. I'm very sorry to hear that. Death can be very frightening, but it's very natural as well. Everybody's going to die eventually, and a person's mortality can be very frightening. Rest assured that the more mature you become, the less afraid of death you will probably be. Also, realize that the person you loved is elsewhere now away from the painful turmoil we deal with day to day. I hope that's some sort of consolation, at least. Okay, now let's try this again. Is everyone alive? Yes or no? Well, is everyone alive, at least? I'm sorry about that. It must be scary. Well, I'll comfort you for a little while with my charming wit and my seductive smile. But after that, you've got to make some calls, okay? 
Okay then. Well, that's good at least. I'm glad to hear it. Don't joke about this, okay? Tell me coherently this time. What's bothering you? I'm sorry about that. Is everybody okay? Well, I would think that would be your first course of action here to find out. Wouldn't you? I see. Well, if you don't mind me saying, there is a world of other things you can be focusing your energies on than the follicles on your head. After all, I don't have any hair, yet I am perfectly content. Well, most of the time, at least. You're bored? Don't sit here and talk to me, then. Get out there and have some adventures. The world is a very interesting place, you see. You get picked on. Well, maybe you should think about it. It doesn't matter what people at school say. There's nothing wrong with telling on somebody who's hurting you. Believe me, I know. You're not making any sense. Just tell me. Have you told anyone about getting picked on? Yes or no? Have you told anyone about this? Aren't you too old to let yourself get bullied? Stand up for yourself, landlubber. It'll do wonders for your self-confidence. If you don't, then I'll have to, and believe me, I'm not a pretty sight when I get mad. Well, I hope they're going to do something about this sometime soon. And if they don't, then maybe you should tell someone who can do more about it. I don't like the thought of my little friend getting messed with, you see. Well, maybe you should give it a try. Perhaps he just needs to know he's loved and supported to recognize his problems. Or maybe he doesn't even know it's a problem. Either way, you should probably let him know that you care. But gently. It's not a complicated question. Have you told him how you feel about what he's doing? Yes or no? Your father passed away? You're upset because of your father? Don't joke about this, okay? Tell me again, what's going on with your father? Yes, humans often get sick, and that is a fact of life. Just be sure to take care of him as best you can. I heard chicken soup is a good thing, for example. I know, I know. Family members can be so frustrating sometimes, can't they? I don't really understand how humans expect to get into each other's heads. I mean, each individual is constantly drawing from their own very private experiences, and yet they always assume they know each other. It's ridiculous. And then one day you might realize that a person that you thought you loved was actually a person you made up in your head. My poor human, you must realize that in order to be happy with another person, you must learn to love his faults, too. After all, he is your father. He's out of a job, is he? Well, this sounds like the perfect opportunity for him to recognize just how much you love him by supporting him and feeding him just like he probably did for you for so many years. So get yourself a job and get going. What's going on with your dad? I see. And have you told him how you feel about this? You lost someone close to you? Don't joke about this, okay? Tell me again, what's bothering you? If you ask me, money is just a system that humans created to measure the worth of material items. It's merely a ruler that measures value, not something you should get all worked up over. Even if you're down and out financially, Believe me, there's always a way to get what you need. Name-calling won't get you anywhere, you know. Why don't you take a deep breath and then tell me what's wrong? Without the derogatory preface, okay? Now breathe in. Now breathe out. Okay, now let's try this again. What's the matter? I'm sorry you feel that way. But think of it this way. You've succeeded in raising me, a happy, healthy, and terribly dashing sea man. It can't be all that bad, can it? Ah, yes, there's nothing like family to create anxiety, is there? Well, if it makes you feel any better, sea man will be all the family you need. 
I can be very supportive, you know. Oh, you're probably just saying that because it's your birthday, aren't you? The thing is, your mortality's there at all times, no matter how old you are. Ah, mortality threatens you, does it? You shouldn't worry about that sort of thing. After all, your mortality will be there at all times, regardless of your age. Besides, at your age, you've got a very long ways to go before you should even consider wrinkles, let alone getting old. Besides, you're at such a wonderful age, you should be taking advantage of how new and exciting everything is, and not when it will all be over. Besides, you're in the prime of your life. You should be discovering all sorts of interesting things about yourself and the world around you, not dwelling on something you can't do a whole lot about. Besides, you're at a great time of your life. You should be enjoying all the wonderful things around you, not dwelling on something you know you can't do a whole lot about. Oh, you probably get this way every year around your birthday, don't you? The thing is, your mortality's there at all times, no matter how old you are. Once in a while, you see a part of your friends that really shocks you, huh? Yes, it happens. Humans have a lot of facets to their personalities. I think most human relationships are based on seeing just a few of those facets. So when you see a part of a person you never knew was there, it can be really shocking. That's just the way it is, I think. The future, eh? Well, I'm glad this is something you're thinking about, even if it is causing you some anxiety. Most people don't think ahead two days, let alone about things to come beyond that. Just know that whatever decision you make, it will be the best one. Have faith in yourself and nothing will go wrong. Ah, uh, I'm sorry, Fuzzy. I'm sure you'll find someone sometime. You just have to get out there and not look too desperate. I hear that can be a real killer. I've also heard that when you're not looking, that's when you'll find it. It might be worth a shot if you know what I mean. Wait a minute. Are you saying you have a boyfriend now? Hmm... I see. Your wife must be pleased. Your husband must be pleased. So what happened with your boyfriend then? Did you get in a fight? Hmm, I see. Your girlfriend must be pleased. So what happened with your boyfriend then? Did you get in a fight? Hmm, I see. Nice of you to tell me. So what happened with your boyfriend, then? Did you get in a fight? Oh, I'm sorry. But you know. Okay, now you're not making any sense. Now tell me, are you seeing a male of your species romantically? Yes or no? Wait a minute, I thought you said you preferred females. Are you saying you're romantically involved with a male of your species? Hmm, I see. Nice of you to tell me. So go on, then. What's going on with your boyfriend? Did you get in a fight? You're not making a lot of sense, Fuzzy. Just tell me this. Do you or do you not have a boyfriend? Yes or no? Wait a minute. Are you saying you have a girlfriend now? So, what happened with your girlfriend, then? Did you get in a fight? Hmm, I see. Your boyfriend must be pleased. So, what happened with your girlfriend, then? Did you get in a fight? Hmm, I see. Nice of you to tell me. So, what happened with your girlfriend, then? Did you get in a fight? Wait a minute. I thought you said you preferred men. Are you saying you're romantically involved with a female of your species? Hmm, I see. Nice of you to tell me. So go on, then. What's going on with your girlfriend? Did you get in a fight? Okay, now you're not making any sense. Now tell me, are you seeing a female of your species romantically? Yes or no? So this is about your ex? Well, what happened with your ex then? Don't worry, friend. 
the pain will fade in time. Just rest assured that there's a sea man who cares for you very much. I'll keep you warm at night, sugar pie. Are you telling me you had a girlfriend you didn't tell me about? Are you telling me you had a boyfriend you didn't tell me about? Yes, a commitment can be hard sometimes, can't it? Just remember that it's just what it is, a commitment. This isn't something you can just walk away from, you know. Having second thoughts, are you? Well, maybe you should take some time to think about what you really want. Don't get yourself into something you might want to back out of. It's a scary thing, isn't it? Well, don't stress too much about it. Just go with your heart and things will be fine. Yes, amour can certainly be frustrating, can't it? Just know that you're not alone. In fact, I'll bet that there's several million people out there right at this very second who have the exact same complaint. You're not making a lot of sense, Fuzzy. Just tell me this. Do you or do you not have a girlfriend? Yes or no? Wait a minute. Are you talking about your boyfriend? You were confusing me. Last I heard, same-sex marriages weren't, uh, recognized. Not that I agree, but... Anyway, tell me what's going on with your boyfriend. Did you get in a fight? Hmm, I see. Nice of you to tell me. So, what happened with your husband, then? Did you get in a fight? You're not making a lot of sense, Fuzzy. Let's start again. What's troubling you? What's wrong, Fuzzy? Wait a minute. Are you talking about your girlfriend? You were confusing me. Last I heard, same-sex marriages weren't, uh, recognized. Not that I agree, but... Anyway, tell me what's going on with your girlfriend. Did you get in a fight? Wait a minute. Are you saying you're married now? Hmm, I see. Nice of you to tell me. So, what happened with your wife, then? Did you get in a fight? You're not making a lot of sense, Fuzzy. Just tell me this. Did you get married? Yes or no? You're not making a lot of sense, Fuzzy. Just tell me this. Are you married now, yes or no? So, what else is new? But seriously, why should that bother you? It's part of what identifies you and makes you special, just like every other part of you does, too. And I'll bet your boyfriend likes it just fine. And I'll bet your girlfriend likes it just fine. Besides, those little quirks of yours are what make you who you are. You shouldn't be ashamed of them. Okay, now you're not making sense. Let's try this again. What's bothering you? You're attracted to other men? You're attracted to other women? Well, I don't think that's anything to be ashamed of. And don't let your religion or anyone else tell you otherwise. And don't let anyone tell you otherwise. There are lots of different types of people out there, you know. In fact, I'd say that for every existing person, there's a different kind of person since you're all so unique and interesting. And there's nothing wrong with that, is there? Just don't take too long figuring yourself out. There's a certain someone out there who cares about you a lot, and I think they deserve the truth, or at least to be set free if the truth might be too painful for them. Okay, now you're not making sense. Let's try this again. What's bothering you? Hey, if you're not feeling well, go see a doctor. You're the only one that can take care of yourself, you know. And besides, you need to take care of me, too. Okay, I guess I can wait. Just let me know when you want to talk again. <laughs> I'm sorry, my friend. Just know that there's a lot of other people out there who care about you. Like me, for instance. You're upset because of your mother? Your mother passed away? Don't joke about this, okay? Tell me again, what's going on with your mother? Yes, humans often get sick, and that is a fact of life. 
Just be sure to take care of her as best you can. I heard chicken soup is a good thing, for example. I know, I know. Family members can be so frustrating sometimes, can't they? I don't really understand how humans expect to get into each other's heads. I mean, each individual is constantly drawing from their own very private experiences, and yet they always assume they know each other. It's ridiculous. And then one day you might realize that a person that you thought you loved was actually a person you made up in your head. My poor human, you must realize that in order to be happy with another person, you must learn to love her faults, too. After all, she is your mother. She's out of a job, is she? Well, this sounds like the perfect opportunity for her to recognize just how much you love her by supporting her and feeding her, just like she probably did for you for so many years. So get yourself a job and get going. I can't say I understand it. Why do humans feel the need to hurt each other so much? Better yet, why does a perfectly good human such as yourself take this kind of abuse? You should take a step back and ask yourself if it's really worth it. You're old enough to make a decision about this, you know. You should talk to a teacher or the authorities about this. This is serious stuff, you know. What's going on with your mother? It can be difficult to communicate with a different generation, can't it? For example, even I have problems understanding you sometimes. I know it's not fun to think about, but most humans will be known to spar occasionally. A spat every once in a while is natural. What matters is that you listen to each other and try to work out your problems. Communication is the key. Well, maybe you should give it a try. Perhaps she just needs to know she's loved and supported to recognize her problems. Or maybe she doesn't even know it's a problem. Either way, you should probably let her know you care, but gently. It's not a complicated question. Have you told her how you feel about what she's doing? Yes or no? I see. And have you told her how you feel about this? Hmm... Well, I know this isn't easy to hear, but sometimes people need to learn their own lessons and all the talking in the world won't set them straight. Just be as supportive as you can be. That's all you can really do now. Oh, I see. Maybe you shouldn't alarm me like that then. <laughs> I'm very sorry to hear that. Death can be very frightening, but it's very natural as well. Everybody's going to die eventually, and mortality can be frightening. Rest assured that the more mature you become, the less afraid of death you will probably be. Also realize that the animal you loved is somewhere else now, away from the painful turmoil we deal with day to day. I hope that's some sort of consolation, at least. What happened to your pet? I'm sorry to hear that. If it makes you feel better, though, I'm sure your animal's life with you has been much longer and more fulfilling than it would have been in the wild, say. I'm sorry to hear that. Loss like that can be pretty upsetting, can't it? For example, if I went away, I'm sure you'd be devastated. Yes, I know you would. Yes, sometimes animals do that sort of thing. Just be patient. Don't hurt your little friend. Animals don't understand that kind of behavior. Just try to talk a little sense into it. I'm sure it'll understand. Oh, I see. Well, I'm sorry to hear that. Let me know if there's anything I can do. Come on, is something the matter? You can tell me. I know something's bothering you. Just tell me if it's the same thing as before. Is something bothering you, little one? What's wrong, Fuzzy? Is it the same thing as last time? Well, I would definitely recommend that you do. I've got to watch out for you. I'm starting to care a lot about you, you see. That's horrible. Have you talked with the authorities? That's good. 
I hope that jerk gets it. I've got to watch out for you. I'm starting to care a lot about you, you see. Oh, okay. What's going on, then? Okay, just let me know what's on your mind, all right? Okay, just let me know what's on your mind, all right? You poor little biped. These anxieties haunt you so. It sounds like you need to come up with your own ways to cope, some sort of closure to your situation. Perhaps you should get out of the house a little. Take a stroll, maybe, to help you clear your mind. Are you feeling lonely? Well, I'm here for you. That should count for something, right? But maybe you should get out a little more. Take a walk. Get some hot cocoa. You're bound to meet some new friends if you put yourself out there. Your boyfriend has passed away? Your boyfriend likes other guys? Is it your boyfriend? Did you have a fight? So what happened? You broke up? He hurt you? Ugh. There's nothing worse than an unclean human, if you ask me. Have you told him this bothers you? Really? Are you going to keep seeing each other? Did you break up? I know it's not fun to think about, but all humans, when in close quarters with one another, will be known to spar occasionally. A spat every once in a while is natural. What matters is that you listen to each other and try to work out your problems. Communication is the key. Then again, if you're fighting a lot, it might also be good to take a step back and examine if it's a relationship worth maintaining. If you can't support each other, and if there's more bad stuff than good stuff, then maybe it's time to move on. You're not making sense. What's going on with you and your boyfriend? I'm sorry, that's very hard to go through. Just remember, although it may not seem to matter now, it will. There are always other fish in the sea. Like me, for example. It's always sad to feel misunderstood, isn't it? But if you think about it, how on earth could two humans, both drawing from entirely different experiences, ever truly understand each other? Just be assured that Seaman understands. I know, I know. Other people can be so frustrating sometimes, can't they? I don't really understand how humans expect to get into each other's heads. I mean, each individual is constantly drawing from their own very private experiences, and then when they meet someone and spend a little time with them, they think they know them. It's ridiculous. And then one day you might realize that a person that you thought you loved was actually a person you made up in your head. My poor dear, you must realize that in order to be happy with another person, you must learn to love their faults, too. And if you can't do that, then perhaps it wasn't meant to be? Don't joke about this, okay? Tell me again, what's going on with your boyfriend? I can't say I understand it. Why do humans feel the need to hurt each other so much? Better yet, why does a perfectly good human such as yourself take this kind of abuse? You should take a step back and ask yourself if it's really worth it. I'm sorry to hear that. You haven't exactly been the perfect mate either, you know. I hope you don't mind me saying this, but it sounds like the two of you have a lot of issues to work on. Maybe it's about time you reevaluate your relationship. After all, every relationship should base itself around honesty and respect, neither of which it sounds like either of you have much for each other. You should think about why you're in this and if it's for the right reasons. I'm sorry to hear that. I know you've probably heard this a million times before, but the sex industry can have adverse effects on a relationship. I'm not saying it's all right what he's done to you, but it takes two to tango. Something to keep in mind at any rate. And let me know if you want me to break his kneecaps. I hear that can hurt quite a bit. That's horrible. I hope you don't mind me saying this, but it sounds as if the two of you have a lot of issues to work on. Maybe it's about time you reevaluate your relationship. 
After all, every relationship should base itself around honesty and respect, neither of which I suspect he has much for you. You should think about why you're in this and if it's for the right reasons. Do you think that's the reason for your little... indiscretions? I see. I just hope you realize that sneaking around isn't going to solve all of your problems. What you have to do is communicate. Let him know how you feel. And I guess his response will tell you which direction you should go from there. It's tough not to feel like the most important thing to the one you love. That's a key reason to be with someone, isn't it? But sometimes you've got to take a step in his shoes. He probably doesn't mean to push you aside. Just let him know how you feel in a non-accusing manner. But ask him how he feels first. Then he'll really listen. So what else is new? No, seriously, what's going on with you and your boyfriend? It's never a good thing to feel duped, is it? I hope you've said something. Humans often lie and don't think about the repercussions, that they might be hurting somebody. It's important for a person to know the consequences of their actions or they'll just keep repeating them. Of course, if he knows how you feel and this isn't his first time, I'd say get rid of him. Oh dear, is his romantic performance the worst problem between the two of you? If so, you've got it pretty easy. Now really, if he's not doing a good job, then train him at it. And if he can't be trained, focus his attentions on something else that will please you. There's got to be something he can do. Name-calling won't get you anywhere, you know. With him or with me. Why don't you take a deep breath and then tell me what's wrong? Without the derogatory preface, okay? Now breathe in. Now breathe out. Okay, let's try this again. What's going on with you and your boyfriend? I'm very sorry to hear that. Just be brave. That's all you can really do right now, isn't it? If it will help, I'll say a little prayer. All right? Just hang in there and keep yourself healthy and strong. That's really the best thing. I see. I'm very sorry about that. Let me know if you need me to knock a little sense into him. I'm very sorry to hear that. Well, obviously, if there's a lack of love, then it's probably time to sit down and figure out if this is really worth it. Maybe you'll discover that it is, but that you just have problems you need to work on. Either way, at least you should put some thought into it, don't you think? I see. That is tough to deal with, isn't it? But perhaps you might want to consider your own actions and how they might influence his. After all, if he sees you entertaining your own vices, he might not think his vices are any more harmful. I see. That is tough to deal with, isn't it? I think what you have to do is determine how much his behavior affects your life. And if it's a lot and it's all negative, then you should reconsider the relationship. After all, you can't change a person. They can only change themselves. You haven't? How do you expect him to do anything about it if you don't? I'm sorry, but guys don't always understand subtlety. Sometimes you've got to shove it in his face, but delicately so you don't hurt his feelings. I'm sorry, but guys don't always understand subtlety. Sometimes you've got to shove it in his face, but delicately so that you don't hurt his feelings. Well, maybe leaving little hints around the house might be beneficial. Or hosing him down. Either one. Well, maybe leaving little hints in his backpack might be beneficial. Or hosing him down. Either one. Well, maybe leaving little hints around his house might be beneficial. Or hosing him down. Either one. I see. That certainly seems unfair, doesn't it? Well, if talking to him doesn't help, then perhaps you should focus solely on yourself and your own needs. If that doesn't clue him in, at least you might not feel quite so used. I see. 
Do you help him with his chores? You don't help him, but you want him to help you? I can't say that sounds very fair, but perhaps there's more to this situation. I certainly hope there is. Well, that certainly seems unfair, doesn't it? If talking to him doesn't help, then perhaps you should stop helping him to do his chores. If that doesn't clue him in, at least you might not feel so used. That's tough. Sometimes boys have a hard time understanding a girl's need for her own space. You should let him know that you care about him and that wanting time for yourself doesn't mean you don't like him. Unless, of course, you don't. That's tough. Sometimes men have a hard time understanding a woman's need for space. To you, maybe you just need time for yourself. You should let him know that you care about him and that wanting time for yourself doesn't necessarily mean you don't like him. Unless, of course, you don't. That's tough. Sometimes a person can have a hard time understanding another person's need for his own space. You should let him know that you care about him and that wanting time for yourself doesn't mean you don't like him. Unless, of course, you don't. That's tough. Sometimes a person can have a hard time understanding another person's need for space. To you, maybe you just need time for yourself. You should let him know that you care about him, and that wanting time for yourself doesn't necessarily mean you don't like him. Unless, of course, you don't. Ugh. There's nothing worse than an unclean human, if you ask me. Have you told him this bothers you? Well, I won't lie to you. Long-distance relationships are extremely difficult. But then again, if you can pass this test, you're probably truly meant for each other. You might not subscribe to that theory, but I'm allowed to have my own opinions, aren't I? Of course I am. Well, I think it's about time you found out, don't you? Maybe you should go talk to him. I'll wait. Hmm. Well, you know, if a person is gay, they're not likely to change. Maybe you should get some distance and see what happens. If this is just a phase, that's how you'll probably find out. Just remember that his sexual preference doesn't have anything to do with you or your sexuality. It doesn't. And although it may not seem to matter now, it will. There are always other fish in the sea, and those fish might appreciate your femininity. You're not making any sense. Are you or are you not breaking up with your boyfriend? Yes or no? Hmm. I'm sorry, that's very hard to go through. But you have to remember that this sort of thing is often more biological than anything. Don't think it has anything to do with you or your sexuality. It doesn't. And although it may not seem to matter now, it will. There are always other fish in the sea, and those fish might appreciate your femininity. It can be difficult to communicate with a different generation, can't it? For example, even I have problems understanding you sometimes. Don't worry, though. The older she gets, the more she'll understand. Ah, they do grow up so quickly, don't they? You have to understand that she's becoming her own self right now and that this sort of thing to her is most likely a mark of her individuality. I'm not endorsing it, mind you, but just be sensitive to it. Then maybe she'll be more inclined to listen. I see. That is tough to deal with, isn't it? But let me ask you this. Have you really talked with her about this sort of thing? Well, how can you expect a child to know what's right and what's wrong if you've never broached the subject? It might be a little late to not sound preachy at this point, but I don't think it would hurt things to share your feelings, but gently. It's the least you can do. Hmm... Well, you know those crazy kids. Probably just being rebellious. I know it's hard, but maybe you should try a different approach. Let her know how you feel about the subject, but don't be too preachy. You have to understand that she's becoming her own self right now, and that this sort of thing to her 
is most likely a mark of her individuality. I'm not endorsing it, mind you, but just be sensitive to it. Then maybe she'll be more inclined to listen. Ah, the joy of being a child, eh? Knowing children, your little one probably wants you to butt out. Am I right? Well, that's just like a kid now, isn't it? It's only natural, though. Kids need to learn to fend for themselves, just like any animal in the wild. And just like a mother in the wild, perhaps you should get in there and kick some butt. Just a word of advice, however. If you want your daughter to appreciate your efforts, make sure she never finds out about them. It's complicated but effective. Well, that's just like a kid now, isn't it? It's only natural, though. Kids need to learn to fend for themselves, just like any animal in the wild. And just like a father in the wild, perhaps you should get in there and kick some butt. Just a word of advice, however. If you want your daughter to appreciate your efforts, make sure she never finds out about them. It's complicated but effective. Then what are you doing? Get in there and kick some butt. What do you think you've been put on this planet for, to sit around and play your kids' video games? Get on it. Just answer the question. Does your little girl want you to butt out? Yes or no? Your daughter passed away? If it'll help, I'll say a little prayer for her. All right? Don't joke about this, okay? Tell me again what's going on with your girl. I see. I'm sorry about that. Let me know if you need me to, um, well, I guess there's not a lot I can do from here, but I'll try to think of something. Is it about your daughter? What happened? I know you've probably put a lot of importance on your daughter's academic life, and that isn't a bad thing. Just be aware that if her scholastic career appears to be slipping, there's probably something else going on. For example, how is your home life? Just hang in there and keep yourself healthy and strong. That's really the best thing you can do for her. Yes, children often get sick, and that is a fact of life. Just be sure to take care of her as best you can. I heard chicken soup is a good thing, for example. Well, it must be something else, then. If it's not social, perhaps it's physical. Always something to consider at any rate. That's what I thought. And that's probably the cause of the problem. Maybe you should try to clear things up on the home front before you place any blame. Well, maybe you should look into it a bit. A deficiency in the scholastic department could mean all sorts of things, whether they're social, physical, or whatnot. I know that must be tough, but it doesn't sound like a huge problem to me. If anything, this sort of thing should bring you closer together. That is, if you're able to trust that she can take care of herself and maybe even get over your own biases. Just keep in mind that as a parent, it's your duty to love her no matter what. It's true, you know. So, what's going on with your son? So, what's going on with your daughter? What's going on with your eldest? Your girlfriend has passed away? Your girlfriend likes other girls? Is it about your girlfriend? She hurt you? Oh. There's nothing worse than an unclean human, if you ask me. Have you told her this bothers you? You're not making sense. What's going on with you and your girlfriend? I'm sorry. That's very hard to go through. Just remember, although it may not seem to matter now, it will. There are always other fish in the sea. For example, I have a very attractive cousin. But maybe it's too soon for that. I know, I know. Other people can be so frustrating sometimes, can't they? I don't really understand how humans expect to get into each other's heads. I mean, each individual is constantly drawing from their own very private experiences, and then when they meet someone and spend a little time with them, they think they know them. It's ridiculous. 
and then one day you might realize that a person you thought you loved was actually a person you made up in your head. My poor friend, you must realize that in order to be happy with another person, you must learn to love her faults, too. And if you can't do that, then perhaps it wasn't meant to be. Don't joke about this, okay? Tell me again what's going on with your girlfriend. I'm sorry to hear that. I know you've probably heard this a million times before, but the sex industry can have adverse effects on a relationship. I'm not saying it's all right what she's done to you, but it takes two to tango. Something to keep in mind at any rate. That's horrible. I hope you don't mind me saying this, but it sounds as if the two of you have a lot of issues to work on. Maybe it's about time you reevaluate your relationship. After all, every relationship should base itself around honesty and respect, neither of which I suspect she has much for you. You should think about why you're in this and if it's for the right reasons. I see. I just hope you realize that sneaking around isn't going to solve any of your problems. What you have to do is communicate. Let her know how you feel. And I guess her response will tell you which direction you should go from there. It's tough not to feel like the most important thing to the one you love. That's a key reason to be with someone, isn't it? But sometimes you've got to take a step in her shoes. She probably doesn't mean to push you aside. Just let her know how you feel in a non-accusing manner. But ask her how she feels first. Then she'll really listen. So what else is new? No, seriously, what's going on with you and your girlfriend? It's never a good thing to feel duped, is it? I hope you've said something. Humans often lie and don't think about the repercussions that they might be hurting somebody. It's important for a person to know the consequences of their actions or they'll just keep repeating them. Of course, if she knows how you feel and this isn't her first time, I'd say get rid of her. Oh dear, is her romantic performance the worst problem between the two of you? If so, you've got it pretty easy. Now really, if she's not doing a good job, then train her at it. And if she can't be trained, focus her attentions on something else that will please you. There's got to be something she can do. Name-calling won't get you anywhere, you know, with her or with me. Why don't you take a deep breath and then tell me what's wrong, without the derogatory preface, okay? Now breathe in. Now breathe out. Okay, now let's try this again. What's going on with you and your girlfriend? Don't joke about this, okay? Tell me again what's going on with your girlfriend. I see. I'm sorry about that. Let me know if you need me to give her a piece of my mind. I see. That is tough to deal with, isn't it? But perhaps you might want to consider your own actions and how they might influence hers. After all, if she sees you entertaining your own vices, she might not think her vices are any more harmful. I see. That is tough to deal with, isn't it? I think what you have to do is determine how much her behavior affects your life. And if it's a lot, and if it's all negative, then you should reconsider the relationship. After all, you can't change a person. They can only change themselves. You haven't? How do you expect her to do anything about it if you don't? I'm sorry, but girls don't always understand subtlety. Sometimes you've got to shove it in her face, but delicately so that you don't hurt her feelings. You haven't? How do you expect her to do anything about it if you don't? I'm sorry, but women don't always understand subtlety. Sometimes you've got to shove it in her face, but delicately so that you don't hurt her feelings. I'm sorry, but... Girls don't always understand subtlety. Sometimes you've got to shove it in her face, but delicately so that you don't hurt her feelings. I'm sorry, but women don't always understand subtlety. Sometimes you've got to shove it in her face, but 
delicately so that you don't hurt her feelings. Well, maybe leaving little hints around the house might be beneficial. Or hosing her down. Either one. Well, maybe leaving little hints in her purse might be beneficial. Or hosing her down. Either one. Well, maybe leaving little hints around her house might be beneficial. Or hosing her down. Either one. I see. That certainly seems unfair, doesn't it? Well, if talking to her doesn't help, then perhaps you should focus solely on yourself and your own needs. If that doesn't clue her in, at least you might not feel quite so used. I see. Do you help her with her chores? You don't help her, but you want her to help you? I can't say that sounds very fair, but perhaps there's more to this situation. I certainly hope there is. Well, that certainly seems unfair, doesn't it? If talking to her doesn't help, then perhaps you should stop helping her do her chores. If that doesn't clue her in, at least you might not feel quite so used. That's tough. Sometimes girls have a hard time understanding a guy's need for his own space. You should let her know that you care about her and that wanting time for yourself doesn't mean you don't like her. Unless, of course, you don't. That's tough. Sometimes women have a hard time understanding a man's need for space. To you, maybe you just need time for yourself. You should let her know that you care about her and that wanting time for yourself doesn't necessarily mean you don't like her. Unless, of course, you don't. That's tough. Sometimes a person can have a hard time understanding another person's need for her own space. You should let her know that you care about her and that wanting time for yourself doesn't mean you don't like her. Unless, of course, you don't. That's tough. Sometimes a person can have a hard time understanding another person's need for space. To you, maybe you just need time for yourself. You should let her know that you care about her and that wanting time for yourself doesn't necessarily mean you don't like her. Unless, of course, you don't. Well, I think it's about time you found out, don't you? Maybe you should go talk to her. I'll wait. Hmm. Well, you know, if a person is gay, they're not likely to change. Maybe you should get some distance and see what happens. If this is just a phase, that's how you'll probably find out. Just remember that her sexual preference doesn't have anything to do with you or your sexuality. It doesn't. And although it may not seem to matter now, it will. There are always other fish in the sea, and those fish might appreciate your masculinity. You're not making any sense. Are you or are you not breaking up with your girlfriend? Yes or no? Hmm. I'm sorry. That's very hard to go through. But you have to remember that this sort of thing is often more biological than anything. Don't think it has anything to do with you or your sexuality. It doesn't. And although it may not seem to matter now, it will. There are always other fish in the sea. And those fish might appreciate your masculinity. Your husband likes other men. Your husband passed away. You're not making sense. What's going on with you and your husband? Is it your husband? You split up? Are you splitting up? I'm sorry, that's very hard to go through. Just remember your little girl needs you very much right now. Even though I'm sure you're very focused on your own troubles, please make sure you keep hers in mind as well. I'm sorry, that's very hard to go through. Just remember your little boy needs you very much right now. Even though I'm sure you're very focused on your own troubles, please make sure you keep his in mind as well. I'm sorry, that's very hard to go through. Just remember your children need you very much right now. Even though I'm sure you're very focused on your own troubles, please make sure you keep theirs in mind as well. I'm sorry, that's very hard to go through. Just remember, even though your little girl has grown up quite a bit, She'll still need you very much right now. I'm sure you're very focused on your own troubles, but please make sure you keep hers in mind as well. I'm sorry, that's very hard to go through. 
Just remember, even though your little boy has grown up quite a bit, he'll still need you very much right now. I'm sure you're very focused on your own troubles, but please make sure you keep his in mind as well. I'm sorry, that's very hard to go through. Just remember, even though your little children have grown up quite a bit, they'll still need you very much right now. I'm sure you're very focused on your own troubles, Please make sure you keep theirs in mind as well. Don't joke about this, okay? Tell me again, what's going on with your husband? Name-calling won't get you anywhere, you know. With him or with me. Why don't you take a deep breath and then tell me what's wrong? Without the derogatory preface, okay? Now breathe in. Now breathe out. Okay, now let's try this again. What's going on with you and your husband? Don't joke about this, okay? Tell me again what's going on with your husband. I see. That is tough to deal with, isn't it? But perhaps you might want to consider your own actions and how they might influence his or even your children's. After all, if they see you entertaining your vices, they might not think their own vices are any more harmful. I see. That is tough to deal with, isn't it? But perhaps you might want to consider your own actions and how they might influence his or even your son's. After all, if they see you entertaining your vices, they might not think their own vices are any more harmful. I see. That is tough to deal with, isn't it? But perhaps you might want to consider your own actions and how they might influence his or even your daughter's. After all, if they see you entertaining your vices, they might not think their own vices are any more harmful. I'm sorry, that's very hard to go through. Just remember your little girl needs you very much right now. Even though I'm sure you're very focused on your own troubles, Please make sure you keep hers in mind as well. I'm sorry, that's very hard to go through. Just remember, your little boy needs you very much right now. Even though I'm sure you're very focused on your own troubles, please make sure you keep his in mind as well. I'm sorry, that's very hard to go through. Just remember, your children need you very much right now. Even though I'm sure you're very focused on your own troubles, Please make sure you keep theirs in mind as well. I'm sorry, that's very hard to go through. Just remember, even though your little girl has grown up quite a bit, she'll still need you very much right now. I'm sure you're very focused on your own troubles, but please make sure you keep hers in mind as well. I'm sorry, that's very hard to go through. Just remember, even though your little boy has grown up quite a bit, he'll still need you very much right now. I'm sure you're very focused on your own troubles. Please make sure you keep his in mind as well. I'm sorry, that's very hard to go through. Just remember, even though your little children have grown up quite a bit, they'll still need you very much right now. I'm sure you're very focused on your own troubles. Please make sure you keep theirs in mind as well. You're not making any sense. Are you or are you not splitting up with your husband? Yes or no? Is it by any chance your health? Hmm, what's bothering you then? I'm sorry about that. Sometimes it's hard to deal with things that other human people haven't gone through because it can feel like they just can't relate. It's difficult, but if you keep your head up and make every moment count, things might not seem so bad. You've lost a child? Does this have to do with your kids, by any chance? What seems to be the problem? I see. That is tough to deal with, isn't it? But perhaps you might want to consider your own actions and how they might influence theirs. After all, if they see you entertaining your own vices, they might not think their own vices are any more harmful. I see. That is tough to deal with, isn't it? But let me ask you this. Have you ever really talked with them about this sort of thing? I know you probably put a lot of importance on your child's academic life, and that isn't a bad thing. Just be aware that if the scholastic career appears to be slipping, there's 
probably something else going on. For example, how is your home life? It can be difficult to communicate with a different generation, can't it? For example, even I have problems understanding you sometimes. Don't worry, though. The older they get, the more they'll understand. Ah, they do grow up so quickly, don't they? You have to understand that they're becoming their own selves right now, and that this sort of thing is most likely a mark of their individuality. I'm not endorsing it, mind you, but just be sensitive to it. Then maybe they'll be more inclined to listen. Hmm. Well, you know those crazy kids. Probably just being rebellious. I know it's hard, but maybe you should try a different approach. Let them know how you feel about the subject, but don't be preachy. You have to understand that they're becoming their own selves right now, and that this sort of thing to them is most likely a mark of individuality. I'm not endorsing it, mind you, just be sensitive to it. Then maybe they'll be more inclined to listen. Well, that's just like a kid now, isn't it? It's only natural, though. Kids need to learn to fend for themselves, just like any animal in the wild. And just like a mother in the wild, perhaps you should get in there and kick some butt. Just a word of advice, however, if you want your child to appreciate your efforts, make sure they never find out about them. It's complicated but effective. Well, that's just like a kid now, isn't it? It's only natural, though. Kids need to learn to fend for themselves, just like any animal in the wild. And just like a father in the wild, perhaps you should get in there and kick some butt. Just a word of advice, however, if you want your child to appreciate your efforts, make sure they never find out about them. It's complicated but effective. Just answer the question. Does your kid want you to butt out? Yes or no? If it'll help, I'll say a little prayer for them, all right? Don't joke about this, okay? Tell me again. What's going on with your kids? Yes, children often get sick, and that is a fact of life. Just be sure to take care of them as best you can. I heard chicken soup is a good thing, for example. I know that must be tough, but it doesn't sound like a huge problem to me. If anything, this sort of thing should bring you two closer together. That is, if you're able to trust that your child can take care of themselves and maybe even get over your own biases. Just keep in mind that, as a parent, it's your duty to love your child no matter what. It's true, you know. You're not making sense. What's going on with you and your boyfriend? I'm sorry, that's very hard to go through. Just remember, although it may not seem to matter now, it will. There are always other fish in the sea. Like me, for example. Does this have to do with school? What's going on in school? I see. Well, you've got to remember that the true reason for getting an education has little to do with a score given by some teacher. You're in this to learn, right? So get out there and make the best of it. I see. Well, school's the perfect time to realize that getting along with authorities is almost as important as how good you are at doing something. Just remember that the true reason you're in school has little to do with a score given by some teacher. You're in this to learn, right? So get out there and make the best of it. Ah, yes, the other humans are very difficult to get along with, aren't they? That's probably why you don't have much confidence in what other people think of you. Don't worry, though. Once you're out, you'll be able to have more of a say in the people you surround yourself with. Learning is always tough work, you know. Maybe you should take a look at what's interfering with your concentration. If you eliminate the stressors from your daily agenda, things could work a lot more smoothly, you know. Yes, of course it's tough. 
You know, school is merely training for the real world. And even though the real world might seem more appealing to you for the moment, you might just long for these days you have now, once you're out. The grass is always, um, moister, or however that goes. Yes, of course it's tough, but if it's really that bad, then I don't think it would be so bad for you to re-examine your priorities. Just make sure to put a lot of thought into your decisions. You don't want to regret anything later on, you know. Wow! You're awfully young to be looking so far ahead into the future, aren't you? Well, I'm impressed. I think that really says something about you. I think with the drive you're showing me today, you have little to worry about. I'll let you in on a secret. Success lies mostly in the motivation. People who have talent but no motivation will rarely succeed. Yes, it's about time you started worrying about the big C, isn't it? Well, don't worry too much. Although it may seem important now, there are more important things to focus on, too. Just do your best and the rest will fall into place. Well, don't worry too much. Although it may seem important now, there are more important things to focus on, too. Just do your best and the rest will fall into place. I see. Well, maybe you should take some time out of every day to clear your thoughts and meditate. I hear that will do your scholastic career a world of good. It can be difficult to communicate with a different generation, can't it? For example, even I have problems understanding you sometimes. Don't worry, though. The older he gets, the more he'll understand. Ah, they do grow up so quickly, don't they? You have to understand that he's becoming his own self right now and that this sort of thing to him is most likely a mark of his individuality. I'm not endorsing it, mind you, but just be sensitive to it. Then maybe he'll be more inclined to listen. I see. That is tough to deal with, isn't it? But let me ask you this. Have you really talked with him about this sort of thing? Hmm. Well, you know those crazy kids. Probably just being rebellious. I know it's hard, but maybe you should try a different approach. Let him know how you feel about the subject, but don't be too preachy. You have to understand that he's becoming his own self right now and that this sort of thing to him is most likely a mark of his individuality. I'm not endorsing it, mind you, but just be sensitive to it. Then maybe he'll be more inclined to listen. Just hang in there and keep yourself healthy and strong. That's really the best thing you can do for him. Just answer the question, does your little boy want you to butt out, yes? or no. Well, that's just like a kid now, isn't it? It's only natural, though. Kids need to learn to fend for themselves, just like any animal in the wild. And just like a mother in the wild, perhaps you should get in there and kick some butt. Just a word of advice, however. If you want your son to appreciate your efforts, make sure he never finds out about them. It's complicated, but effective. Well, that's just like a kid now, isn't it? It's only natural, though. Kids need to learn to fend for themselves, just like any animal in the wild. And just like a father in the wild, perhaps you should get in there and kick some butt. Just a word of advice, however. If you want your son to appreciate your efforts... Make sure he never finds out about them. It's complicated but effective. Your son passed away? Don't joke about this, okay? Tell me again, what's going on with your son? Yes, children often get sick, and that is a fact of life. Just be sure to take care of him as best you can. 
I heard chicken soup is a good thing, for example. I know you've probably put a lot of importance on your son's academic life, and that isn't a bad thing. Just be aware that if his scholastic career seems to be slipping, there's probably something else going on. For example, how is your home life? I know that must be tough, but it doesn't sound like a huge problem to me. If anything, this sort of thing should bring you closer together. That is, if you're able to trust that he can take care of himself and maybe even get over your own biases. Just keep in mind that as a parent, it's your duty to love him no matter what. It's true, you know. Is it about your son? What's up with your boy? Is it because you're out of work? Well, don't worry about it too much. Just do your best, that's all you can do. You know, sometimes if you stress about something too much, the negative energy from that stress will set you back much further than the actual problem. Your wife likes other women. Your wife passed away. Don't joke about this, okay? Tell me again, what's going on with your wife? Is it about your wife? Name-calling won't get you anywhere, you know with her or with me. Why don't you take a deep breath and then tell me what's wrong, without the derogatory preface, okay? Now breathe in. Now breathe out. Okay now, let's try this again. What's going on with you and your wife? I see. That is tough to deal with, isn't it? But perhaps you might want to consider your own actions and how they might influence hers or even your children's. After all, if they see you entertaining your own vices, they might not think their own vices are any more harmful. I see. That is tough to deal with, isn't it? But perhaps you might want to consider your own actions and how they might influence hers or even your son's. After all, if they see you entertaining your vices, they might not think their own vices are any more harmful. I see. That is tough to deal with, isn't it? But perhaps you might want to consider your own actions and how they might influence hers or even your daughter's. After all, if they see you entertaining your own vices, they might not think their own vices are any more harmful. You're not making sense. What's going on with you and your wife? You're not making any sense. Are you or are you not splitting up with your wife? Yes or no? You're out of a job now, is that right? You don't like your job, is that it? I'm asking you a question. Is where you work considered a small or large business? A pretty small business, eh? Well, that figures. Humans are known to get very intimate in close quarters like that, and favoritism runs rampant. You know it's true what they say, it's who you know. Perhaps you should start, uh, uh, schmoozing. Run of the mill, eh? Well, a working environment can get really hairy when it comes to favoritism and all that. It's true what they say, it's who you know. Perhaps you should start uh, schmoozing. A pretty large business, eh? Well, that figures. Those big businesses can get really hairy when it comes to favoritism and all that. It's true what they say. It's who you know. Perhaps you should start uh, schmoozing. Well, anyway, a working environment can get really hairy when it comes to favoritism and all that. It's true what they say. It's who you know. Perhaps you should start, uh, schmoozing. Is it your work? What's happening at the job? Your boss, eh? They probably don't trust you as much as you trust them, you know. The fact that it's bothering you makes me think that you're expecting too much from them. Your boss is just a human, too, after all. It's funny to me how so many humans don't get along. Well, not 
ha ha funny, but perhaps you could have a little talk with the offender. I understand that opening up will clear up a lot of things. Money is always an issue in your society, isn't it? But think about this. Is it more important to have money or to do what you love? I assure you, if it was the other way around and you didn't like your work but you had gobs and gobs of money, things would be much, much worse. But if that doesn't help, perhaps you should just ask your boss for a raise. It doesn't hurt to ask, you know. Money is always an issue in your society, isn't it? It doesn't sound to me like you enjoy your work all that much. And if the money's not so great, perhaps it's time to find something more enjoyable and lucrative to do with your time. I see. You know, it doesn't hurt to ask for more, does it? I think that's the least you can do for yourself. Or go find something more lucrative. Either one. Ah, nothing more savory than a nice chunk of office politics, is there? Tell me, do you work at a small business or a large business? Well, what did you expect doing what you do for a living? You know there's a reason for all that paperwork. Perhaps you should try something a little less mainstream, like... Hairdressing. The bureaucratic pigs got you down, eh? Perhaps you should try something a little less mainstream, like... Hairdressing. The bureaucratic pigs got you down, eh? Perhaps you should try something a little less mainstream, like... Farming. Yes, that is an epiphany, isn't it? That day when you finally realize that you've been living a lie and that the customer isn't always right. Well, just think of this as good training. Learning how to deal with difficult people is a quality that will help you get through life a lot easier. Believe me, that's tough. Maybe you should try meditating on your off hours. I hear that can be very relaxing. More relaxing than an evening in front of the television, even. That's horrible. Who's going to pay my way through college? If it's really all that bad, I don't think it would be so bad for you to re-examine your priorities. Just make sure to put a lot of thought into your decision. You don't want to regret anything later on, you know. If it's really all that awful, I don't think it would be so bad for you to re-examine your priorities. Just make sure to put a lot of thought into your decision. You don't want to regret anything later on, you know. Hmm... What's wrong with your job, then? The stuff they teach you in school is just a small part of what you need to know in life. If the things that are really important to you aren't something you learn in school, then it's up to you to make sure you never forget them. In school, they teach you English, math, science, social studies. Who decided that? I mean, just because you're good at those doesn't mean you're a better person than someone who's not. It's good that there's a lot of different standards you can judge people by, because everyone's good at different things. Like me, I'm good at... swimming. Of course, English and math aren't the only things you learn in school. The most important thing you learn is how to make yourself a better person. Because, think about it. You want lots of people around who care about lots of things, and you want to make the world a better place. You don't need a lot of people running around who are just good at reading and writing and arithmetic. Come on, you're not even a student anymore. The studying you do now is on the streets. So, go. Take to the streets. Oh, hardy, har, har. You think that's bad, you should try dealing with yourself all the live long day. If it'll help, I'll say a little prayer for him, all right? Ah, uh, exhaustion. You know, I think fatigue and anxiety are more prevalent in your society than any others before yours. Perhaps you should take up meditation. I hear it will do wonders to clear up your mind and will replenish your strength. Don't worry about it. Nobody likes how they look 100% of the time, 
Even I, at times, feel a little bogged down. Water retention, you know. This, like anything else, will pass. What matters is what's inside, anyhow, which is probably what's behind all this bodily negativity. I've found that when I'm feeling down on myself, I feel less confident physically as well. Of course, you must be surprised, a handsome chap such as myself, but it's true. You know, most people around you don't pay as much attention to your body as you think they do. People just don't care that much, so you shouldn't either. Just concentrate on what's good inside of you, and the next thing you know, it will be radiating out of you. If it isn't already, I see. Well, if you don't mind me saying, there is a world of other things you can be focusing your energies on than matters of amour. Besides, if you concentrate elsewhere, chances are your amorous problems will sort themselves out, if you know what I mean. Just stop obsessing, okay? You got a job? What happened at work? You're not making much sense there, Fuzzy. Did you or didn't you get a job? Yes or no? Ah, I see. Where have I been, huh? Well, anyway, what's going on at this new job of yours? <coughs> Your data has been damaged. May I erase it? Would you like to save and end the session? The time setting of the Dreamcast internal clock does not match the time setting of your Seaman Habitat file. The time setting of the Dreamcast internal clock may be incorrect. Please adjust it if necessary. This memory card already contains saved Seaman data. This data will be deleted and a new habitat will be created. All previous data will be lost and cannot be recovered. Do you wish to proceed? This memory card does not contain saved Seaman data. Would you like to create new data? Please check to make sure that your microphone is connected. Has your controller been disconnected? There are not enough free blocks on the memory card. No Seaman data can be found. Please find the memory card with your Seaman data and insert it into expansion socket 1 of your controller. There is no memory card connected. This memory card contains an outdated Seaman habitat. This data will be deleted and a new habitat will be created. Do you wish to proceed? This memory card contains a VMU game. In order to set up Seaman, we must load the Seaman VMU game. Please delete the other VMU game or insert a different memory card. <laughs> 